The chair now lays out House Bill 896 and recognizes Vice Chair Tenderholt to explain his bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. This is almost certainly going to be the most controversial bill of this committee we'll hear this session. Before I get into the contents of my bill, I want to say a couple of things. First, I've spoken with each of the committee members individually about this bill and this hearing. As I've shared, I intend to be very respectful and I ask every single witness on both sides to do the same today. This is a topic both sides are very passionate about. For many, it's personal and evokes raw, uh, raw emotion. We can passionately disagree on the issue while still engaging in very respectful discussion. I intend to continue building relationships and working with every single member of this committee on other policy, regardless of what happens in this committee hearing today or in the future. There have been numerous discussions with this committee's membership to craft language that would be acceptable to at least five members in order to pass it out. While a draft that would do just that was created, I personally believe those changes would undercut the bill in a significant way. Therefore, I will not be offering a committee sub for HB 96 and it will remain exactly as is. Section 1.07 subsections 26 of the Texas Penal Code already defines an individual as a human being who is alive, including an unborn child at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth. That's in statute right now. If somebody kills a pregnant woman, they're currently charged with double homicide. If a drunk driver kills a pregnant woman, they are charged with intoxication manslaughter twice. This standard is applied throughout code with the only exceptions being for women, doctors, and medical professionals who intentionally end the lives of unborn children. The Texas Declaration of Independence, the Texas Constitution, the U.S. Declaration of Independence, and the U.S. Constitution all stand for the fact that government is to protect God-given right to life. The Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments to the U.S. Constitution state that life cannot be taken without due process of law. The Tenth Amendment says that all powers not given to the federal government are reserved to the states respectively. Therefore, it is our duty, I believe, as Texans to stand up and stop the killing of unborn children. At the heart of HB 96, HB 986, correction, HB 896, are two main policy objectives. First, the bill aligns code that already recognizes life begins at fertilization, which I stated a moment ago. Second, it removes exceptions to murder, assault, and manslaughter throughout the code. I feel compelled to bring up the fiscal note. According to the LBB, there's $227 million negative fiscal impact to the state over the biennium, with it growing to around $175 million per year after that. Their reason for the cost is they estimate an additional 42,800 babies being born each year. The fact that we're putting a price tag on babies is reprehensible and the exact reason that I filed this bill. I seek to treat unborn babies the same way we treat babies and other human beings that are already born, standardized across the entire statute. If this law saves one life, the fiscal note is worth it because life is priceless, protecting it is government's most fundamental role. You know, I'd be remiss not to mention that if this bill passes, that my peers, all Republicans across the board, would have to be ready to spend more money on the things we're probably going to talk about a little bit later today, and I think most are. There are many people here registered to testify and have their opinion heard. My hope is all sides, I want to repeat, all sides are heard. I believe that when we have spirited, respectful debate, that um, we can learn from one another. We will not agree almost every time on this topic, but I think being respectful to one another, we can learn where each other stand and where they're coming from and their mindset. First Amendment rights are very important, especially tonight. So those of you that agree with me, I'm appreciative that you're here. Those of you that are going to disagree with me tonight, I'm also appreciative that you're here because your voice matters you deserve to be heard. Wherever you are on this, thank you for being here and thank you for registering and thank you for being brave enough to come up and, 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 and speak your heart and where you come from. I appreciate the committee's work and the ambitious, ambitious agenda you have. I'm prepared to answer some questions and I respectfully request the right to, vote, uh, to close, sir. Thank you, Representative. Our Vice Chair Tenderholt, members, any questions? 
Okay, um, you're recognized to reserve your right to close. We're going to call panels of four witnesses. I'm actually going to call two panels at a time, one panel to take the witness stand, and then the second uh, group of four, I'm going to ask that you come wait, and we've got four seats reserved for you here. And so um, the first panel who's, um, who's up is Richard Deott, Yvette Deott. Rich Diot. Thank you. Rich Diot, Yvette Diot. Okay, hold on. Jim Baxa and Stephen Bratton. Yvette's not here. Huh? Yvette's not here. Okay. Go ahead and sit down. If you have called your name, the next panel will be um, Is Ashley Bratton here? Yes, she's here. Okay. Ashley, why don't you actually come join us here on the panel as well? Is Jim here? Jim, Jim, come on. <clears throat> and then the next panel is going to be Paul Brown, Eliel Rosa, Bruce Kendrick, and Mindy Le Firez. Okay. Um, Jim, why don't we start with you, if you'll state your name, your affiliation, and your position on the bill. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Jim Baxa. I'm representing myself and also I'm rep representing West Texans for Life. Um, my position is for this bill. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so in West Texans for Life, this is our number one bill. This is the bill that is taking priority. We are grading it very heavily on our scorecard. And there's many reasons for that. One is this bill actually acts like we believe that abortion is murder. I haven't seen any other bill that acts like abortion is murder. We say as pro-lifers that we believe abortion is murder. And this bill allows us to prove that we believe that. If we believe that abortion is murder, we recognize that we better charge everyone involved with that crime. This bill also does something wonderful. And it, it stands in the face of a tyrannical system in Washington, D.C. that has given an opinion that murder is okay. An opinion that we know is wrong, an opinion that we know is unconstitutional. Roe v. Wade is unconstitutional, and the Tenth Amendment puts it to y'all to stand up against that tyranny and do what's right. Thank you, Jim. Members, any questions? Did you have a, a question for the author or for Jim? I'm I'm sorry, Representative Niave, I forgot you had a last minute question for the author, but if you'll ask Jim, sure. Representative Niave. Thank you, Chairman. And it, and it was something that you just mentioned in sure. terms of looking at it, and thank you for your testimony. Yes, ma'am. In terms of looking at it as a murder. And so there's a section in the bill relating to the penal code. Have you read that section? Yes, ma'am, I have. The, the chapter 19 of the of the penal code, do you know what's, what offenses are included in that? Oh, well, it's a homicide uh, section of the code. Okay. And uh, one thing we love about this bill is that it takes that exception out, where previously there's an exception for the unborn baby that we're recognizing it as a baby, but we're putting an exception into the uh, clause that doesn't make any sense. So, so, the, so the legislation, in essence, allows the state to charge a woman with murder, is that correct? Uh, a woman who has committed murder should be charged with murder, yes ma'am. So, so a woman who has an abortion is allowed under the legislation to, uh, the state will charge a woman who has committed an abortion with murder, is that correct? Well, you say will charge, and that, that I can't say is correct will or because- Will is allowed. Yeah, the, the, the bill would allow the Attorney General to make that determination. Now, let's put it this way, in reality, the Attorney General is probably gonna figure out a plea agreement with the mother to help her testify against the abortionist. That's probably so, what's gonna happen. Well, apart, so I, I just wanna, so I'm just trying to clarify. Sure. Like where, so the legislation is allowing a state, a DA, a prosecutor, whomever, to charge a woman who has undergone an abortion procedure to be charged with murder herself, is that correct? Um, I, I think you're phrasing it wrong, but, but your idea is correct. What the How bill does- I phrasing it wrong? Sure. It, what the bill does is it allows the state to charge a murderer who happens to be the mother of the well, baby that is being murdered. The, okay, so let's put semantics aside in terms of, and I hear what mm -hmm. you're saying, I hear mm -hmm. what your point is, but I, I'm just trying to understand or to 
to really highlight that a, a woman who undergoes an abortion procedure is going to be charged with murder. She can be charged with capital murder as well, correct? It, that is a potential possibility. And capital murder is subject to the death penalty, correct? Yes, ma'am. So a woman who undergoes an abortion could be subject to the death penalty for having an abortion. See, but you said correct. Put, yes or no? So you put you said put semantics aside, but then you went right back into no, semantics. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, a woman who and I disagree respectfully. Sure. But go ahead. So a so a woman who undergoes an abortion procedure can be charged by the state, whether it's a prosecutor or whomever with capital murder and herself be subject to the death penalty for having an abortion. Is that correct? That, that is a potential okay, in this bill. Thank you. That's, that, that, yeah. thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Okay. Um, the chair calls, uh, is it Rich? De Rich? Yeah. Rich Diot. Rich Diot. If you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill. My name is Rich Diot from South Lake, Texas. I represent myself and Life Education in Action, an educational group committed to advancing a thorough biblical knowledge of what the Bible really says about abortions for those who really want to know. I speak today in favor of the bill, but I recommend three changes. Remove the provision that automatically criminalizes the woman. Remove the come and take it provision and replace it with a trigger so that the Texas bill becomes effective on the passage of bills of similar simple content in 20 other states so that the legal schedule for all would converge at the same time at the Supreme Court level in a show of national conviction. Here's why this is important. Jesus did not come into the world as a baby, but as a conceived human being. And he lived nine months of a perfect human life before he was born or revealed on Christmas. Isaiah said it would be a sign that the virgin would conceive. The angel went to Mary in Luke chapter 1 and said she would conceive. And the angel came to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 and said Mary had conceived. Jesus knows the life of the unborn. He knows their names. And he knows the numbers of tiny little head, uh, hairs on their head. May God give justice to every one of the 63 million of his unborn children. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Members, questions? All right. Um, Ashley, is it Ashley? The chair calls, uh, recognizes Ashley Bratton. First. Thank your you. Your name and your position on the bill. My name is Ashley Bratton. Um, I am a child of Christ, and I'm called to be salt and light. I am for the bill on behalf of myself and my six younger brothers and sisters. One of the most concerning issues in our society today is a lack of respect for human life. The unborn child has no rights and has no protection because without the proper permission, this life has no value. This idea has been proven throughout history to be evil and wrong. The concept of a human life unworthy of life is disrespectful and inconsistent with the values that our society claims to uphold. Protection of the weak, compassion, and love. Many use a mother's right to bodily autonomy as a defense of abortion, saying no one can use my body without my specific permission. In this context, meaning that after the correct biological process of reproduction has begun, a woman has the right to defy the natural order of things and tear a baby from the place it belongs in order to reclaim a uterus which functions solely for the gestating of an unborn child. If the uterus exists for the unborn child rather than for the mother, is it not reasonable to think that a child has a right to live in its natural environment? Please. There must be a standard of personhood that is not limited to one's physical ability. You have a responsibility to defend the sanctity of life for all of the people over which you have authority and influence. Okay, thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Um, the chair now calls us Steve Bratton. If you'll do the same. My name is Stephen Bratton. I'm the pastor of preaching at Grace Family Baptist Church in Houston, and I'm testifying for myself in support of the bill. And before I go any further, I want to say it was mentioned earlier that there's too much religion uh, in these conversations. And I want to just say that these are all religious because it's all based on what we worship. Do you worship yourself or do you worship the Lord? I want to address a point that's come up and is the reason why so many oppose this bill. And that's the idea that this would criminalize women. Some have said that they oppose any bill that would criminalize or put civil penalties on women. It is important that you understand that all this bill does is codify in Texas law, what is already true, whoever authorizes or commits murder is guilty. They're guilty already in a court that is far more weighty than any here in Texas. 
the most heinous thing that we can do as individuals is to try to convince someone that they are not guilty of a crime when in fact they are. The most heinous thing that you can do as people who have the opportunity to bring justice is to somehow make people believe they are innocent in this world when they stand accountable before a righteous God. God has placed you here for such a time as this. When your final day comes, the one judging you will be the supreme judge. He has declared you shall not murder. So the question you have to ask yourselves is, are you going to obey God, worship God, or worship man? Thank you, members, questions. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all for your testimony. Uh, the chair calls, uh, is it Paul Brown? Bruce Kendrick? El Yal, is it? You got it right. Is it El Yal? El Yal Rosa and uh, Mindy, Mindy Lee? Yes. Okay. Mindy, uh, let's start with you. If you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill. The next panel of witnesses is going to be Daniel Hawkins, Maggie Wright, David Covey, and Brian Martin. Again, that's Daniel Hawkins, Maggie Wright, David Covey, and Brian Martin. Uh, yes, my name is Mindy Lee Fires, and I'm from Midland, Texas, born in Fort Stockton. By the time I was born in 1976, abortion was already legal. Since being legalized through the state of Texas, Texas led the way, millions of people have failed to rise to their destiny and their inheritance. I'm here as a representative of the first generation of the incomplete. As a generation, we are maimed and incomplete. This generation is missing those who would be business leaders, teachers, representatives, dreamers. We are literally missing billions of dollars in taxpayer money. That's 55,000 taxpayers per year for the state of Texas. Representative Nibe, 150 people today that could be paying taxes. Abortion is generationally, fiscally, and societally a bankrupt policy. Today you are nine. Representative Leach, Smith, Meyer, White, Farrar, Davis, Kraus, Nive, and Johnson. Yesterday they were nine. Today we are all witnesses as to what will be decided once again. To not act is to act. I request and urge that you take a vote today. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Uh, the chair recognizes Ilya Rosa. State your name, affiliation, position on the bill. Uh, my name is Ilya Rosa. Um, I am a Brazilian on my way to citizenship in America, and I'm shocked with a lot of things that I've been seeing here, but uh, you know, I prepared a, a statement here, but because of the time constraints, I will just quote three sentences. Number one, uh, it was heard here that uh, we have around 100, if I'm not mistaken, 190 cases of rapes of di uh, people with disabilities, and that is an epidemic. What does 62 million stand for? Number two, uh, it was said that vic victims' voice are powerful, and they are indeed powerful, and I'm here to represent the voices of those who cannot speak anymore. And number three, I would like to say that simply put, abortion is the death penalty to a baby for the actions of someone, somebody else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Members, questions? Okay. Uh, the chair recognizes Bruce Kendrick. Hi, um, you've been provided with a, uh, a testimony for a three-minute version, and I'll give the one-minute version. My name is Bruce Kendrick. I'm the constituent, a constituent of Representative Leeches and the Director of Life Initiatives at Water, Watermark Community Church in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, I lead our ministries, restoring vulnerable children and families and women and men with unexpected pregnancies and past abortions, um, restoring them. Uh, I'm here in support of HB 896 today, thanking you for giving this bill a hearing and asking you to vote in favor of this bill as well as to sign on your support for this bill. Roughly two weeks ago, I received a call from Representative Leach asking if I knew what this bill did and if I could support giving the death penalty to a woman who has an abortion at three weeks. I thought the question oversimplified this bill but also appropriately addressed the issue. I was asked for a simple yes or no and then we ended the conversation. 
I'd like to expound on my answer now by asking, what is a woman who has an abortion at three weeks abort? If it's something other than a human being, we can end all of these testimonies now, save ourselves a lot of time, and go home. But if she is aborting human life, you must vote to affirm this bill, moving it out of this committee, because you cannot otherwise call yourselves pro-life or pro-woman. We cannot regulate abortion. Life begins at fertilization, so it does not matter if an abortion takes place at three weeks, three months, or nine months. The issue of what is being aborted is where this issue starts, and it's where it stays, without which we remain a walking contradiction. Thanks. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Um, Chair, and I'll recognize this Paul Brown. Paul, if you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill. Good evening. I'm Paul Brown. I'm representing myself on behalf of uh, HB 896. I'm in support of this bill. Um, I've got right here a letter, actually, from you, Chairman Leach, and I, I'm going to take the opportunity to agree with you. Um, what, what you've said to me uh, on March 26, 2019, in this letter, you said, I firmly believe that life begins at conception that every life is created for a purpose, and that it is our duty in Texas to not just protect life, but to actively promote a culture of life. I agree wholeheartedly with everything you said there. And additionally, you wanted to say, as a passionate pro-life conservative, you have my commitment to advocate for every life from the womb to the tomb. Beautiful words, and I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, it's for that reason that I expect that you and anyone else um, here that agrees with those words will vote in favor of House Bill 896. Anything less would show that uh, one does not agree that life begins at conception. And as James 4.17 says, whoever knows the right thing and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay, thanks to each of you. Um, the chair now calls Brian Martin, Daniel Hawkins, Maggie Wright, and David Covey. The next panel is going to be Jessica Templin, Star Finn, David Templin, and Klein Coburn. Um, Mr. Hawkins, let's start with you. Uh, if you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position. Uh, my name is Daniel Hawkins. I am a resident of House District 93, uh, home of Representative Krause, and I'm representing myself, and I am for this bill. Um, we were, Roe versus Wade was inflicted upon us uh, because the state of Texas never acknowledged the full personhood rights of preborn children. Abortion has always been treated as a regulated medical procedure, not as homicide. And subsequent pro-life laws have continued to regulate abortion rather than provide equal protection for the preborn. After reading the Roe opinion, both the body and especially footnote 54, I have to think that if the language of HB 896 had been the law in the early 1970s, Texas would have handily won their 14th Amendment argument in the Roe v. Wade case. Uh, if, H if HB 896 is passed, abortion would be finally treated as what it is, homicide, the murder of innocent humans. Given our nation's history and the reasons that the 14th Amendment was enacted, shouldn't our definition of a person be as inclusive as possible? Shouldn't it apply to all living organisms that can be scientifically classified as homo sapiens? I urge you to pass HB 896 without amendments or compromises. Thank you. Thank you. Members, questions? Okay, uh, the chair calls Maggie Wright. Okay, my name is Maggie Wright, hello. Um, and I'm testifying on behalf of myself, and I am for this bill, and I want to thank you, Chairman Leach, and committee members, and especially thank Representative Tinderholt for doing this. Life is very important. I can't figure out how we as a nation have gotten to this point, and in Texas. Um, I'm for life from conception to natural death. Standing for life should never be a partisan issue. We the people hired you to make laws for all Texans, and that is for the unborn also. Breitbart had an article that stated that abortion was the number one cause of death in 2018 in the world. This is our modern day Holocaust. We must do something. We must be an example here in Texas that we will end this now. 
I say, you know, we will look back on this and we'll, we'll wonder why we didn't. And today, abortion is our Goliath. And we, like David, will slay this giant abortion with God's help. And I, I want to beg you to get this out of committee. This is important for the unborn. Me as a grandmother and a mother, and I'm sure you all have children, and to look in those baby's eyes, and now they want to kill even a baby after it's born. This is unacceptable. Please. Thank you, Maggie. Members, questions? Okay, the chair calls David Covey. David. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members, my name is David Covey. I am the Republican County Chair for Orange County Republican Party and the Legislative Chair for the Texas Republican County Chairman's Association. Speaking here on behalf of myself and the Orange County Party in favor of this bill. Members, I work for the majority of my time to elect Republicans up and down the ballot, and the number one issue for Republicans is the sanctity of life. Uh, that, that is what we focus hands down, uh, the number one issue. Uh, members, New York has recently passed one of the most pro-death pieces of legislation in the history or in our, our lifetime. Uh, along with that, the Virginia governor has come out in support of inf infanticide. Uh, they are taking bold statements to the left. Uh, the Senate Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, said, we're saying here in New York that women's lives matter, and I would like for y'all to join us in saying that here in Texas, babies' lives matter. Here in Texas, Texans' lives matter. Here in Texas, all lives matter. Thank you, David. Just to be care, uh, clear for the record, you're here testifying on behalf of yourself. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, and you're for the bill. Um, all right, members, any questions? Yes, Representative Nowdy. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Um, how long have Republicans held a majority of the state in Texas? So Republicans, I guess, got a majority, I want to say, in the 90s. Okay. Why do you think this legislation hasn't passed, in your opinion, in, in the past when Republicans have held a majority and last session had a near supermajority? That is a great question. <laughs> Members, any other questions? Okay. Uh, the chair um, calls on Brian Martin. Hello, my name is uh, Brian Martin, and I represent myself. And I am for HB 896, and I thank you, Chairman Leach and committee, for this public hearing. I'm old enough to remember a time when abortion was not the law of the land, and I hope to live long enough to see it repealed. In my opinion, it has not made our country, our state, or our people any better. 165 years ago, slavery of human beings was the law of the land, and it was abolished. We've had suffrage of women's rights in our country. In 1920, with the passing of the 19th Amendment, women began to be considered equal. In the 1930s and 40s, Jews in Europe were considered less than human. After the Holocaust, the world united and said, never again. The one thing all these atrocities have, have in common is that society deemed another group as less than human, as not having value. Ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what abortion does with the un unborn. But they are human. They are a true gift from God and they are valuable. Federal and state monies and laws should not be used to facilitate this practice. Rather, let's establish laws and use monies to make adoption easier and cheaper and cut the red tape. Let's develop a loving system for unwed mothers. This issue of abortion is our modern version of slavery, suffrage, and Holocaust. Let's be on the right side of history and let's let Texas be in front of that. One last thing, in 1962, there was no law allowing abortion. As my mother was an unwed mother at that time, at the time of my conception, I am grateful and thankful for that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, members, questions. Okay, thank you each for your testimony. Um, the chair now calls Jessica Templin, Star Finn, David Templin, and Klein Coburn. The next panel will be Rolando Garcia, Carlos Cali, Cheryl Cali, and James Berryhill. Um, 
Jessica Templin. Yes, sir. Let's start with you. If you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill. My name is Jessica Templin. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. A dear friend of mine once found herself pregnant and alone. She was told that her pregnancy was only a clump of cells or a fetus, which we know is merely the Latin word for baby. She chose abortion. She was told not to mourn because there was no life lost. She grieves to this day some 30 years later. In the summer of 2010, I began having intense abdominal pain. For hours, I endured that pain. I was then overwhelmed with a feeling to push. What I saw next will forever be seared on my heart. What I was holding in my hands had little arms, a little body, and little legs. Unbeknownst to me, I had been pregnant. The realization turned to shock and the shock to grief. I only thought I had been experiencing pain. Again, unbeknownst to me, the birth control that I was on allowed me to get pregnant and then aborted my baby. I was encouraged to grieve that loss simply because I wanted that child. It was no longer a fetus or a clump of cells, but my baby. I stand before you today as a 31-year-old woman without a womb I am childless because I believed what doctors told me, and as a result, my ability to have biological children has been taken from me. Please pass this bill so that young women are no longer fooled by doctors into making the worst of decisions that they can never change. Ignore Roe. It does nothing but harm. Uh, Ms. Templin, can you, is, it's Ms. Templin, right? Yeah. Okay, and is this your husband, David? Yeah. Okay, um, thank you for being here today and for your testimony. Can, can you share a little bit more about your, about your story, how it went down? Did you say that it was the birth control that you were on yeah. post-fertilization post or post? Yes, sir. Once I found out and talked to my doctor, they informed me that the type of birth control I was on was one that would continuously thin the lining of my uterus and caused me to shed the baby, but apparently my body rejected it for a certain amount of time until the birth control became strong enough. Okay, so, okay, okay. Thank you, members, any other questions or any questions? Okay, uh, David, let's go with you. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> my name is uh, Pastor David Templin. I am representing myself and testifying for this bill. Uh, first off, I want to thank you all for your uh, compassion that I've seen today, uh, not only to uh, puppies in hot cars, um, but to uh, disabled people as well as, uh, as people who have been uh, assaulted. I, I ask that you have the same compassion uh, for preborn babies. Um, I'm here today to ask you uh, to remember the oath that you took when you took office. Uh, Roe v. Wade is an unconstitutional, outdated, non-scientific court opinion, not law, created by racist white men to oppress black and Latino communities. Texas is known for being defiant for the sake of doing right. But in this case, our government officials have been cowards. They've put their heads in the sand and sat idly by as untold millions of babies have been beheaded, dismembered, disemboweled, and chemically burned. Do your job, uphold and defend the Constitution, History will record your names as those who either murdered babies or saved them. HB 896 not only protects babies in the womb, but also protects young mothers from murdering their babies. I ask you once again, remember your oath. Punish wickedness. Protect the innocent, not the opposite. Thank you. Members, questions? Okay, the chair uh, calls on Star Finn. Thank you, chair, and I have a handout. Thank you. My name is Star Finn. Stand for HB 896, unchanged as God gave it to Tony Tinderholt, and I'm for it. We can't ignore Roe v. Wade. In 1973, before Roe v. Wade, abortion was illegal, except a mother could not be prosecuted. This caused the coat hanger abortions because it was illegal for the doctors, but not the mother and they thought they could get away with this. We don't want this dangerous and gruesome practice. 
HB 896 is rightly not retroactive. Doctors performing triage to prioritize as they try to save both mother and baby are protected. All men are created equal. Creating a separate class for mother and child is discrimination. This is an unjust law that should be removed from Texas Penal Code 1906. If someone sues, we don't have to show up. We say no. What we are doing is constitutional. We have the right to protect life. Let Tinderholt's bill go to the floor as God gave it to him and as prioritized by the Republican Party of Texas. Please send it to the floor for a vote unchanged. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay, thank you. The chair recognizes Klein Coburn. My name is Klein Coburn, and uh, I represent myself and uh, on the bill. So. As I sit before you, I'd like you to consider my thoughts on abortion. 11 million innocent people died during the Holocaust. And so far this year, in only four months, we have had 11,044,826 abortions worldwide. Both incidents claim innocent lives, yet only one is considered mass murder. Not even a century ago did we conclude that it was wrong to kill innocent human beings, but over the past couple of decades, something has changed our mindset to believing that not only killing innocent human beings is acceptable, but that killing off our offspring is legal. Such valuable lives taken away without thought of what they could have become. Maybe they could have become a Congress member such as yourself and could have been sitting right next to you, or they could be exchanging ideas with the committee to help better improve our world. A pre-born baby at 10 weeks old already has a heartbeat, moving fingers, uh, limbs, functioning vital, vital organs, and formed facial features at just... <coughs> 10 weeks. All right, thank you. I did not know how important a baby looked when it was aborted until I saw a picture. The body was lifeless. Ligaments astray, a coat of crimson blood enveloped the small soul. No one cradling it or embracing it. It lay alone on a cold, gleaming metal table, not to be celebrated, but discarded as if it were trash. My hope is our great state of Texas will lead our nation to speak for the voices that, that can't speak for themselves. If we make abortion illegal in Texas, we will inspire other states to do the same and promote the gift of life. Thank you. All right, thank you, members. Any questions? Thanks. Okay, thank you to the panel. Uh, uh, Clyde, just to be clear for the record, you're here on behalf of yourself and you're for the bill. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks to each of you. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, the chair calls Rolando Garcia, Carlos Cali, Cheryl Cali, and James Berryhill. The next panel will be Michael Defendall. David Sims, Lewis James, and Natalie Sims. Again, the next panel will be Michael Defendall, David Sims, Lewis James, and Natalie Sims. Um, Mr. Garcia, uh, if you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill. My name is Rolando Garcia. I'm a Republican precinct chair in Harris County and a member of the Republican platform committee that adopted abolition as a legislative priority, and I am speaking for myself. I would suggest only three questions. One, is there any scenario in which federal judicial overreach is so egregious and so unjust that it would require states to protect the constitutional rights of its citizens by rejecting a federal ruling? I believe the answer is yes. This is a drastic response and a last resort to be used only when fundamental constitutional rights are being systematically violated. Question two, would the scenario in which a federal ruling deprives an entire class of Texans of the right to life warrant such an extraordinary response? Again, I believe the answer is yes. Number three, is there a better way than the 45-year-old status quo in which meaningful pro-life laws are stalled or struck down by the same federal courts that perp perpetrated this injustice in the first place? I believe the answer is yes and urge you to vote for HB 896. All right, thank you, Mr. Garcia. Members, any questions? Okay, the chair calls uh, Carlos Cali. Mr. Cali, I don't know if I'm saying that right. You can correct me if you'll state your name and your position on the bill. Yes, my name is Pastor Cali. I am for this bill and I represent myself. I'm here to remind you, gentlemen, that you are God's deacon that you are his blood avenger to restrain evil and to pour out his wrath on the evildoer in the legislation that you write. I'm here to beg you to stop 
wielding that sword in vain. Abortion, according to our state penal code, rightly falls under criminal homicide, but it is the only form of criminal homicide that denies justice. 175 children every day are legally killed and denied justice. You will stand before our creator and what you today will be held to your account. In Psalm 82, God tells the rulers, the judges, the legislators, and he asks them, how long will you judge unjustly? How long will you show partiality to the wicked? I am asking you and urging you to promote justice, to pass this, to let it go, otherwise that is sin. May God grant you the strength to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Appreciate it. Um, Cheryl Kelly, let's go to you next. Yes, you my name is Cheryl Kelly. I'm here representing myself, and I'm in favor of HB 896 going forward unchanged. Um, I would like to applaud Mr. Tenderholt for bringing the bill forth, standing only on the word of God and trusting in his providence and his goodness to stop murdering children in the state of Texas. When I was 15 years old, I went into an abortion clinic in Houston, Texas, and I paid someone to murder my child. And I want to let you know that I wasn't a victim. I wasn't a victim of circumstance. I wasn't a victim of an abortionist. No one forced me to do it. I made the choice my, on my own and stood guilty before God with my child's blood on my hands. The only thing that convinced me to do it is our laws that allow us to murder our children. Please stop this. Please stop this. I'm begging you. Please. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Members, questions. Okay. The chair now calls um, James Berryhill. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Leeds Committee. Thank you uh, for all the time you've invested today. Uh, my name is Jamie Barry Hill. I am founder and director of Mission Messiah. Uh, Mission Messiah is a 22-year facility that has ministered to women and women with children that have found themselves in dire straits. Many of the th situations that we have heard today uh, are where they have been. They've been where Becky was. Uh, they've been where Miss Templin was. They. Uh, they have been subjects of, of multiple abortions in many cases. And so we work with them uh, for uh, 18 months to work through and, and endeavor to see a new life established within them. But I, I'm here today to tell you the effects of this heinous crime are uh, truly a travesty and have long-term effects. Um, I plead with you today um, that, that we, we look in the context of the Hebrew word hear, and bas basically it has three meanings. It means we hear with our ears, we hear with understanding, and we hear with right actions. I would also encourage you that today when we hear his voice, that we do not resist as they did in the day of provocation and never entered the rest. Because I believe you would all agree with me today. Is that my buzzer? Yeah, but go ahead and go ahead and wrap up. I believe with all of my heart that the great measure of unrest that we face in our nation today are the consequences of our 61 million plus murders. I beseech you, I stand with this House Bill 896. Thank you, members, any questions? All right, thank you each for your testimony. Um, the cha chair calls Michael Defendall, David Sims, Lewis James, and Natalie Sims. Is Elizabeth Sims, we're, which one of you are the Sims? Oh, is the Sims right here. Is, uh, is Elizabeth Sims with you as well? Yes. Okay, is she here? Uh, yes, she's here. Why don't, why don't Elizabeth come up as well? 
There's also Judah and Nadia. Oh, okay, okay, never mind then. I'm sorry. The, the, next, the next four witnesses, thank you, will be Elizabeth Sims, Nadia, Na, Nadia, Nadia Sims, Mark Lee Dixon, and Sean McGuire. Um, Mr. Defendall, let's start with you if you'll state your name and uh, position on the bill for the record. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first, thank you for pronouncing it properly. <laughs> Mike, congratulations. Uh, hello, my name is Mike Defendall. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. Today, the word choice may be used frequently. I believe a more important word for this discussion is responsibility. The responsibility of consenting adults to understand the consequences of their actions. The responsibility of the medical community to live up to their Hippocratic oath to do no harm and the responsibilities of you, members of this committee, to wade into a very politically charged issue and do the right thing to those yet unborn Texan citizens. Today is not 1973. Medical technology has made enormous advances since that ruling. And one of the remarkable things about our system of government is that it is adaptable to necessary change. This is a necessary change. Yes, pregnancy deals with a great deal of choices for expecting parents. One is killing an acceptable choice. Yes, a woman has many choices when they're pregnant. She also has the responsibilities to that child. She has my undying respect for that awesome responsibility. Other questions will be raised, such as teen pregnancy and rape. These are serious matters. And they need serious solutions. But two wrongs do not make a right. And killing is definitely a wrong solution. Mr. Chairman, members of this committee, I ask for you to support this bill on behalf of all Texans, both those alive and those awaiting the chance to draw that first breath. Thank you. Thank you. Members, questions? Chair calls David Sims. Chairman Leach, members of the committee, I am DJ Sims, a resident of Fort Worth, Baptist ordained minister, husband and father of nine, and I'm here to support House Bill 896 and representing myself. Uh, 55,000 preborn children are murdered in Texas every year. Uh, this is the only bill put before you that seeks to abolish that murder. Please help us bring justice to the preborn. Give our most weak and most vulnerable Texans equal protection under the law. <coughs> the truth of God's word says, open thy mouth for the dumb, those who can't speak, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. All it says, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who needs your help more than those who can't speak for themselves or are being ripped apart limb from limb by vacuums and forceps? Now let's stop waiting for the Supreme Court to overturn Roe versus Wade. Roe was an unjust ruling. Our government's supposed to have checks and balances. I learned that in grade school. For 46 years, no one has bothered to check or balance the bloody tyranny of the Supreme Court. Let us do it now. For the sake of these Texas children, ignore Roe. We don't need anyone else's permission to protect our state's children. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Members, any questions? The chair calls Natalie Sims. Hello. I'm Natalie Sims. I'm 14 years old, and I'm here in support of House Bill 896, and I'm uh, uh, representing myself. I go out to an abortion mill every Saturday and whenever I can during the week. Today, little innocent Texan citizens are being murdered, brutally lipped, ripped limb from limb, and taken out of their mother's wombs. I read a story the other day about a woman who took an abortion pill. She was devastated when she delivered her dead child. Planned Parenthood lied to her. They told her it would just be some tissue and that it would be too small to see. It was only an inch big, but even my four-year-old little sister could tell that it was a baby. Abortion mills all over Texas and America are lying to us. Members of the committee, you have a chance to change that. You have the chance to end this Holocaust. Over 60 million babies have been murdered in this country since Roe versus Wade. Pass this bill and let it be the beginning to the end of abortion in America. Thank you for your time. Uh, great testimony. Thank you. And I completely agree with everything you just said. Thank you so much. Members, any questions? Um, the chair now calls on um, Lewis James. I'm sorry, James Lewis. Well, my name is James Lewis. I'm representing myself. I'm a Texas citizen, a follower of Jesus Christ, who is king. And I'm in support of House Bill 896. All human beings, regardless of size, state of development, age, ability, race, gender, skin color, or anything else, are made by God in his image and are given by God inherent dignity, value, and worth. However, every day in the state of Texas, innocent young Texans are 
disemboweled, have their heads severed from their bodies, they're chemically burned, and have their bodies put back on a tray to ensure that no pieces of these children are left behind in their mothers. Countless other children are poisoned by abortifacient drugs. With respect, Roe v. Wade is not a law. It is a decades-old fallacious court opinion that is incontrovertibly refuted by the evidence of scripture as well as all modern biological science. Courts don't make law, according to the Supreme Court, or according to the United States Constitution, Congress makes law. We are all deluded if we believe that we have to accept the murder of preborn children because of a fallacious court opinion from the 70s. There is another one with the power of judgment who is the source of law. If you ignore these pleas of justice, you will not escape his judgment. All of us have the appointed day where we'll stand before his court. Will you be marked like those who said, I know it looks like a person? It's not a person. It's a black man. Will you be marked like those who said, I know it looks like a person, but it's not a person. It's a Jew. We all know this is wicked. It's a wicked mindset. So is the idea that we can rip small human beings apart. All right. Thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, the chair calls Elizabeth Sims, Mark Lee Dixon, Nadia Sims, and Sean McGuire. And then the next panel will be Tanya Robertson, Judah Sims, Jorge Arbilez, and James Dickey. Um, Elizabeth? Are you Elizabeth? Yes, sir. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. We're really glad you're here. Thanks for being so patient with us. If you'll state your name and your um, age and your position on the bill, if you will. Okay. My name is Elizabeth Stims. I'm 13. I have eight siblings. Um, I'm representing myself, and I'm in support of House Bill 896. Um, as my four-year-old sister says, those babies are precious. Please help us save the babies. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Members, any questions? Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, is this Nadia here? Hi, Nadia. How are you? Good. Good. If you'll state your name, tell us how old you are as well, and tell us what your position on the bill is. I'm Nadia Sims. I'm 10 years old. I have eight siblings, and I'm here to re represent myself. I'm also here to support House Bill 896 because babies are being murdered. They're, they're being ripped apart from the room, limb from limb, and that is murder. Every, every, ba every woman that goes in there will probably get the pill and, and murder their child, and that's murder. Please support House Bill 896. Thank you for your time. Nadia, great, great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, members, are there any questions? Mr. Chairman. Uh, chair, so Chairman's discretion. Y'all can clap for Nadia. And yeah. for, uh, <laughs> uh, Representative, Representative Krause. Thank you, Chairman. And, and to uh, Nadia and Elizabeth and Natalie and David came before them, uh, being your representative in House District 93, I'm honored that y'all would come down here and providing that incredible testimony. So thank you. It means a lot. Well done. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Thank you both. Um, the chair recognizes Mark Lee Dixon. My name is Mark Lee Dixon. I'm here representing Right to Life of East Texas. I'm a director and also their vice president. And I am for House Bill 896 with no exceptions. I go to a close uh, mortuary and try to save lives three days a week over in Shreveport, Louisiana. And that's where a lot of people here in Texas go, uh, <laughs> up in East Texas, to get across the border. And this is a life that uh, Representative um, saw this person uh, at uh, eight this mother at eight weeks was there for abortion and she changed her mind. And this is the heartbeat of that baby. This mother was homeless and we're helping her out. She is uh, 37 weeks right now. We're giving her a place to live, doing everything we can to help her out. This is another baby that was saved, baby Karis. And uh, she was born Friday before last. 
I got a text message today from a mother uh, who gave birth three months ago. And you can see the beautiful picture here. And one last thing I'll say, the very last page here, Baby Karis, who was born Friday before last, this is the mother's testimony. She says, not a day goes by that I thought about I was going to kill my baby, but y'all was there to stop. Y'all just don't know how I feel bringing another blessing into this world. Guys, abortion is murder, and we've got to treat it as such. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Uh, the chair uh, calls on Sean McGuire. Sean. Sir, Mr. Chairman, sir, ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, if you could speak into the microphone. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, sir, ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. My name is Sean McGuire. I am a U.S. Army veteran, college graduate, and most importantly, a full-time Christian. I'm representing myself. I am for this bill, HB 896. My testimony, pro-life, anti-choice, abortion abolitionist. Familiar terms? Well, I'm anti-murder because that's what this is, murder. I don't need to negotiate the terms with our opposition. We don't need to play by their rules. They need to play by God's rules. The Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Atheists have lied to us about the interpretation of all of these. If these documents fall into the hands, into evil hands, they irrefutably become weapons of murder and anarchy. If they fall into the hands of god fearing Christians, they become harbingers of truth and justice. None of these people will ever prove that the Christians among the Founding Fathers were not talking about the one true God. The Declaration of Independence declares who our God is in the singular with a capital G. And I have seen the Declaration of Independence in the National Archives of Washington, D.C. The best, uh, and the word creator is also with a capital C in singular. Domestic enemies of our nation grossly misrepresent these documents and the entire law. Murder doesn't stop being murder because you claim you have a right to murder. It's time to use God-fearing common sense to see this for exactly what it is, a baby holocaust. Our Constitution never said murder is a right or privilege. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Please pray for the unborn and for the women that have been lied to about the baby holocaust. Sincerely, Sean McGuire. Thank you, Mr. McGuire. Members, any questions? Before we move on, uh, Mr. Dixon, can I come back to you? I want to ask yes, you a sir. question. I want to thank all of you for your testimony and for your work. You're with Right to Life of East Texas, is that right? Yes, sir. We are the old, one of the oldest uh, Right to Life groups. Uh, we've been in existence since uh, 1976. Great, great. And thank you for your work. There's so many great Right to Life groups across the state that are, that are ministering to and counseling and working to meet the needs of women who are, who are faced with this very difficult decision. And I'm looking at your website here. and just you, you do incredibly remarkable work and I want to commend you for that and affirm you. There's a link on your website. Um, you've got a great website here, but there's a link to, um, to other nonprofits, to other organizations, counseling centers, um, resources, right. if you will. And one of those is CARE, Christ-Centered Abortion Recovery and Education. Yes, sir. And on that website that you reference and you're directing people to, you say this. It says, many women and, I'm sorry, many men and women hide the secret of a past abortion deep in their hearts while suffering devastating consequences. They feel they are alone and that they will carry this secret with them forever. CARE, and this is the, the organization that you're referring to, CARE provides confidential post-abortion recovery studies that help women and men deal with their past to release this shame and to find freedom, joy, and hope through Christ, surrounded by those that have been where they are. It then states statistics that show that 43% of women in America have experienced an abortion. Over one in three women and one in three men have been involved in some form or fashion in an abortion. It, the, the website goes on to state that many women struggle for years, for years with post-abortion syndrome ranging in symptoms from eating disorders, insomnia, alcohol, drug abuse, depression, promiscuity. It then says this, it says, if you feel you've ever recovered from your, if you feel you have never recovered from your abortion experience, CARE offers a safe place to talk with other men and women who know how you feel, who've been where you are. And then it encourages folks, women, to contact that organization. I think that's an incredible calling. Definitely. And I want to go back to something, I think it was Elizabeth, something you said, it might have been you, Nadia, 
about women who've been lied to? Uh, that was Natalie. Was that you? Was that you? No, that was, that, was that your other sister? Okay, all right. And I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And as the chair of the committee, and then Mr. Dixon, I'm going to ask you a question, okay? okay. I am going somewhere with this. Awesome. I hate abortion. I hate it. I'm agreeing with absolutely everything that's being said here. I hate it. To me, it is absolutely unequivocally murder. It's the taking of a life. I believe, actually, that Jeremiah 1.5 tells us that life's actually created before conception. God says that he knew us before, he was, before we were created. I'm going to be honest, for those of you who are, here, who are here, and then Mr. Dixon, I want to ask you to comment on this. What I'm struggling with from a policy perspective is what is the best way to meet those women who have been lied to at the point of their need. All these services that CARE are recommending, confidential post-abortion recovery, I don't want those recovery efforts to take place with a woman who's behind bars. And that's what I fear this bill does at this point. Now, we're going to continue on with the testimony. I'm learning a lot and, and appreciate all of you for being here. But, Mr. Dixon, I want to know how you can take the position you're taking on this bill, which I respect and appreciate, and then also at the same time r refer women to these post-abortive counseling services, which I think are wonderful and needed. One in three women in this country have experienced an abortion. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. So while I'm on the sidewalk, I have these little cards from CARE, and every woman who's had an abortion, I give them that card, and I let them know that we're there for them. We're actually helping someone in Baton Rouge right now and in um, Texarkana, Texas, that have had an abortion. We're helping with aftercare, connecting them. Several people we've referred to to uh, the CARE Bible studies. And so that's a part of things. But when we're on that sidewalk and we're trying to save lives, we don't say, go ahead and have your abortion and God will forgive you. But we plead with them not to have that abortion. And the reality is these, uh, these testimonies right here, these women, if it was illegal for them to have an abortion, then they wouldn't even go there. And if we actually treat abortion as murder, which, which it really, really is, and, and I understand the whole the pushback with the um, the pushback of, as far as like the the criminalization factor, but the thing is ultimately if it's if I'm just as valuable as baby care, so I got to help name over cheeseburgers at Papacitas in Longview, Texas. If I'm just as valuable as she was, if I'm just as valuable as Baby Legend was when I met Baby Legend at eight weeks on that sidewalk then we've got to say that the killing of baby legend or the killing of baby Karis is should be treated just as, as, as like the killing of myself or anyone else in this room. All right, are you. they equal or are they not equal? That's, That's what it's about. Representative Nialde. And I, and I think on, on that point, can you tell me how you reconcile charging a woman <coughs> with capital murder, subjecting her to the death penalty for doing exactly that which you're opposed to. Can you restate the question? So under the law, a woman could be subjected to the death penalty. So are you saying that you're okay with subjecting a woman to the death penalty, killing her through government-sanctioned death penalty for exactly that which you're saying that she did? You're okay with killing somebody for her. The killing of innocent life deserves the death penalty, yes. So you're, so, okay, and that's what I was trying to under, understand. So you're okay with killing a woman? I'm okay with justice being served in the court of law. By killing and that, her? That I believe people who do, uh, who kill other people, that Should be killed. as far as the so. death penalty, I think that is reasonable. So it's reasonable to kill a woman who, and so that's what I'm trying to. It's reasonable to kill someone who has killed another human being. 
at Hope Medical Group for Women in Shreveport, they kill 20 babies every Tuesday, 30 babies every Thursday, 50 babies every Saturday. One of the abortionists, Dr. Del Ballman, delivered baby, uh, twins down the road, and then he killed 27 babies by himself. And so I, I appreciate believe? your testimony. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to understand in terms of your perspective, and I think the perspective of many of the people that are in this room. Um, and so I think that helps me understand. Thank you. Yes, Representative Croft. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, Nadia and Elizabeth, you're still my favorite witnesses of right now. So y'all are awesome. Um, Pastor, to continue on that line of questioning from Chairman Leach and Representative Niave, you know, we do have mitigating circumstances in criminal law. That's why we have murder, and then that's why we have manslaughter, right? Right. So do you see any difference in culpability for a woman uh, – who Natalie and uh, Natalie, Nadia, uh, Natalie said earlier, women being lied to, not having all the facts. Do you see any difference in culpability with a woman who has an abortion, who doesn't have all of the facts, and doesn't exactly know what they're doing, being charged with murder, as compared to, to a doctor who you were just talking about, absolutely knows what they're doing, has been trained, medically should know. Should that be a higher standard of culpability than a woman who doesn't understand what she's going through, or do you feel like they're equally culpable, even though they may not understand the same things? From my experience, three days a week outside of Hope, and I, I spend time outside of other abortions too, but these women, I mean, they open up and they, they know what they're doing. They know that it's the taking of an innocent life. And the statements that I hear are statements of it's not a matter of when life begins, but it's a matter of the quality of that life. What if about women life who are trafficked poor, and coerced into having abortions? That's what about a women who— horrible thing. It is a horrible thing. We can agree on that. What do we do with those women? Well, that's some of the finer details of this. I no, mean, no, no, no. Because, right. because under the, the bill, a woman who is coerced and, and trafficked and driven by her pimp to an abortion clinic without a cell phone, with no freedom whatsoever, and has is, and is walked into that abortion clinic and said, you will get an abortion. If, that's, that's not in this law. You cannot, you cannot talk, sir, seriously. That will kill the bill if someone talks out of line. So please answer my question. If someone handed me a gun and said, you better go kill this person, I would have a choice to make. And I hope to God that I would choose not to murder an innocent human being. I'm asking you to make a we're, – we're here crafting laws. And for a woman that is coerced into having an abortion, the, the text of the bill is very clear. A woman who ends the life, which is recognized under this bill, is, um, as Representative Niave has correctly pointed out, potentially liable for capital murder. Yes, there are uh, extenuating circumstances, and you know, these are highly factual scenarios. Juries and judges will make these decisions ultimately, but we have to be very careful in how we uh, – very. Uh, how we craft the legislation Understood. to make sure it's directly targeted at what we're getting at. And there are thousands of stories. We have heard them in this building of women who are trafficked and coerced and forced against their will to have abortions. And Planned Parenthood, they don't care. They'll perform them. I want to hold them responsible. Yes. Chairman White. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, um, you know, on the uh, criminal justice side, we get in a lot of these discussions of law of parties. That's right. And and if these um, depraved men, and, and let me tell you, what, I don't have any problems with the bill, okay? I, I, I signed on at least as a co-author, all right? But I think something needs to be said. Uh, we're hearing very, very great testimony, very compelling, very sincere testimony. But several years ago, and some of you were here, uh, we had um, a big old pro-life bill in, in the special session. And and so we just had a few bills in the session, during the session, that special session, so I had a lot of time to immediately pick up the phone and, and listen to feedback. And I talked to many of these women who got an abortion. Obviously, they were <laughs> probably against my vote, okay. But almost all of them had a common refrain. They wanted to take the baby to term, mm -hmm. but the guy who fathered it bailed out or drove her to the um, to, to abortion clinic. So um, 
I would like, as a man, I would like to know, and you don't have to tell me this tonight because we don't want to be here all night, right? <laughs> what are we going to do to round up those people? Okay, because at some point in time, and it's four or five men up here, you know, when are we going to hold yeah. these men responsible for putting these uh, women in these situations? Yeah. I, I don't hear very much talk about that. Okay, so I get you. Everybody has to stand before the Lord in, 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 in judgment. But um, I'm really grappling with uh, these dudes that are driving these women in, husbands in some instances, mm -hmm. compelling them and, and, and leaving them, you know, abandoning them. So um, uh, there's a lot of finger pointing to go around. There's a lot of soul searching and navel gazing. We need to look at these look at these men and these men. All of us as men need to start stepping up and standing up and being men that's too. Right. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Chairman, Representative Krause. Thank you, Chairman Leach. I think Chairman White just hit the nail on the head. Right. I think that's the biggest problem. And I've wondered in this bill. I mean, should we make those men an accessory? Right. I mean, are they as culpable in the crime as the others? And if we're going to go after that. We need to look there too, but uh, I, I, that was very well said. Yeah. Thank you, Representative Nyabe. And and I just want to add that I think Representative Tenderhold has made very clear on the record today that he is not taking out this language, right? And I think the 400 plus individuals who came to testify in support of this legislation would be very upset if he took out that language, right? Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate. I, 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 I'm looking forward to our continued testimony. I do rep believe Representative Tenderholt was this close to filing a committee substitute that he drafted and, and for whatever reason chose not to, Representative yeah, Niave. Um, but the members of this committee um, are, I know, all committed to the right policy for the people of Texas that's going to save the most innocent lives. Representative Niave, do you have another question? Okay. Members, any other questions for this panel? Thank you. Thank you. We need to, we need to move on, yeah. Sean. Thank you. Um, the chair will now call Tanya Robertson, Judah Sims, Jorge Abeliz, uh, Arbelez, I'm sorry, and James Dickey. Is James here? All right. Um, the next group will be David Capps, Jeff Haas, Richard Gertz, and uh, Janet Flynn. Um, Jorge, let's start with you. If you'll state your name and uh, your position on the bill. My name is Jorge Arbelaez. Uh, I'm, I'm a I represent myself and I support the bill for the equal protection under the law of our preborn sons and daughters. Science and scripture and reason tell us all that the human life begins at conception. And abortion ends that innocent life. Abortion is murder. We have a depraved indifference towards these babies. I was guilty of this myself, and I, I viewed them as other people's children until I asked myself, what if, what if that was my son Ethan or my daughter Becca that was being murdered or slaughtered? I was given new eyes and a greater compassion for these babies as I saw them as my own and started to fight for them with all of my heart. And that is why I'm here today to plead with each one of you to, uh, for their lives. I pray you will also see them in your own, as your own, reject indifference, accept responsibility for them, and lead courageously to approve this bill and, and end the murder of our sons and daughters. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Members, questions? Um, Chair will now recognize Tanya Robertson. Tanya. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Tanya Robertson, and I serve on the State Republican Executive Committee representing Senate District 11, and I'm here to testify in favor of HB 8, 896 for myself, representing myself and the Republican Party of Texas. In 2016, the Republican State Convention passed the abolition of abortion as one of its three legislative priorities. In 2018, it happened again. 
89% of over 8,000 delegates voted in favor of this priority. Those delegates were elected by tens of thousands of other Republicans being sent to that convention to represent them. So I'm pleading with the committee to vote this bill out of committee and allow it to be voted on the floor like the convention delegates would like for it to be done. And I also have a personal story. Um, I'm from Louisiana, and in the early 80s, my sister at 14 got pregnant. Abortion was illegal in Louisiana. My sister was driven to Texas. My family feels that loss every day. I truly believe that if it wouldn't have been legal in Texas, it would not have happened. I'd have a niece or a nephew that I could be proud of and help raise. So from a personal point, um, every life matters. Every life. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, is it Judah? Yes. Hi, Judah. How are you, bud? Good. Good. If you'll state your name and tell us how old you are, and go for it. My name is Judah Sims. I am eight years old, and I'm representing myself for House Bill 896. Those women are just brought in there by men. They come in there, they cuss at us, they just don't want help. That's why we need more people out there. I go out there every Saturday and once a week. I just wanna say that they're getting, the babies are getting mur murdered. They have a right to live. Mm. Judah, okay, you clap for his sisters. You gotta clap for him too. Um, Judah, thank you. Members, are there any questions? Where are your sisters, by the way? Are they still here? How many are there, of y'all are there? Are there a total of nine, but only four here. Okay. I tell you what, send them up here real quick. Do you want to have them come sit on the dais with us for a few minutes? Judah, come sit here next to me. Come here. You just sit here. Thank you all for your uh, testimony as well. Sit here, bud. And girls, if y'all want to sit over here by Representative Smith. They can sit here too. Yeah, and sit over yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, someone sit by Representative Niave too. <laughs> Representative, uh, all right. Thank you all. What do you think? Not cool, right? <laughs> um, okay. The chair now calls um, David Caps. Okay, David, um, Jeff Haas. Richard, Gertz. which one is Richard? Gertz, and then um, Janet Flynn. Okay, the next panel will be um, Eric Ellinger, Candace Ellinger, Jason Storms, and Timothy Ullman. Let's start with you, uh, Mr. Caps. Good evening. Um, my name is David Caps. I'm representing myself, um, and I'm uh, in support for this House Bill uh, 896. This House bill provides equal protections for the most helpless people in our midst. The preborn child, which we were all once, is being discriminated against in our own penal code. <clears throat> we define, the penal code defines a child right, it defines murder right, but then it gives this exception clause, which is, which is horrific. It, tells, it says that unless a mother wants to kill her child, then she can. Then she can. God knows and sees each child. This bill provides equal protections for these children from sadly mothers who want to kill them. It lines us with the Constitution, which you swore to uphold, to not deprive a person their life. We need to ignore Roe because it's unconstitutional, a court opinion. So I'm asking you to be bold and do what's right and allow this bill to move forward for the sake of all these children that God sees. And I have one more question. Which is worse, criminalizing a woman 
who murders their child are allowing a law to continue to turn women to murderers. Thank you, Mr. Capps. Members, questions? All right. Um, Jeff Haas. Yes, sir. Jeff, if you'll go ahead. Jeff. All right. Thank you, Honorable Representatives. My name is JR, and I'm here testifying uh, on behalf of myself. Uh, members, it's my conviction that this bill is the most consistent piece of legislation in establishing equal protection for all who are created in the image of God. This inalienable right that all men are created equal has been inconsistent with our culture and our laws ever since it was first drafted by our founders. Praise God that this right has been refining our culture and its laws ever since. As we look back at our history, we rightly cringe when we think of the times when entire people groups were treated unjustly under our law. Praise the Lord that many of these atrocities have been eradicated through the establishing of equal protection for all men, regardless of their skin color. Our work is not done yet. All people are not equal in the state of Texas. We continue to discriminate based on age. Today, science confirms that which scripture has taught for thousands of years, that life begins at conception. The Texas Penal Code in Chapter 19 even upholds this truth and protects preborn children from the time of conception. Why then are 55,000 lives ended prematurely in this state every year? HB 896 would establish equal protection for all humans, regardless of their age, even protection from their mothers. Thank you, Thank you Jeff. Whatever questions. Okay. Um, it, is it Mr. Gertz? Yes. Okay. If you'll go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am Richard Gertz, representing myself in favor of HB 896. You know, in Psalm 139, we find some of the most powerful words in the Bible about God's hand in creating life. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The scientific body of evidence overwhelmingly concludes that life begins at conception because a unique DNA comes together through the egg and the sperm uniting and guess what? Eight days later, sophisticated equipment can detect a heartbeat. The emotion we experienced earlier in Dr. Leach's te testimony happens most every day in a pregnancy center. I'll share a story with you. A mom on her way to an abortion clinic to have an abortion performed on her daughter stopped by our pregnancy center to have an ultrasound. When she saw the picture of the baby, in that womb, she exclaimed, that's my grandbaby. I look forward to celebrating the day when the economics of no more abortion drive Planned Parenthood and other abortion clinics out of our state. A vote of affirmation for this bill is a vote for our eternal souls, for the soul of our state of Texas, and the soul of our nation, mm -hmm. one nation under God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Flynn? Hi, my name is Janet Flynn. I am representing myself, and I'm testifying for Bill 896. As a director of a crisis pregnancy center that I once was, I got to see both sides of abortion and its effects. We had a 50-ish 50 50-ish lady come in. She had a legal abortion 30 years previ previously, and she had kept it secret all that time out of shame and guilt that she felt. Her hair and her clothing and everything were very unkept, kept. She could, you could tell by her appearance that she was full of self-hatred. For two hours, this lady vomited out her pain as she told her story of her abortion and hating herself for it. Two, two weeks later, she returned and we didn't even recognize her. After ridding herself of her secret, she was well-dressed, had an attractive hairstyle, and carried herself with dignity. She showed her unconditional love. We showed her unconditional love and listened to her story with sympathy. If abortion had not been legal, she likely would not have had that 30 years of torment. Karen White. Yeah, and I just want to thank this lady. She's um, from Polk County, uh, drove about five hours last night in some harrowing yes. weather to get here. I want to thank you for your um, your testimony and your stand for life. Yeah. And we're honored to represent you back in Southeast thank Texas. You. Um, thank you. Members, any other questions? Um, okay. Uh, kids, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for your testimony. You. And to you all, thank you again for your testimony and for joining us on the dais. Y'all can go back with your parents now. Thank you. Um, 
The chair will call uh, Eric Ellinger, Candace Ellinger, Jason Storms, and Timothy Ullman. The next panel will be Lisa Kammerer, Holly Phillips, Michael Gobart, and Robert Green. Let's start with um, Eric Ellinger. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, my name is Eric Ellinger on behalf of myself, speaking for House Bill 896. This bill is bold and challenging, deserving the support of each person that values human life, even if that life is still in its most vulnerable form. Rather than toy with the fringes of the abortion debate, it strikes at the heart of the matter. Does every human life deserve equal protection under the law? Our founding fathers answered this question in the Declaration of Independence when we ceded a portion of our natural rights to form this American Republic. We did not toss from ourselves the yoke of responsibility. Each of us has to secure the safe conduct of those who follow in our footsteps. This bill takes the first crucial step in repenting from the injustice the Supreme Court has temporarily imposed on nearly five generations of Texans. It's been asked here tonight, how can we claim to have mercy on a child but not the mother? Christ said, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not <coughs> murder. But I say unto you that whosoever hates his brother is guilty of murder. I cannot say that I grew up with the perfect love for my brothers. I will admit that I may even have told them that I hated them. I was guilty, but I did not act. If I had, I would expect to be treated accordingly. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Did, you, did you want to wrap up? <laughs> sure. A couple more this bill, bill heats ahead. the silent, stifled screams of the unborn child, whether they be male or female, physically or mentally challenged, loved or unloved. Let's take this chance to make Texas a sanctuary state for the unborn who might not have a vote yet, but by supporting this legislation, you have the chance to give them a voice. Okay, thank you. Um, members, any questions? Candace, go ahead. My name is Candace Ellinger, and representing myself in support of this bill. This weekend, I spent it with visiting my newest nephew, who's two weeks old, and there's a game that his older sisters and brothers like to play, taking turns listening to each other's heartbeat. You first give them a good tickle to make sure their heart rate is up and pumping good, and then you lay them down on the floor, lower your ear to their chest, and listen to the steady thumping amidst their eruption of squeals and giggles. As soon as they know you have heard their heartbeat, they excitedly struggle to listen to your own. This is what loving life is, and this bill supports that. We need children to teach us, especially mothers, what love really looks like. I challenge you today to find a young child and a heartbeat to cherish and play this game with them. Right now, as a state, we are silencing these hearts instead of cherishing them. Our God-given responsibility to equally protect life is too important to keep playing around with mediocre bills while pretending to be pro-life. We do not have the moral option as a state of not supporting this bill. Let's stop resorting to allowing death as some sort of solution to help those in difficult situations and learn to value and love life in its purest form from the mouth of babes. Thank you, Candace. Members, questions? Okay. Uh, the chair calls Jason Storms. Uh, well, <clears throat> thank you. I want to thank you all for, for doing this. Thank you. Chairman, uh, I'm a pastor and uh, assistant director of a national pro-life organization, abolitionist organization, Operation Save America. Um, I'll start with a personal story that addresses what this gentleman brought up earlier. I had a girlfriend in high school that had an abortion. I was very much consenting to that abortion. We both professed to be pro-life. Uh, if I had told her I would stand by her, she would not have done it. But I was a selfish, cowardly young man at that time of my life. I turned my back on her and I turned my back on my own child. Uh, I'm thankful for God for his great mercy and his grace. Amen. That abortion ruined her life. She was never the same person. Amen. So you'd ask, should she be punished? Should she be facing prosecution for homicide? Well, I will tell you who should have been prosecuted, me. I was guilty as an accomplice in the murder of my own child and I should have been prosecuted accordingly. Mothers and fathers, parents, right now, in Texas can be charged with parental neglect, parental abuse, even parental homicide. When we see the tragedy of parents taking the life of their own children, 
It's because mothers and fathers have a duty to love and protect their children. That responsibility doesn't start when they're born, but it starts when they're conceived. Here's a fact my girlfriend and I never would have been faced, if we knew we would have been facing homicide charges, we never would have aborted that child. That child would be alive today. I have a 22-year-old little child that I could celebrate life with right now that's not here. The law is a deterrent to crime. We shouldn't think of this only as a matter of putting a woman on the stand. We should think of this as a great deterrent. Men and women would not think of doing this if we stood firm on the law and provided equal protection for these children. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. For, your, thanks for your testimony, for sharing okay. your yep. story. Yep. Members of questions? Okay. Um, Timothy Ullman. Yeah, my name is Timothy Ullman. I'm here to testify for House Bill 896 in favor of it. And what I have to say in agreement with this gentleman to my right is that while it is certainly true that the woman and our law should reflect that the woman is responsible for killing her child, it is also equally true that everybody else involved in it is responsible. And I believe that just as our law says, if two people shot one person that they die or one person held them down while the other person stabbed, both of them are culpable for murder. That's the same thing. If more than one person is murdering a baby, they're all culpable for the murder of the child. And I would also urge you all that you don't delay to try and get a more perfect bill when God clearly says that murder is wrong and that you would pass this now and stop allowing it to be legal. Thank you. Members, questions? Okay. Thank you each. Appreciate you being here. Chair calls Lisa Kammerer, Holly Phillips, Michael Gobart and Robert Green. The next witnesses will be Damon Rambo, Sharon Armkey, Dorenda Johnson, and Matthew Trevella. <coughs> Lisa, let's start with you. Hi, my name is Lisa Kamer. I am representing myself and I am testifying for this bill, 896. On August of 2001, I had an abortion. My friend drove me to the abortion clinic in Houston, Texas. As we approached the gates, there were protesters holding signs that read, murder. How can I be a murderer? If abortion is legal, how can it be wrong? God's word says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that appears right, but the end leads to death. I went in for an ultrasound and the lady turning the screen away from me told me, if you saw it, you would keep it. The next day I went the next day, something went very wrong. I felt my baby move, fighting for its life. And just like that, it was done. I found myself in the deepest, darkest hole that seemed inescapable. I took drugs and it caused a seizure. I woke up in the emergency room, the doctor telling me, you could have died. I couldn't help but wish I didn't wake up. I have lived my life for 17 years in silence from the shame and the guilt that I carried. I am no longer a slave to my past, and that is why I am silent no more. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story, Lisa. Members, any questions? Thank you sincerely. Um, Michael Gobart. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, committee members, for giving us an opportunity to speak. My name is Michael Gobart. I represent myself. Uh, I'm in support of HB 896. I'm a Texas citizen, husband, father, and business owner in Wilson County. The Texas Constitution, Article 1, Bill of Rights, Section 3A, secures equality under the law, both in protection and prosecution. Our inalienable rights, as outlined in the Declaration of Independence, given to all men by our Creator, includes that right to life. HB 896 would end the unjust and prejudiced violation of preborn children's God given right to life. In a state known to have fought some of the world's most historic battles for freedom, we are here today appealing for you to support a bill which makes the mutilation of babies illegal and upholds their right to life. Vote to stop the discrimination based upon age. Be on record opposing the genocide and more than 50,000 children murdered legally each year in Texas. I'm urging you to exercise your office in a manner which reflects your duty to our Creator. Take action which reflects your oath to uphold, defend, and in this case, restore the fundamental unalienable right to life. Defend those weakest among us. Vote in a manner which honors our Creator and the one who judges over all. Support HB 896 without amendment. Thank you, Michael. Okay, members, questions? Robert Green. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, 
My name is Bob Green. Uh, I am a precinct chair here in Travis County, and I am definitely in favor of HB 896. I'm merely representing myself. Uh, there is a word for the mass murder of the innocent, as this gentleman just mentioned. It's called genocide. And that's what we are dealing with today with the number of uh, abortions that are being conducted. Um, I, I thank the members of the committee who are present here today. I really wish that the other members had been here today to hear this testimony of all of these people. It's been extremely powerful. I only have one question that I think every member of this committee, every member of the House, and every member of the Texas Senate should, should think about and try to answer. At what point in the gestation period of a human being in utero, does the constitutional right to life of that child get superseded by a woman? The right to terminate that life for convenience is birth control. You have to ask yourself that question. And I, th I support, I wish this bill would go out and give it the opportunity to have a vote on the House floor and see where the members stand. Thank you. Holly Phillips? Yes. Is right? Hi, Holly. Hi, my name is Holly Phillips. I'm representing myself. I've never done anything like this before. I've never even been to anything like this before. But I could not not come. In 1990, I was supposed to go to a Right for Life uh, march, and I slept in because I didn't want to go. I, I wanted to sleep. <laughs> and it was 6.20 in the morning, and between 6.20 and 6.40, I fell asleep and had a dream. I'm just gonna read you the words of the dream, or tell you the words of the dream. Once every minute, from deep within my soul, I heard a voice crying out, Mommy, please don't. I knew who those voices were, but it seemed so unreal that I could feel their pain. And then they said, Mommy, if you could just listen, if you could just believe the one who breathed his life in me, he cares for both of us. Please don't listen to them when they tell you there's only one cure. My heart beats just like yours. That dream changed my life and I've never been able to look past that since. When you feel the heartbeat of a child and you can't even protect yourself because you're superseded, God takes over your sleep and you're imposed upon, you know, you just don't forget something like that. And I do thank you all for letting us come here. We do this respectfully. I do this respectfully. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Members, questions? Okay, thank you to the panel. Appreciate it. All right, the chair calls. Damon Rambo, Sharon Armkey, Duranda Johnson, and Matthew Trewalla. Trewalla? Trewalla. Okay. Um, the next panel is Lynette Lucas, Michael Hooper, Johnny Green, and Jacob Miller. Uh, let's start with uh, with you, Mr. Rambo. I, my name is Damon Rambo. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church Markham. I'm also the Precinct 8 chair in Matagorda County for the Republican Party of Texas. Um, I w had a whole different thing here that I was going to talk about, but instead I figured I would do some cleanup listening to some of the testimony. So uh, first of all, we were talking a while ago about the... Uh, about the, uh, all of these bad cases where women would be forced into abortion, uh, maybe by their pimp or things like that, where uh, uh, they would do an abortion under duress. And I just want to say this bill that is so masterfully crafted by Mr. Tinderholt, its beauty is it's about equality. It's about uh, equal protection under the law. And so by eliminating those statutes, all of the, all of the things that, that grant protection to a, to a person in that situation would also apply to the mother. There's already in, chapter, in Title II, Chapter 8.05, uh, um, a, a, an exception for duress. 
um, if you are if you are forced into a, a brutal you know to commit something against your will there's already exceptions there, there's also already uh, clauses under the law uh, regarding um, uh, accomplices and things like that so those things are already addressed in the law the way that this bill is written because it eliminates it, it simply eliminates the exception and says hey this is just like everything else so man I wish I had more than a minute <laughs> <laughs> Feel free, Mr. Rambo, to submit written testimony or come visit with the committee members afterwards. Members, are there any questions? All right. Um, Sharon Armkey. Is there my name? Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. Dorinda Johnson. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Put that microphone a little closer. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Duranda Carroll Johnson, and I'm here representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill, HB 896. At ages 7 and 15, I lost both parents to medical conditions, but the devastation left me rebellious, confused, and looking for love to ease my broken heart. Pregnant in high school left me feeling ashamed and regretful. At age at 16, entering both womanhood and motherhood long before adulthood, it was very scary. Needless to say, in cooperation with the, 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 this father of the child, my first two years of college resulted in two abortions one year after the other, and then decades of walking in guilt and sh sin and shame, carelessness and ignorance to blame. But as uh, the Psalms tell us, I've learned over the years that we're all included. We're all, as Psalms tell us, we're all, including the unborn that deserves the same chance to live as all of us here have been given this chance. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made in God's own image. And God is the only giver of life. And he never gave us the right to take a life. So why did I and why should we all have a right to take a life before it ever had a chance, before it ever had a chance to live out its own lifetime before its death. Murder is sin. So I desire to spend the rest of my lifetime to help get, get, make it right for others that they don't go through this road. It's a sad one. But Thank because you. of the redemption of Jesus Christ, I know that Amen. I'm healed and set free. Amen. Amen. I agree. I agree. Thank you for sharing your very powerful story. Is it Matthew? Truella. Truella? Okay. Yes, I am Matthew Truella. Okay. I'm a pastor and the author of the book, The Doctrine of Lesser Magistrate, and I am here to speak in support of this bill. Great. Uh, the preborn have been waiting for the interposition of the lesser magistrates for 46 years now. Have no doubt about this. The Supreme Court must be defied. Our founders did not throw off a monarchy to replace it with an oligarchy. Your duty in the face of murder is not to hide behind the off refrain of the Supreme Court is ruled, so all I can do is obey. Your duty is interposition on behalf of the preborn. SCOTUS has decided to impose social transformation without representation. You make laws as representatives of the people, but that SCOTUS tramples them. SCOTUS must be defied by the states. Congress will not do it through a weakling. Your interposition for the preborn is needed and necessary. You also have a duty to establish justice. All parties to a crime of murder should be prosecutable. Women are not victims, having spent countless hours outside these death camps. The vast majority are not victims. The few that are, um, once this is outlawed, there is no place to take them to because the death camps no longer exist. And of course, you have the discretion of the prosecutor in any murder case. The Supreme Court stated in Roe, in Texas, the woman is not a principal or an accomplice with respect to an abortion upon her. If the fetus is a person, why is the woman not a principal or an accomplice? Unquote. The court was making clear there, don't say the preborn child is a person and abortion is murder if the woman is not culpable for prosecution. This bill simply does for the preborn what is already equal protection for all of us that are postborn. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank Matthew. You. 
uh, members' your questions. Minute, your minutes sounded a lot longer than mine. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. The uh, chair calls Lynette, Luke, Lynette Lucas, Michael Hooper, Johnny Green, and Jacob Miller. The next panel will be Emily Raybon, Brett DeVilliers, Wilfred Lobig, and Renee Davison. Um, Lynette, let's start with you. Um, you ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Lynette Lucas. I am testifying for for this bill, and um, uh, I'm representing myself and my family. Um, according to live action, there are 27 million girls slaughtered in the womb every single year globally. So I I can't see how that is good for for women especially little women. Uh, a baby is a human being from conception, and to go against that is to go against God and science. Who is to say who deserves to die and who deserves to live? I could sit here and say, oh, I think you should live and you should die. And I don't think that's a choice that we should have. In America, when we have a constitution that says we are for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want to read a passage real quick. It's in um, Psalms 127 because I do love Jesus and I do cherish the fact that we can worship God in this country and follow the Bible. And it's uh, Psalms 127, 3 and 4 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Sorry. <laughs> like the arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. So stop killing our arrows. <laughs> and um, let, let people that... that, that um, believe in God, um, follow this book. That's what America is founded on, is the freedom of religion and the freedom to follow our values. Thank you. Thank you. Members' questions. Okay. Michael Hooper. <laughs> Michael, not here. Uh, Johnny Green. Please go ahead. Hello, I'm Johnny Green. I'm representing myself, and I'm here to testify for this bill. I've submitted too few copies of my original two-minute testimony, but I've entered into the record, and I ask you to please read it. Um, I spent hours preparing and practicing that testimony, but now I feel my short time would be better spent attempting to address some of the concerns I've heard tonight. Sex trafficking is a horrendous evil that grieves my soul deeply, just like the evil of abortion. I'm sure you're well aware how organizations like Planned Parenthood aid and abet sex traffickers, covering up their crimes in order to maintain a steady flow of business. Traffickers depend on abortion. What better way to help reduce sex trafficking than by ending abortion? Mm -hmm. As has been said earlier, most women know exactly what they're doing. Many women are strongly pressured to murder their babies, but this does not excuse the act of murder. If a woman is dragged into an abortion clinic, one, she can kick and scream, and two, the, the woman ultimately has to consent to the abortion. If she is ultimately forced against her will, then she's not culpable and she could bring charges against the perpetrators. And finally, all these special circumstances would surely be taken into consideration in any cr criminal proceedings, just as they are in any homicide trial. Uh, of course, men who coerce murder should be prosecuted as accomplices. All responsible parties should face justice. Also, loving women does not mean allowing them to commit murder and diminishing the weight of that sin. Is it, it is more loving to, one, don't allow them to commit that grave sin in the first place, and then two, after that sin does happen, don't diminish it. How can people be, con be convinced of their need of the grace of Jesus if they don't understand the weight of their sin? This is the very beginning of the gospel. You can start the snowball rolling toward the end of abortion in America. Do not pass the buck to another state. Texas should lead the way. Every day you delay, hundreds more are slaughtered. Don't delay any longer. It's time to end abortion now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jacob Miller. Yes. Sad to follow him. A lot of my stuff echoes his. <laughs> my name is Jacob Miller. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. At least four of you today have shown hearty approval of comments made today in approval of this bill. Those nods of approval... The smiles and leanings, they mean nothing if this bill isn't passed. 
your heart will be greater displayed in your vote than in your meaningless smiles and approving comments. Chairman Leach said, what is the best way to meet these women who have been lied to and went through with it? Every individual is different, and God can only truly know what is absolutely necessary. What I can tell you is what won't work, and that is not lying to them about what actually happened. The law in its current state does that. God will not approve of that. Representative White, who's not here, said, what's going to happen to those men concerning the men who drive their wives to a paid assassin? With the way things are now without this bill, those men are justified in their action, and you have no way of calling for anything to happen to them. So your words and compassion are empty. The government is given the duty to, by God to carry the sword. Are you going to wield that sword? On Judgment Day, all of you will give an account for those who are under your authority. What will you say to your king? What will you say to King Jesus, Jeff? Members' questions. Thank you. Um, the chair calls Emily Rabin, Brett DeVilliers. Thank you all. Wilfred Lobig and Renee Davison. The next panel will be Anna Marie Ger Gervais, Austin James, Scarlett Clay, and Sydney Davison. I have to go very temporarily lay out a bill in another committee, but Representative Krause is going to take over. Emily? Yes. All right. Let's start with you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Emily Rabon. I'm on the board of directors for Pregnancy Help Center, and I'm here testifying in favor of HB 896 in, for myself. Human development begins after the union of male and female gametes during a process known as fertilization, or more commonly conception. That's an excerpt from one of many scientific studies clearly stating that human life cycle begins at conception not some arbitrary point during pregnancy or after birth. At conception, the unborn fetus starts the first stage of the human development, during which time appearances and size change significantly. But at no point does that fetus change from something other than a human into a human. A fetus is a human person with worth and rights, and the killing of a fetus is murder. Having a baby, especially an unwanted one, is not easy, and no amount of difficulty, oh, but no amount of difficulty or unwantedness makes one person's life worth less than another's. As political representatives, you have an obligation to protect the lives of every human in Texas, even if those persons are inconvenient or unwanted. I implore you, please do not belittle the hum value of human life by allowing Texas to continue to legally kill those who cannot defend themselves. Thank you, Emily. Any questions? No. Thank you. And uh, Renee? All right. If you will go ahead and testify. Tell us who you are, who you're with, and your position on the bill. Hello. My name is Renee Davison. I'm representing myself, my husband, and my four children. My daughter will be testifying here shortly. And I am testifying for this bill. Babies are being murdered in Texas every day, and we have let it go on for far too long. Allow me to point out a couple of things from our own penal code. And I believe Representative Tenderholt mentioned this earlier. It defines an individual in section 1.07 as a human being who is alive, including an unborn child at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth. In section 19.02, it gives us an exception for uh, abortion. The Texas Penal Code it contradicts itself, and it goes against God's command, thou shalt not kill, when it makes an exception for the abortionists, mothers and fathers, and pharmacists, as is laid out in Section 19. Either an unborn child is an individual, or he is not. If an un unborn child is, in fact, an individual, why, do, why is murder acceptable? As a mother of four, let me assure you, they are individuals even in the womb. Hmm. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Renee. Appreciate the testimony. Any questions? No. Thank you all for being here to testify. Uh, the chair will now call up uh, Anna Marie Gervais, Austin James, Scarlett Clay, and Sydney Davison. The next group will be Sonia Ganella, Monte Barte, Lisa McMillan, 
and Mimi Barreras. <coughs> All right, we'll start with Sydney. Thank you for being here. If you'll tell us who you are, your age, why you're here, and if you approve of the bill or not. My name is Cindy Davison. I am representing myself and I am testifying for HB 896. I want abortion to be illegal because it is murder. Babies are being ripped apart in the womb. I know I'm just 12 years old, but I have a passion for saving babies. I go to an abortion mill two days a week. I have people cuss me out and flip me off, but I don't care about that. All I want is abortion to be illegal. The women that go in the abortion mills and Planned Parenthood think they don't have a choice. Proverbs 31.8 says, Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed due to destruction. That is why I'm here today. Proverbs 6.17 says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. That includes the doctor that works at the abortion mill. A lady said to my mom one day that it is child abuse to bring me and my brothers to the <coughs> abortion mill, even though she was bringing her daughter there to kill her grandchild. I want to be there for the babies. <coughs> that is why I want abortion to be illegal. Thank you for allowing me to testify. Thank you for being here, Sydney. Yeah, please. <laughs> Any questions? No. All right. Thank you, Sydney. Anna Marie? Gervais. Gervais. Okay. Thank you for being here. If you'll please tell us uh, who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. I'm Anna Marie Gervais of New Braunfels. I'm representing myself and speaking in support of HB um, H 896. It is fundamentally unjust to take the life of an innocent child for the convenience of the parents, for a crime that another adult has committed or for any other reason that this child has had no uh, has not been a cause for and uh, has no control over the circumstances HB 896 would eradicate this injustice and protect the lives of all unborn children in Texas I want to urge committee members who oppose the bill to see the movie unplanned there is a reason why someone who had had two abortions herself and who had been a very successful director of an abortion clinic for eight years would make a complete 180 and become a pro-life activist. When you witness the same routine, run-of-the-mill, extremely common first trimester procedure that she saw, you might come away with a different mindset as well. Once you see for yourself how abortion ends a precious life in a gruesome way. It is my sincere prayer that going forward an overwhelming majority of formerly condemned unborn Texas children will survive their mother's pregnancies because under your leadership the Texas legislature will have their backs as well the, and, <clears throat> and afford them the same care and consideration that you have shown to other victims here today. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Marie. Appreciate it. Any questions for the witness? Thank you both for being here Thank you. and for sticking it out, Sydney. Appreciate you. All right. Next, the chair. Uh, chair will call up Sonia Ganella, Monte Barte, Lisa McMillan, and Mimi Barreras. On deck is uh, Matthew Ullman, Adrian Magnum, Barbara Miller, and Dewell Garcia. Thank you. So we'll have Sonia. Why don't you go first? Good evening. My name is Sonia Ganella, and I'm representing myself, and I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm here to testify for HB 896. Because it treats abortion as murder, it provides equal protection and justice for all human beings from fertilization and criminalizes abortion without exception. I speak as a woman who uh, experienced incest as a child. As a teenager, I was raped, and I conceived a child. And because abortion was legal, many conspired with me to shed the innocent blood of this unwanted child. Mm. We often hear testimonies of women 
sharing that they've been exploited or feel that they're victims of abortion. We also hear many women sharing they're proud of their abortions. But I'm here to say abortion is not about women. Abortion is about those who cannot speak for themselves and continue to be slaughtered in our state, only with the consent of their mothers. Under the current law, in rebellion against Almighty God, and we all share in the blood guilt. Jesus Christ came to save sinners, not victims or the proud. Abortion will never be unthinkable in our culture as long as it is permissible in our laws. The law may not change our hearts, but by God's design, it works to restrain evil and points us to the lawgiver who alone is the heart changer. It is true women have not historically been criminalized, but that does not make it right. God's word says, he who sheds man's blood by man, the civil government, his blood will be shed. As a woman, I support HB 896 without reservation. It demonstrates fear of the Lord and turning from evil. You have before you the only legislation that will put an end to this institutionalized evil. I call on you to repent with us and to work diligently to abolish abortion in Texas. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for that testimony. Any questions, committee? All right. Uh, Lisa? Yes, sir. Hello. My name is Lisa McMillan. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. Thank you. When I tell you that I am pro-life, I mean not only for the baby, but also for the mother. If we have a section in this bill that says that the mother is punishable by death if she performs an abortion, I believe that should be removed. I believe life is life. And I question how many astronauts, preachers, school teachers, presidents, carpenters have we lost to abortion? How many? Hmm. I was faced with this decision 31 years ago and now have a son in the Air Force. Hmm. And I am very proud that he's serving our country. The death of Lacey and Peter Lacey and uh, Connor Peterson led to the passage of the Unborn Victims of Violence Act. This act recognized Lacey Peterson's unborn baby, Connor Peterson, as a living human being and allowed his father to be charged and sentenced with Connor's murder. This is a precedent that we should follow in Texas and we should make abortion illegal. We live in a city that thinks it's okay and wants the animal shelter to be 100% no-kill. Okay, that's good, but what about the unborn children? We need to be their voice. This evil needs to stop now. There should never be abortions, much less a third term abortion, to where it's okay to kill a human being once it's delivered and freed from an abortion. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Please tell your son thank you for his service to our country as well. Yes, we sir. Really thank you very much. Any I will. questions, committee members? No. All right. Mimi? Yes. All right. You'll tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Okay. My name is Mimi Barreras, and I am testifying for House Bill 896 and for myself. And I want to tell you a slightly different angle to this story. Um, about 10 years ago, my sister gave birth to my nephew, Matthew. And in spite of all the testing in the world that we have available now, it was not apparent until birth that Matthew was born with Down syndrome. I don't know if you know a child that has chromosomal disorders or personally, but if you don't, you should because it may change your views a little bit. Mm. See, I firmly believe these children are blessed with something that we are missing. <laughs> Matthew's name means gift from God. His quote unquote scientific abnormalities are simply a blur to all who know him. But so many children like Matthew who are gifts from God will never have a chance at life and love because statistics show that we deny them that God-given and constitutional right to life. I speak today for the Matthews, who are mostly disposed of in the name of convenience. I believe that abortion should never be an option and that all humans, in and out of the womb, bodily perfect or not, are already, are already, already given by God in our Constitution the inalienable right to life and that it is of utmost importance that we establish that firmly as a state. Absolutely. Thank you, Mimi. Any questions? Representative Smith? I appreciate your comments on that. I, I was raised with a special needs individual. 
Uh, my father's older brother mm -hmm. uh, was not, he did not have any kind of a problem in the womb. He was born healthy and happy, but in 1936 in East Texas in a small town where there was one doctor who was just a general practitioner, he developed polio. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had a 107 degree fever and it just kind of really retarded him. Uh, and uh, he lived with me all my life until he, <clears throat> my, my brother and my sister, until he died about four years ago. But the gifts he gave us and that we would not have had and we would not, not have experienced had we not had Ob. His name was Aubrey. <laughs> We called him Ob. We called him all kinds of things. But anyway, he, he, and he gave as good as he got. But anyway, uh, you know, the point on this is exactly what you're saying is that, you know, uh, and, it, and it goes back to this importance versus value debate that we're having here today. You know, we, we're so on the side of importance, you know. Oh, we're state reps and we're important, okay. And somehow this baby's not important, okay. No, it's everybody has value, mm -hmm. uh, and the um, the disabled and the and and those who struggle with those issues have tremendous value in and of themselves. And then what th those of us who are around him realize uh, the mercy and the grace mm -hmm. and the things that we we develop as a result of that. We miss out on those things, and I appreciate you bringing that. Amen. Also, <laughs> Representative Smith. Uh, next, Monty from Arkansas. You got it right. All right, Monty, pleasure to have you in our state. If you tell us who you are, who you represent, and your position on the bill. My name is Monty Bartek. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. I am a native Texican, transplant, <laughs> forced into Arkansas, but I want to drive all the way down here to support this bill. First off, I want to thank you guys sincerely from the depths of our heart for, for opening up your ears and listening to us, because I know this is very repetitive to you, and uh, I know it's tough. It's long hours. So, and I especially thank uh, Congresswoman Niavi, even though she stepped out for a moment. Um, but it's important that we hear these testimonies. I ask that you would fully support this bill, not because you're a Republican, not because you're a Democrat, but because you are a human being. Each and every one of you were formed in your mother's womb. You are not a clump of cells. You are not a glob of tissue. When your mother and father made you, his sperm made it to your mother's egg, and the combination of those two things made life. You were too new to know you existed, and you were also too small to fight for your life. The safest place you could have was in your mother's womb. Aren't you thankful that your mother did not abort you? I know I am thankful that, uh, that my mother didn't abort me, and I know any, any person with a healthy mental state would also be thankful for that. Um, I know some children may not be perfect when, they, when they're born, not having all their fingers or toes or arms or legs or not even having the mental capacity that other babies have, but every baby is human and life is precious. Mm. Thank you, Monty. Uh, any questions? No, thank you again for making the trip over from Arkansas. Uh, thank you all very much for being here tonight. Uh, next, the chair will call uh, Matthew Ullman, Adrian Magnum, Barbara Miller and Dewell Garcia. Uh, on deck, uh, we have Tom Hofling, Abigail Barreras, Tim, Timothy Miller, and Sandra Carney. All right, Matthew. Uh, You're gentlemen, up. ladies, I just thank you for, for allowing to hear us. And I would just say uh, real simply. And please state your name. Uh, who you I'm with sorry, I'm Matthew Bowman. I'm in favor of this bill. Um, I am representing just myself. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I would just like to say very simply that I would be honored as our representatives if you would support this bill, support those children um, in, in mother's wombs even before they're born, and uh, pass it on to the House and pass it on in the House. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any questions? No? All right. Adrian? Mangum. Uh, Mangum. All right. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. My name is Adrian Mangum, and I'm representing myself. I'm here to speak for HB 9896. Thank you. This bill calls to end the murder of 55,000 children every year in this state. This bill calls to end the Texan Holocaust. 
HB 896 is different from many other pro-life bills in that it does not regulate abortion. It outlaws it, like the murder that it is. Just a couple months ago, 75,000 Texans signed a petition called Jeremiah's Wish. It was a petition to Governor Abbott to oversee the abolition of abortion. Those 70,000, 75,000 people want to see this genocide end. Aside from the fear of man, the Word of God says, Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. And the blood of thousands of murdered children will be on your hands if you do nothing to act now. This is your chance. If you act now, Texas will act with you. Fear God, not man, and give HB 896 a vote. And this wasn't in my original script, uh, but those smiles, I appreciate your smiles, but they're meaningless unless this goes to a vote and unless that vote is successful. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Any questions? No, appreciate you being here. Doel Garcia. Hello, hello, committee. Glad to have you all here and, and uh, really appreciate you all listening to everybody today. Been here most of the day standing back there listening and uh, catching all this stuff that's kind of new to me. Uh, I'm in favor of this bill. I'm from Morgan, Texas. I'm a native Texan. I'm a father, a grandfather, and uh, a follower of Jesus Christ. In your name? Oh, I'm sorry. That's Doel right. Garcia. All right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the reason I think abortion should be abolished is because it's hurt, it hurts women and it hurts families. There's no good that comes from abortion. It should be abolished because it's the murder of an innocent, completely defenseless human being. Maybe when Roe v. Wade was decided back in 1973, I just started high school, didn't even know what abortion was. Maybe then they thought that it was just a clump of cells. But scientific advancement and technology has long since proven that it is that it, that is not true, and modern ultrasounds clearly show that even as early as eight weeks, that a human baby is growing inside his mother. What kind of society allows its most innocent, vulnerable members to be executed because someone decides they are an inconvenience? Thank you. Thank you, Doyle, and I, I appreciate all your patience. I know you've been standing around a lot today, uh, but thank you for being here. Any questions? All right, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Uh, so the chair will call up now Tom Hofling, Abigail Barreras, Timothy Miller, and Sandra Carney. And then on deck we have Paul Juarez, Andy Pryor, Katrin Young, and Amy Hedke. All right, so let's start with Abigail. All That's right, me. all right, go ahead. Hello, my name is Abby Barreras, and I'm here today to speak in support of HB 896. And, and you represent yourself? I represent myself, Excellent, yes. thank you. I'm here as a living proof that there are real dangers in our current legal stance on abortion. When my parents went in for the ultrasound, the doctor said, that I had many chromosomal defects. Because my parents are pro-life, they decided that I was worth keeping. Hmm. The day of the next ultrasound, my parents entered the room prepared for the worst, but instead the tech began to cry out, this is not the same baby. Every chromosomal d defect was gone. Mm. Women, have now, women now have the option at nine weeks <coughs> to choose whether to carry the child with the defect or not, it is a very slipper, slippery slope when we can choose to be selective about things like the health of the child or the gender or even the race. This is eugenics. And eugenics has not one thing to do with choice. In the name of offering freedom, we are now not only to deny the baby human their God-given and constitutionally granted basic right to life, we are being dangerously selective about who lives and who dies, their race, their gender, their quality of life. Thank you, Abby. That's a great testimony. Uh, any questions? No. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you. Uh, next, the chair will call Sandra Carney. She'll tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Okay. Hello, my name is Sandra Carney, and I'm representing myself. I'm testifying for HB 986. As a mother of four, two of whom I was encouraged to abort, my first child due to getting pregnant at 17 years old and being unmarried, the thought of aborting her disgusted me and I knew it was wrong and I couldn't live with myself. Today, I'm a grandmother of two precious boys because of her life. 
My third pregnancy, I was told that my daughter had trisomy 18, which means she would probably die shortly after birth. By now, I had been a follower of Christ, and I knew it wasn't my decision because her life had value and that it was not mine to take. That was a difficult, challenging time, and I yielded to God and surrendered to him that whatever would happen, I would praise him regardless. Mm. He healed her. Today, she is a 17-year-old, strong-willed abolitionist. We are 46 years of allowing the murder of over 60 million innocent children, and we say we don't want women prosecuted. We should be saying mothers because the moment we become pregnant, we are mothers. We aren't and shouldn't be a special class of people. We say we want equality, but yet we want to be the only class that's allowed to murder our own children. How can we say that we know it's murder and then say that it's okay if a certain class of society does it? We must learn to be consistent in what we say. As magistrates, 1 Peter 2, 13 through 14 says, you are sent by God to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. So be bold and courageous. I've come to the Capitol almost weekly for the past several months, and I've heard that spoken many times but we must remember to be bold and courageous we are first told to obey God's instruction to be successful obedience to God's word leads to freedom and disobedience leads to slavery I ask you to rise up it started in Texas by a court opinion let us end it in Texas with righteous legislation thank you for giving this bill a hearing and I hope you support it in its entirety Thank you, Sandra. And I, I do want to point out, Representative Hugh Shine uh, is here with us today, and I believe yes, he is I, your representative. Yes, he is my representative. So I wanted to make sure we recognize, and yes. uh, Representative Swanson has also joined us tonight uh, again. So thank you for being here, Representative Swanson. Thank you, Sandra. Any questions? No, I appreciate the sentiments. Uh, and last, I think we have uh, Tim Hoefling. Tom. Tom. I'm, I apologize. Tom. That's right. Thank you, Thank you very here. much. Uh, again, I'm Tom Hoefling, Equal Protection for Posterity, and I drove a thousand miles to be here to tell you that I support this bill. Why, you might ask? Um, because what you do here in Texas affects the whole country. It was bad Texas legislating that gave us Roe v. Wade in the first place. The 1961 ta uh, Texas statute that was cited in Roe uh, failed to provide equal protection to the unborn child. Uh, jail time for the, or the abortionist was only two to five years, and the mother who hired the hitman to murder her child was let completely off the hook. That's why the Roe court used this statute to claim that the unborn child is not human. If Texas won't treat babies as human, why should the courts do so? That's exactly what Blackman argued in Roe, in fact. But you didn't swear an oath to obey judges. We don't live in a judicial oligarchy. We live in a constitutional representative republic. The folks in this room should know that better than anybody. You swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution, a Constitution that in the 14th Amendment absolutely requires every state in the Union to provide equal protection for every person. It's not optional. Uh, the ultimate stated purpose of our Constitution is to secure the blessings of liberty to posterity. Our founders put our rights on the same plane as their own. How can we do any less for our posterity, our children, our grandchildren? Look, look around this room. You have to be very hard-hearted to ignore what's going on in this room. The moral power that is being shown in this room is remarkable today. I've been in politics for 30 years, and this is one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. Uh, you have to be less than a patriot to ignore the constitutional arguments against allowing this holocaust, this genocide to continue. Things are changing. Look, look, this is Texas. These are Texas Republicans. You know, look, I hope you do the right thing on a moral basis, on a constitutional basis, but if nothing else, do it on the basis of your own self-interest. You're going to be buried by abolitionism, pro-lifeism, regulationism is dead. Okay, you're seeing the death of regulationism in this room right now. That's what you're seeing. You. So I, I urge you, pay no attention to the court, pay no attention to your colleagues, vote to uphold your sacred oath that you made to God and not to anybody else and provide equal protection for every person. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. It looks like you're from Iowa, so thank you for making that uh, drive. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Any questions? No. Thank you all Thank very you. much for being here uh, tonight. Okay, the chair next will call uh, Paul.
Paul Juarez, Andy Pryor, Katrin Young, and Amy Hedke. On deck, we have Karen Udy, Tammy Pierce, Thomas Udy, and Ray Williams. All right. I'm guessing you're Katrin? All right. Thank you for being here. If you will tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Hi, my name is Katrin Young. I am testifying in support of HB 896. I'm representing myself. Yesterday, April 7th, is the anniversary of my abortion. I was a 19-year-old college student and scared when I found out I was pregnant. Women who choose abortion are not heartless or terrified and were deceived. I bought into the lie that abortion is the easy way out. The fear I faced with an unplanned pregnancy was replaced with sorrow, grief, and self-loathing. It honestly felt like I had ripped my own heart out of my chest, like God couldn't possibly love me after what I had done, and that I didn't deserve anything good in my life after that decision. I spent the next four years of my life in self-destruct mode, and through that behavior, I became pregnant again. This time, I chose life and I overcame the fear of being a single mother and found joy in sacrificing my plans for my child. I knew in my heart that taking my child's life was wrong and no law passed by the government covered my guilt. The government may be able to legally justify a person's actions, but it cannot offer forgiveness, mercy, grace, or redemption to a heart grieved by shame and regret. Government was never meant to pardon sin. Only Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, has the power to pardon sin. Mm -hmm. Romans 5, 8 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. The abolition of abortion will put that power of pardon back into the hands of our creator. As a post-abortive woman, I have the power through Christ to come alongside other women and help mend the hurts caused by abortion. But as lawmakers... You have the incredible opportunity to end those hearts completely. Please vote in favor of HB 896. Thank you, Catch. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate it. Amen. Any questions? No. Andy, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Representative Krause. Good to see you. Thanks for being here tonight. If you'll tell us My who pleasure. you are, who you represent, and uh, your position on the bill. Absolutely. My name is Andy Pryor, and I'm co-founder of Equal Protection Posterity Texas. And I'm here testifying in favor of 896, HB 896, as filed. We would not be here today if your predecessors had done their job and provided equal protection for all. From the beginning of statehood, the Texas legislature has always failed in its most basic function of providing equal protection. HB 896 starts Texas on the road to equal protection for the first time in our state's history. The Texas abortion codes were essentially unchanged since the very first penal code was codified into law by the state legislature of Texas in 1856. Texas has always provided exceptions under the law from the very beginning of our statehood. Roe didn't create those exceptions. Roe simply said the exceptions were invalid, the exceptions were and remain invalid, but not for the reasons of the Blackman Court in Roe. Equal protection under the law and Constitution demands that the law apply equal to everyone. In addition to this bill, we must also amend the Texas Constitution, which remains, it maintains an artifact of slavery in its current form. And I've included some information about that in my written testimony as well. Thank you, Andy. Any questions, Mr. Pryor? No. Thank you again. Next to chair, we'll call Amy Hedke. Hi, guys. Amy Hedke, representing myself for this bill. Women are being lied to. Lied to by abortion doctors, abusive partners, and the state of Texas. All of you, except that I'm old football coach, are attorneys and well aware that existing law already address mitigating factors in murder investigations. Your tactics in questioning people on those are disingenuous at best. I spent 30 days in the county jail last year and got to speak to a lot of women in my tank. Being behind bars is not the worst barrier to therapy. You know what is? People who lie to you that what you did should be legal. And I agree with Representative Nayave that women should not be subject to capital punishment. I am anti-death penalty for everyone from womb to tomb. But I'm not going to let the state's bad actions on the death penalty sanction and exempt a crime that is just as heinous. I have testified against the death penalty in this capital before and I'll likely do it again. You want to help women? Stop lying to them. We can't catch all the bad guys, but you can stop being one of the bad guys. 
Let this bill have a vote in committee. Let it get to the floor and let the conversation continue. Thank you, Amy. Any questions? No, I appreciate y'all being here and sticking it out tonight, really do. All right, next we're going to have, and uh, Tom, uh, Chairman Leach earlier had asked that those two seats be reserved for whoever's kind of on deck, and I want to uh, honor his uh, wishes. Thank y'all very much. Uh, uh, next, uh, the chair would like to call up uh, Karen Udy, Tammy Pierce, Thomas Udy, and Ray Williams. And then on deck, we have uh, Dave Robbins, Robert Wood, Todd Bullis, and Hannah Heideman. All right, let's have Karen Udy go first. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and staying late here. Karen Udy, representing myself for. HB 896, Thank without you. exceptions. A Dallas abortionist has said, he's been quoted as saying, am I killing? Yes, I am. I know that, end quote. To defend abortion, unborn babies are dehumanized and devalued. Telling women they must kill their babies to, e to be equal in this society is barbaric. Or to say they can kill their babies without consequences is equally barbaric. A woman can only be convicted of a capital crime if she com commits a capital crime. You are sworn to protect Texas citizens. We are supposed to trust our judicial system to judge justly with the laws already on the books incorporated in this bill. And justice is supposed to be blind when it's implemented. We know abortion kills, and we know killing is wrong. Please choose life. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Any questions? All right, thank you. Uh, next we'll go, I'm assuming your husband, uh, Thomas. Yeah, we're related. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. My name is Tom Udy. I'm for HB 896. Uh, my granddaughter. And, and you're representing yourself. Yes, That's sir. Right. Okay, I'm thank sorry. you. My granddaughter, Iris, was born at 26 weeks. She weighed 2.1 pounds. Uh, we flew out from California to see her. Uh, it was on the spur of the moment. And uh, when I walked in to see her in the incubator, uh, it was horrible. Uh, she was less than the size of my hand. Her legs were like my fingers. Hmm. And she had... Uh, uh, a feeding tube and oxygen in her nose and a clamp around her little ankles for heartbeat and, and oxygen for her blood and all that. To, but she had to be life flighted for an operation to save her life. Uh, she also had to have a lot of 24-hour life-saving care in, in the incubator, as I said, in, in ICU. Because of this, some would say her life was not viable outside the womb. Her care was hard, expensive, and time-consuming. Now, today, she is a happy, healthy four-year-old mm. who plays soccer and is, is the light of our lives. She says, Grandpa, I love you. And I say, why, is, why Iris? And she says, because you are special to me. <laughs> And I say, Iris, I love you. And she says, why, Grandpa? And I say, because you're special to me. Please vote yes on this bill so the future innocent baby uh, Texans can say to you that you are special to them. Thank you, Tom. I bet Iris isn't spoiled at all, is she? Oh, yeah. yeah I bet. She, she really is some. I mean, she's just as precious as could be. I, I bet she is. Any questions? No, thank you for your testimony. All right, uh, Tammy Pierce, if you'd tell us who you are. She's Sorry. <laughs> I'm Tammy Pierce. I'm a Texas resident since birth. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two, and I'm a grandmother of seven. And I am speaking for House Bill 896 without exceptions. And representing yourself. And representing myself. Thank you. Representatives... Hitler successfully depersonalized humans who he considered biologically inferior and was therefore able to legally 
exterminate over six million Jews and other innocent people. And our country fought a war to stop that atrocity. Depersonalization is defined as the action of divesting someone of human characteristics or individuality. For 43 years, Roe versus Wade has depersonalized humans living in the womb, resulting in the extermination of over 60 million people, while the sale of their butchered body parts have become a lucrative industry and the blood of this Holocaust flows through the drains of Houston, Dallas, Austin, and every other city in Texas. I call on you, our legislators, to use the opportunity of HB 896, crafted by a courageous representative, Tony Tenderholt, to take this courageous first step in truly ending this scourge, this embarrassment, this clear and present evil of child murder called abortion in our beloved state of Texas. Thank you, Tammy. Appreciate that. Any questions? Members? No. Uh, Ray Williams. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, my name's Ray Williams. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. Thank I'm you. in favor of it. I thank you guys. And I'm asking you guys to please support it. Um, this has to end somewhere, and I hope it would end in Texas. This has been going on for 40 years now, um, over 40 years, over 60 million babies slaughtered. And we've been told for 40 years that the way to end this is we need the Supreme Court to tell us, uh, oops, we messed up. But the Supreme Court never had a right to tell us that we have a constitutional right to murder babies. We all have God's law written on our heart. We know that it is wrong to murder our babies and anyone else. We know this. And we don't need the Supreme Court to tell us this. And the only way this is ever going to stop is if somebody, if some state, and I wish to God it would be Texas, would stand up and say, no, it's going to end in Texas and it needs to end now, you know, and that's my plea. And I'm asking you guys respectfully, please give this bill a chance and let's put an end to abortion now in Texas. Thank you, Ray. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that respectful plea. Any questions for the witness? No, thank you all, all for being here and sticking it out tonight to be here. All right, next up we have Dave Robbins, Robert Wood, Todd Bullis, and Hannah Heideman. Next up uh, on deck we'll have Jill Robbins, Marcus Apodaca, Anna Lerma, and Luther Barnett. All right, Hannah, we'll have you go first. Hi, my name is Hannah Heideman. Um, I'm representing myself. I'm from Lockhart, Texas, um, and I'm going to be speaking in favor of House Bill 896. Thank you. Um, this is why I'm speaking in favor of it, because abortion is actually, it's not, it's not limited to being just a political issue or even a religious issue. This is a moral issue that we're talking about. This is a fight for the right to life. Let's step back and look at the big picture. A friend once asked me, actually just like a month or two ago, um, we were talking about World War II, and she said, how could anyone ever support a man like Hitler and approve of the hate and death of innocence? My reply was, by demoralizing, dismembering, and degrading the sanctity of life. Because first something is tolerated, then it is accepted, and then it is done. Abortion is no different. We are taking away the right to life and equality of that child. Please let us uncover our eyes and see that these babies are people just like you and me with real audible heartbeats, growth, and ability to feel pain. The dictionary defines life as the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter, including the capacity for growth, reproduction, functional activity, and continual change preceding death. In closing, I would also like you to think of it this way. Abortion is progressing. At one point, it was just before a heartbeat. Then it was before a second trimester, and now it is infanticide. 
in some states like New York? Where does it end? Will we end life based on age, on race, on medical conditions, based on faith, or even just because? If we cannot stop the genocide of the innocent, how far will it go? God created each of us out of love and with a purpose, each of us with a right to life that only God can take. Please end this modern holocaust and abolish abortion, and I urge you to take this bill to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Any questions? No, thank you for that testimony. Uh, Mr. Robbins, let's have you go ahead. Again, I'll note your representative, uh, Representative Shine, is, is here with us tonight. Yes. My name is Dave Robbins. I'm representing myself, and I'm for this bill. Thank you. Let's face it, the reasons for most abortions is because a woman doesn't want to be uncomfortable for nine months, or she doesn't, or she doesn't want to be stuck with a baby, as Barack Obama said. Uh, does a woman's discomfort give her an excuse to kill a living being? If it is growing inside her, it is a living, growing thing. It is a life. If you let it grow, it becomes the most beautiful, wonderful creation God ever made. It is not a clump of cells. It is a baby. God says in Proverbs 16, 7, I hate the shedding of innocent blood. There is no more innocent blood than a baby, born or unborn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. Any questions? All right, thank you. Robert? All right, Robert Wood. Uh, Robert Wood out of Benbrook, uh, representing myself and a family of five. Um, and I'm here in favor of HB 896. Thank you. Um, so kind of listening to tonight, a lot of what I'm, I'm picking up from folks is, hey, uh, I had a cool prepared thing. I'm getting rid of it. Um, the idea being, hey, we're coming up on two challenges in a legal sense that say, hey, how do we know we're making the situation better by passing this? Uh, the first one, the severity of the penalty for the mother. How do we know that what we're doing doesn't make it worse for the women? Two, what do we do about forced abortions? So I want to kind of address that in two ways. First, the death penalty. We have a system that's based on juries making decisions. That means that if a woman comes before a trial and the jury doesn't buy it, the jury doesn't finish the prosecution, she's able to walk. So there's a safety valve in our system built into that. There's an additional safety valve that's prosecutorial discretion. Discretion. The prosecutor doesn't have to prosecute to the full extent. He can do something different. So in our case, uh, section 19 of the penal code, section four, a manslaughter application can actually be used uh, as opposed to a full murder or homicide charge. So there's safety valves built into the law that Tenderhold has put in place for this to function correctly. Um, second, what do we do about forced abortions? Uh, already addressed equal protection under the law. The woman now has protection against coercion against her will. Second to that is Penal Code 22, Section 1A3, and that's going to qualify Section 221B6, which is actually verbatim that a pregnant individual is assaulted if she is forced to have an abortion. There's already a provision in the law for somebody forcing a woman to have an abortion. That's irrelevant to the discussion of this bill in front of us. Um, beyond that, you go farther down to Penal Code 22, sexual, provolt, sexual assault provisions actually apply to a lot of what abortion involves. And so there's double layer protection for a prosecutor to work with for a man who is behaving in a very reprehensible fashion with, uh, with a lady. Um, so guys, I encourage you to fight for women. 31 million killed. Thank you, Robert. That's a lot. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Wood? No. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. All right. Next. All right. Jill Robbins, Marcus Apodaca, Anna Lerma, and Luther Barnett. And then on, uh, on deck, we have Cassandra Weaver, Noah Apodaca, Aaron Scarborough, and Terry Tope. All right, you must be Jill. All right, if you would go ahead. Tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Yes, and Repres Representative Shine, I appreciate you coming and listening to the testimonies. My name is Jill Robbins. I represent myself, and I'm in favor of House Bill 896. Um, I want to remind everybody here we started out the afternoon seeking justice for victims. It, I'd like to continue to beseech you for justice for another group of victims. Abortion hurts everyone and everything it touches, and is, it has hardened the hearts of our whole nation. 
Motherhood is foundational for society's existence, but abortion, codified into law, has managed to convey the message to countless women that motherhood is a curse to be avoided and gives them the right to abandon their children to a butcher for slaughter for the sake of their own convenience. It has not empowered women, but instead has debased us, degraded us, and brought on us more abuse and exploitation by evil men. Abortion has opened wide the door for men to use women for sexual pleasure without taking responsibility for or making commitments to those they impregnate or the children they father. Because of the disregard for life overall, children are born into a society where they are not always valued and therefore we see more physical, sexual, and sex trafficking abuse. Our young people are being seduced with sex education in our public schools and are being led to believe it is their right to explore with numerous sexual partners, making them targets for sex trafficking and victims of a myriad of sexually transmitted diseases. They are also watching the adults around them advocate for and practice practice abortion in their own laws, teaching them that life has no value, their own or anyone else's, and that survival of the fittest is their destiny. But most profoundly, abortion hurts the preborn, the ultimate victims of this evil practice, depriving them of very life itself, of being loved and cherished, of enjoying friends and pursuing dreams, of experiencing love and marriage and having their own children to love and cherish. They are the ones we are here for. Yes, abortion has hurt us. Sin always has its consequences. We allowed ourselves to believe this was our right and for our benefit, both lies. But we are not here on our own account. We are here for those who had and continue to have no voice. We want you, our lawmakers, to establish justice, equal justice in the land. And House Bill 896 is the only pro-life bill that establishes equal justice. Please vote it out of committee. Please. Thank you, Thank you Mrs. Robbins. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Marcus? Yes, sir. All right. You're up next. First, I want to thank the committee for staying up this late. Y'all are pretty <laughs> amazing <laughs> yourselves. Thank you. Um, my name is Marco Zapadaka. I'm a Texan. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. Abortion is a symptom of a plague called sin that affects every human being worldwide. Sin bears fruit of evil thoughts, sexual morality, theft, murder, and abortion. We are in no way absolutely positive that by passing a law such as HB 896 that the sin of abortion will be eradicated from our land. And yet, we stand for HB 896 because it is the right thing to do. Our penal code acknowledges life from conception. It assigns personhood to the unique DNA that has been conceived in the womb. The problem is, as we've already heard, our penal code also gives the right to a mother to kill her child without any repercussions. Abortion murders the life of a unique DNA. Abortion is the death penalty for a life that has done nothing wrong. It is your sworn duty to protect the lives and citizens of the great state of Texas. This is your opportunity. We must seize it. HB 896 ends abortion and criminalizes it, providing equal protection for the unborn child. Listen to your conscience. Save millions by doing what is right. Be bold and courageous. We're praying for you all. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. I appreciate that. Any questions? Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, the next panel we have is Cassandra Weaver, Noah Apodaca, Aaron Scarborough, and Terry Tope. On deck, we have Vanessa Liao, Nathan Elewayana, ya, uh, Nathan <laughs> Elewenya, uh, hope you're here and hearing me and getting that name, Jonathan Murdoch and Jennifer Madrid. Uh, and just as uh, Chairman Leach had, had implored earlier, if you hear the double beep during your testimony, please uh, pretty much uh, wrap it up there. We still have over 200 witnesses for this evening. We know you have very good points to make, but a lot of other people do too. So when you hear those two beeps, I'm going to start being pretty good about saying thank you very much and we're going to move on. So please don't take it rude or disrespectful. We just want to hear from as many people as possible. Uh, Cassandra? Hi, I'm Cassandra Weaver. I'm a precinct chair, um, Republican precinct chair in 2030 here in Texas. And I have um, honestly been pro-life since I know the moment I became pro-life, I was in the fourth grade. So I remember <laughs> very clearly why I'm pro-life. I want to share, um, I 
I've rewritten what I was going to say like eight times today. So let me just say that the biggest reason why it is completely appropriate to criminalize women that have abortions is you are teaching them what is right and wrong. That is what our law is supposed to do. And as long as our law says it's okay to kill your baby, then they go in having an abortion thinking that it is okay. If it's murder and they know it's called murder, then they have to think about it. Then they will stop. Many, many, many will stop because of that. And we will not be prosecuting all the women in America or in Texas. We will just be prosecuting those that rebel against the law. Thank you, Cassandra. Um, I just want to make sure you are for the bill. For the bill. And representing yourself. Representing myself. And my husband texted me to make sure I was saying him as well. <laughs> yeah, well <laughs> my family. You just registered for yourself. So are you okay just being for yourself? That was fine. Okay, perfect. Um, the last thing I want to say is that I had no comprehension of any conversation that there was any such difference between pro-life or abolitionist until about nine months ago. And I will tell you that from the voters that I talk to and work with, they don't know the difference. And for everyone who thinks they're going to vote against this because the um, Texas right to life or they will be protected by some umbrella of, un of following the Texas right to life, that the voters do not know the difference and they think that you've come into this office because you are trying to end abortion that's what the voters in texas think they put you in office for for anyone who thinks that that's not what they want that's okay thank you uh cassandra we appreciate that any questions oh thank you uh next noah let's have you go my man Hello, my name is Noah Podaka. I'm a Texan. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for HB 896. Well done. That's how you do it. Good job, man. In the Bible, God said, Let us make man in our own image. So God created man in his own image. <clears throat> so we are all equal from the moment we were conceived in the womb to the moment we take our last breath. You were a baby once. Your mother didn't abort you. Wouldn't you like to stop other mothers from aborting their babies? Maybe the Lord had you born for this specific purpose to help stop abortions in the state of Texas. Acts 17.26 says, He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Do you care that, about the thousands of babies dying every year? If so, help us abolish abortion in Texas. By supporting this bill, you show that you care for the lives of the unborn. And by doing this, people might want to vote more for you because you care about the lives of the unborn. Thank you, Noah. Very well said. Old Testament and New Testament. Look at you. You're putting them both in. Well done. Any questions for Noah? No. Very well done. All right, next, Aaron Terry. or Terry? Terry. Terry, all right. Yes. Terry, great to have you here. Thank Please you. Proceed. I'm Terry Tope, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of myself in support of the House Bill 896, and I thank you guys for all the time that you spent on this whole issue today. Uh, in recent months, uh, I've watched as abortion leaders and proponents have cheered laws that have been passed in states that are allowing abortion right up to the point of death of, of the birth of the child. And I've heard others who are speaking even of wanting to allow a choice to to kill that baby after it's born it's clear that it's very difficult to know where this is going to end if we don't do something to stop it some argue that this is a complicated matter but the truth is it's not if i choose to go out and voluntarily kill another human being we all would say it's murder Today, every field of medical science validates that from the moment an egg unites with, an, with a sperm, a distinct, identifiable human life is formed. Yet because that human being is inside a woman's womb, we complicate the matter by saying that she has an absolute and unquestionable right to choose what she does with her body and to that innocent baby. While some may take issue that this bill imposes consequences on those who would choose to violate it, I would say that without consequences, there is no enforceability. 
At some point, we as a people have to stand up for common decency and compassion for innocent lives Thank you, that Pat. we are continuing to be subjected to cruel death. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate you being here. Any questions? No. Thank you all, all for being here. Really appreciate it. Great job, Noah. All right. Next, we have Vanessa Leal, Nathan. Okay, Jonathan Murdoch and Jennifer Madrid. And then on deck, we have Vicki DeFord, Amanda Stagg, John Speed, and Jim Davis. All right, Vanessa? No, Jennifer? Yes. All right, let's have you go first. Oh, Tell okay. us who you are, your position on the bill, and uh, who you represent. Okay, my name is Jennifer Madrid. I am representing myself and I am for the bill HB 896. Thank you. I am a rape survivor and have been waiting 30 years to have this opportunity to support a bill that treats abortion as murder, even and especially in the case of rape. That may sound strange, but just as I didn't deserve to be pregnant against my consent, my daughter did not give consent to her murder. She did not deserve the death penalty I and my government gave her for my rapist crime. Mm. And as a teenager, I didn't deserve to carry the guilt of that for the rest of my life. Earlier, Becky Leach talked about the need to create a culture for the victim rather than a culture for the offender. I couldn't agree more. In my case, the offender got off scot-free on two counts when I kept my pregnancy secret and secretly had my baby aborted. The evidence for my rapist crime was destroyed and um, he had to face, or he did not have to face, the death penalty for sexual assault. And in my case, I didn't have to pay the penalty for murder when I paid to have my daughter killed. After my abortion, I spent 19 days in a psychiatric hospital, traumatized after coming home from the abortion and finding remains of my baby's mangled body. I've spent 30 years suffering with PTSD, autoimmune disease, and cancer. Add to that the grief of the reality that when my own biological mother was faced with an unplanned pregnancy with me, she gave me life and a family through adoption. And I didn't do the same for my daughter. Hmm. Today I refer to my daughter as Hannah after receiving loving help from a Christian ministry that helped me to fully embrace the forgiveness God had for me in Jesus Christ. Mm. If you've had an abortion, there is forgiveness. And I need to shout that from the rooftops. But wouldn't it be far better if we found more kind and compassionate love and support for women who are victimized rather than further victimizing them and their babies by encouraging and legalizing their murder? It may seem cruel to ask a woman to endure nine months of a pregnancy she didn't choose. On its face, it would seem that way. But please hear me when I tell you that the real cruelty was telling an already traumatized teenage girl that ripping apart and killing a child would end her suffering. For me, it was, the on it was only the beginning. I wish I could turn back time and suffer for nine months rather than for 30 years. Abortion is the ultimate example of creating a culture for the offender. It enables rape, abandonment, oppression, sex trafficking, and more. And of course, we cannot forget the 63 million innocent children who have died as we have made legal their murder by the one created to love and nurture them. Please support the only pro-life bill that creates a culture that is for all victims. Thank you for your time. Wow, thank you, Jennifer. It was powerful. Thank you for being here. Any questions? Uh, as we talked about Becky Leach earlier, courage personified, being willing to testify. It's the exact same thing in your case. Thank you for being here. All right, uh, next uh, next witness we have, I believe, is uh, Jonathan Murdoch. That's right. Yeah. My name is Jonathan Murdoch. I am a pastor uh, from Port Arthur, Texas. Um, uh, and I am here in favor of HB, uh, House Bill 896. I represent myself and my church, Trinity, Trinity Baptist Church. Um, I don't need to convince you that abortion's wrong, 
one of the things I was shocked today is to know or to learn that you are against it and that there's enough here on this panel that uh, I believe that it's murder. And it's been a blessing to me today. Thank you. So what I want to do is I want to address two things. Um, one, if a 17-year-old boy rapes a 27-year-old woman, she will not be charged for uh, statutory rape um, because we have a just justice system that will sift through that. And so I support the bill for that. Secondly, um, uh, uh, Representative M M Mayer argued today that there wasn't enough representative uh, from uh, all their attorneys to say that something was wrong. And so a bill ought to get to the House because there wasn't enough support on the, from the other side. Today we've had overwhelming support. And thirdly, the question was asked to Representative Niave, uh, why hasn't this passed? And I want to answer that question. It was a great question. Thank you for the question. It says in Exodus 1.17 that the women didn't ch kill the children because they feared the Lord. And this hasn't passed, and something like this hasn't passed because men haven't feared the Lord. And I would just ask you tonight, fear the Lord. Thank you, John. Members, questions? Okay, the chair calls... Um, Amanda Stagg, John Speed, is Jim Davis here, Carl Klaus, were they called on that, that panel and they're just not here, Vicki DeFord, Vicki come on up. Okay, Jim, Jim Davis is not here, and Carl Klaus is not here. Okay, uh, the next panel is going to be Abigail Marino, Wesley Thomas, Rita Palomarez, and Charles Speed. Is it Mr. Ford? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Ford. You're first. Okay, I had all written out, but so much of it has already been said, and... I appreciate all that you read and said yourself, um, Mr. Leach, and so many of y'all have been very touching. I appreciate that, and I don't want to reiterate what's already been said, but I, uh, when I was 17, uh, became pregnant, and my family, my mother, my, you know, they all wanted me to have an abortion, and I chose not to, and they disowned me, and I was basically homeless and pregnant and lived here and there with friends or, or whatever. And during that time, you know, I, I know it seems unbearable to, to people, you know, a woman who's young and, and this happens and, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do and how can I do this? And But God saw me through, and I wasn't a religious person back then, but I knew, I, I, yeah, I have no question about that. And uh, later, you know, fast forward several uh, years later, I had an abortion, and I have suffered for many years from that. Uh, I wanted to um, just be... Yeah, just go, go ahead and find a closing point, Vicki. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted some things that wasn't touched on uh, that, you know, I mean, this is, I agree with everything that's been said and all, but right now with all the, the abortions, American, so many American babies are being aborted, yet we have other illegals or, or from other countries or, you know, and we're, we're never going to catch up with our population and with our, um, you know, workforce, and this is going to make a tremendous impact on our country. Um, as a whole, and that I also. Um, Vicky, I need to ask you to wrap up if okay. you can. Okay. Yeah, but and this is just too, you know, the easy way out. It, we need to be held accountable. And this is a serious matter. You know, people, you. activists save dogs, but not babies. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. You. Members, any questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Amanda Stagg. Hi, my name is Amanda Stagg, and I gave my full testimony to Sean to pass out okay, to you guys. Great. I'll try to stick to our one-minute um, limit. Thank you. I represent myself, and I support House Bill 896. Midway through my husband's surgical residency, we found out that we were pregnant with our fourth child. 
there was anxiety and then of course excitement but at our 20-week ultrasound we saw that our new baby girl who we named mary was missing important parts of her brain and wouldn't live long after birth the choices were given terminate the pregnancy or carry mary and see what happened we immediately chose to carry mary as long as possible but we struggled my husband asked his father who is also a physician of 35 years isn't it more merciful to end this now what's the difference in ending the pregnancy now or her passing later he wisely answered that by taking her from my womb early we were taking life into our own hands but by allowing her to die naturally we left life and death in god's hands where it belongs some days sorrow threatened to swallow us yet hope held us up hope in a god who faithfully loves us and endows all life with purpose Mary's brief two hours of life were beautiful and filled with love. We could have missed that. I believe hopelessness and in the worst case scenarios, convenience leads us to abort our unborn children. It takes courage to choose life, especially when it feels inconvenient or unwanted, but it also brings much joy and peace. Regardless of religious belief, it is our duty to protect all life. Our choices will affect generations to come and will echo throughout eternity. Passing this bill will be a huge step towards protecting life, and the power is in our hands. Please vote to pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you, man. I'm really glad you chose life, and thank you for your thank testimony. You. The chair calls on John Speed. My name is uh, Pastor John Speed. I'm pastor of Christ is King Baptist Church in Syracuse, New York, and we drove down here to testify this evening. Um, praise God for the opportunity. Uh, I also co-produced a documentary called Babies Are Murdered Here, and we're currently producing another documentary called Babies Are Still Murdered Here. Um, two points I want to make. If you say that those who murder humans outside of the womb deserve a life sentence or the death penalty, but you hedge on the issue of providing equal justice for life inside of the womb, you've revealed something about what you really believe about the pro-life issue. In so doing, you reveal that despite the pro-life plank in the platform, you have bought the pro-choice lie that life in the womb is not as precious as life outside of it. You must act, and you must do so irrespective of federal interference. All lawmakers have historical precedent for ignoring Roe. The Fugitive Slave Act was passed in 1850. Federal law demanded that northern states surrender runaway slaves to their former owners in the south. In 1850, citizens and politicians met in Syracuse to discuss the response. Reverend J.W. Laguan, a runaway slave, pastor, and abolitionist, addressed the meeting as follows. What is life to me if I am to be a slave in Tennessee? My neighbors, I have lived with you for many years, and you know me. My home is here. My children were born here. And do you think I can be taken away from you and from my wife and children and be a slave in Tennessee? Has the president and his secretary sent this enactment up here to you, Mr. Chairman, to enforce on me in Syracuse, and will you obey him? Logan could speak for himself. These babies cannot. Has the Supreme Court sent Roe down here to enforce on these babies in Texas, and will you obey that ruling? You must not. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speed. Uh, from New York, you said? Yes, sir. Thank you. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> um, thank you. The chair calls Abigail Marino, Wesley Thomas, Rito Palomarez, and Charles Speed. The, the next group will be Tom Glass, Joel Tope, Anna Forget, and Donna Escarino. Miss um, Moreno, let's start with you. Is Miss Moreno here? Okay. Wesley Thomas. Go Mr. Ahead. Chairman, yeah. members of the committee, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you for your patience. My name is Wesley Thomas from Dayton, Texas. I'm a precinct chair for the Republican uh, Party of Liberty County, and I'm here today representing Abolish Abortion Texas. I'm for the bill. Members, I think you know that abortion is murder. I think you do want to end it. This bill is very simple. Preborn persons should have the same protection under law as born persons. That's it. That's all it does. Okay. Let's be very clear. Your failure to pass this bill out of this committee is a death sentence 
for 110,000 babies that will be killed over the next two years. They're made in the image of God. If you were to change this bill, you would actually be making the same mistake as those Texas legislators which made our laws inequitable a long time ago, which actually led to Roe versus Wade in the first place. If you were to do that, you would be creating a bill which would actually allow only do-it-yourself abortions. Mr. Thomas, I need to ask you to uh, stick to the t time limit. We've, we've got a, we have 203 witnesses left. Okay. I'm sorry, I did not that, realize that, it was over that fast. <laughs> so that, that, yeah, I know. This goes quite quick. Yes. One minute goes quick. Absolutely. So I'm really going to try to stick to it. If Thank we could you. Wrap up. Don't encourage and expedite the innovation of the abortion industry All by right. promoting those. Thank, Thank you. you. Chair calls Rita Palomarez. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tenderholt committee members for hearing us all day. My name is Rita Palomares. I am representing myself, and I am for this bill, HB 896. Women for a long time have been told a very big lie, that our bodies are our own. It is not our own when we become pregnant. Men, when you impregnate a woman, it is no longer <laughs> her body. It is your baby inside her body. You have every right to stop her from killing your baby. You should not make any decision on, she should not make any decision on her own without you. Killing babies is, is barbaric. If Oklahoma can abolish abortion, why can't Texas? So today I have brought <clears throat> Inconvenient Isabel. Uh, my mommy did not want me because she had other plans and I was not part of them. Mommy always wanted a family, just not now. I was taken to a doctor that hated me enough to rip my tiny legs off, break my fingers, and my toes. Ma'am, I need you to, your, your one minute is up, if you could finish your testimony. Thank yes. You. All right. Um, break my fingers, suck my organs out because my little head was too big. He broke into pieces. I never did anything um, but to you, Mommy, I love you, and I love your warm body. Mommy, am I really worth more dead than alive? Thank you. Uh, Charles Speed. My name is Charlie Speed. I'm from Syracuse, New York. Um, thank you, Mr. Greenman, Gender, um, Chairman members. Um, I am um, doing it um, myself, and um, I'm testifying for the bill. Hey, Charles, Yeah. take your time. Okay. okay. Take your time, buddy. Um, I used to live in Texas for half of my life, and um, since abortion is murder, it is only right to give equal justice to the babies who are murdered. What if someone came in in my in here today and murdered me? You would you um say? I guess we can arrest the murderer because Charlie was only 15 and he's from New York. If you were if you said that you would not be just a lawmaker. If you say the baby in the womb is a human, but do not um, have a penalty for ending the baby's life, have you? How can you be just a lawmaker? I know that people want to end abortion without giving a penalty to the person who pays for abortion in Texas, going to change the law so that. Those higher hitmen to murder people outside of the womb get a ticket for jaywalking. Babies are murdered here and abortion now. If anyone here has had an abortion for you, you can um, be forgiven and healed with if you repent of your sin and place your faith in um, Jesus alone. I hope you will. Thank you. Charles, thank you. Great job. Members, any questions for the panel? Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate you being here. Uh, chair calls Tom Glass, Joel Tope, Anna Forget, and Donna Escarino. The next panel will be Alexi Skorsky, Martha Doss, Bruce Stinson, and Shelley Rubenstein. Tom, go ahead. Uh, yes, my name is Tom Glass. I represent Texas Constitutional Enforcement and myself, and we are in favor of HB 896. Uh, I, the, uh, the proponents of this bill face not only the policy 
aspects of, of the bill in terms of persuasion, but the, to overturn a notion that has been destructive of lives and liberty uh, for about a century and a half here in the United States, and that is the idea that the Supreme Court is the final arbiter of constitutional meaning. Um, the, uh, the, the person who gets to decide finally is the boss, and we were never intended to be uh, ruled by judiciary. And in fact, Roe is a perfect example of, of the tragedy that happens when that occurs. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, this doctrine has been taught in law schools, and, um, and essentially what they're telling us is that it's civil disobedience for us to pass this law because, of course, disobedience implies master-servant, and the Supreme Court is our ruler, but that's wrong. They're the ones that are being disobedient to their supreme law and to God's law. We're the masters. It's perfectly right for us to take over and become the sovereign people that we are and declare we're sovereign. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Members' questions. Okay. Is it Joel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Joel Tope, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Is Anna um, Forget not here? Anna Forget or uh, Donna Escarino? Okay. Joel, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, representatives. My name is Joel Tope, and I'm representing myself today, and I'm here in favor of House Bill 896. Uh, I'm the student pastor at First Baptist Church Kingsland. Um, I wanted to say real quickly, look around this room. Uh, it should be really clear how Texans feel about abortion. We're all thankful to you as our representatives. I know that there is some hesitancy in passing this bill since it will hold women criminally liable for the act of abortion. I would like to point out that there is clearly only one innocent victim in each of these cases. Psalm 19 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Attempting to remove the God-given consequences for sin has led us to where we are today. The truth is, is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are accountable for that sin. Declaring this fact will lead the women and men to their need for a savior who is the only one who can truly bring healing in this mess. I pray you have listened closely to the testimonies of those women's, women who have been guilty of killing their babies in the past. Please vote for this bill and challenge the followers of Jesus Christ, like myself, to be the hands and feet of our savior today. Thank you. All right, thank you. Members, any questions for the panel? Okay. Um, chair calls on Lexi Swirsky. Lexi, are you here? Okay, come on up. Martha Doss. Bruce Stinson. And Shelly Rubenstein. Steen? Rubenstein. Rubenstein. Okay, so Martha Doss is not here. Not here. Sorry. Okay, come on, if you don't mind. Um, Alexi Swirsky, go ahead. Yes, my name is Alexi Swirsky. I'm representing myself. I support House Bill 896. There was a question earlier focusing on how many illegal abortions occur each year in Texas. I agree with Representative Swanson that that question is irrelevant to the matter discussed. Even one murder of an unborn child is too many, whether the abortion is illegal or legal. Whether one baby or one million babies are murdered through illegal or legal abortions each year in Texas, the criminal penalty should be severe enough to present the future, prevent the future murder of unborn children. Since when is whether an immoral act is considered a crime or not, depend on how often that immoral act occurs. Upon conception, a baby has its own unique DNA, which will never again be re replicated in another human being. Each person has something unique to accomplish and contribute to the world. Texas and the United States needs each child to be born and to make those contributions. Please vote to pass House Bill 896 out of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, thank you for your testimony. Um, you were referring and just testifying about the bill that Representative Swanson had, correct? That's what I thought was relevant to this bill. Okay, thank you. Okay, Representative Yave, point taken. Um, we've got to keep our testimony to the bill at hand. Um, I'm sorry I missed that, but um, we need to make sure that our testimony is on the bill, not on any other bills. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Ms. Swirsky, just to clarify, your position, you're here to testify on this bill, yes. correct? And you're for House Bill 896. Yes. And you're not here to talk about any other bills, correct? I spoke earlier on another bill. I'm, I'm talking right now 
in this testimony. Are you here to talk about and testify for House Bill 896 and yes. no other bill? Yes. Thank you. Um, the chair calls Martha Doss. I don't think, Martha, go ahead. Good evening, my name is Martha Doss. I, rep I represent myself, I support this bill. I'm still in disbelief that it is legal to end the lives of innocent, helpless, precious babies in a horrific and violent way. And I will not remain silent and call this for what it is, and it is murder. The pain that these helpless babies go through is sickening. The abortion procedure is disgusting and violent. Can you imagine being dismembered and their precious little bodies being ripped apart limb from limb, the pain that they endure? And I cannot understand how we allow this to continue to happen. Yet we have federal laws that protect animals that are extinct, but we remain silent when it comes to human life being terminated. And nowadays, abortion is even encouraged in, in um, you, if your child has Down syndrome or because a baby may have some uh, deformities, it saddens me because I believe that all children are miracles from God. And that uh, for those of you that are for pro-choice, I just wonder how you would feel if it was you being aborted. Would you still stand by uh, your support of abortion if it was you being aborted, if it was you being ripped apart limb Thank from you. limb? Thank you. Um, the chair recognizes Bruce Stinson. My name is Bruce Stinson. I'm from Hampshire, Texas, and I represent myself and First Baptist Church in Hampshire. I'm here today to support, voice my support for House Bill 896. As a pastor, it would be obvious for my support of this bill to be purely and unapologetically biblical, and if I had no other reason, that alone would be enough. But I come today as a father of a daughter who was born at 26 and a half weeks mid-pregnancy. During a routine prenatal checkup, it was determined my wife and baby were in danger. After talking with our OBGYN, it was decided the safest way to handle the trauma that was happening in my wife's body was to deliver our daughter early. So in August of 2002, we welcomed our two pound, six ounce daughter into the world. To think that her body was completely formed, beautifully created, breathing, blood flowing, and that body today across many states in our country would be perfectly acceptable to abort her at this term in pregnancy is grotesque and unimaginable to me. As a father, as a Christian, and a lifelong Texan, nothing would make me more proud of our state than to unite our laws in regarding the sanctity of human life. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Shelly Rubenstein. Hello. <clears throat> my name is Shelly Rubenstein, and I'm here on behalf of my unborn child who was killed at three weeks gestation at the Austin Planned Parenthood in 1973. I was a dancer at San Marcos at, at Southwest Texas State University, and I felt the conception. Um, if you go back to when I was a child, um, Planned Parenthood came to my fifth grade classroom when I was nine years old and played pornographic videos and made us get together with boys and play games like put the condom on the banana. And she had a mantra, and it went like this, abortion is the answer, abortion is the way. You can do anything you want, and abortion makes it okay. I was horrified, but I didn't have the words as a nine-year-old to express how everything that had happened that day made me feel. And so I asked my father, is abortion okay? And my father said, yes. If it takes a few babies, welfare babies, off the welfare rolls, then yes, abortion is okay. So when I found myself in 1973, pregnant and afraid, I followed my education, and I went to Planned Parenthood in Austin, Texas, one month after Roe versus Wade. It was up and standing, state of the art, there was blood on the cannula used from pre previous abortions. My uterus was perforated, and the infection nearly killed me, rendering me barren. But there's joy in the story. There's joy in the journey, and I know I'm out of time, but I have to tell you the good part. When I was, when I was um, 35, I had the opportunity to adopt a baby girl Amen. who was conceived as a result of rape and scheduled for a saline abortion when she was six months in the womb. 
But her biological mother said, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't sound safe. If you can't even tell me how much it's going to cost because it's big, why would I do that? And so she went searching for a family to adopt my daughter. And we were the ones that she chose. And there's a part of the story that no one else has told tonight. And that is my daughter is now 33 years old. And she has given me four beautiful grandchildren, Thomas, John Parker, Eloise and Lucy would not be with us brightening everyone they meet with their beauty, with their intelligence, with their love for life. Um, and so we're, we're aborting generations and we're aborting them based on having told young women lies. Thank you, Ms. Rubenstein. Members, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to each of you, Ms. Rubenstein. Thank you. The chair calls Tatum Zico, Rhea Shaheen, Jasmine Wang, and Caroline Caselli. Caroline, why don't we start with you? Great. Um, to spice things up, uh, my name is Caroline Caselli. Um, I am representing myself, and I'm against this bill. Um, I'm a venture-backed tech CEO, and I just moved my company to Austin after raising $2.4 million. I'm here because I'm concerned about the privacy and freedom of my female employees. To say this bill is extreme is an understatement, uh, actually murdering your citizens. Um, for a medical procedure is, uh, is pretty extreme to me. Um, I moved to Texas because it's supposed to be pro-business. Um, however, taking away the privacy of my female employees is not a pro-business move. The issues here have been settled by the Supreme Court law for the past 46 years. So regardless about how you feel about the issue personally, it is a privacy issue and it's also a business issue. And so I encourage you to think about in your push for limited government to also consider that limited government and focus on privacy in a way that extends to the medical realm as well. I know you've heard compelling testimony from essentially 350 people uh, that are anti-choice, and I want to let you know that not everyone feels this way. Uh, you have constituents who don't believe the way that you do, and, um, and I, I implore you to legislate lightly. Um, you have an obligation to the broader 28 million Texans who are much more diverse than those that are in this room. Thank you. Thank you, members. Questions? Jasmine Wang, your name, affiliation, and your position on the bill. My name is Jasmine Wang, and I'm here with NARAL Pro-Choice Texas. I'm here to testify against HB 896. This bill is nothing but an attempt to criminalize, stigmatize, and strip access to abortion. The bill authors know that this legislation is unconstitutional because of federal judicial precedents set by Roe v. Wade. So even giving this bill a hearing is a waste of both time and resources. With no exceptions for rape, incest, fetal abnormalities, or even the health of the mother, legislators are expressing a blatant disregard for both the proper practice of medicine and the individuals who would be forced into potentially life-threatening okay. situations. Okay, all right, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Ms. Wang, you're with NARAL Pro Choice Texas. Yes, sir. Or do you do NARAL's Pro Choice Texas Twitter account? I don't. You don't? Okay. Because uh, I've seen you retweet some stuff tonight that NARAL has, has tweeted about this being a waste of time, essentially attacking me for giving this bill a hearing. Do you realize that every member who files legislation, nearly 300 bills in this committee, every single one of those members are getting a hearing? Sure. Yes or no? Yeah, um, I remember you saying last week that you would not put up any legislation that would criminalize abortion. I said, I said very clearly that I'm going to have a hearing on every single bill, every single bill, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And frankly, I think the members of this legislature, Republican and Democrat, and the people of Texas deserve no less from the chairman of this committee. So let me be very clear. <laughs> let, me, let, let me also be very clear, Ms. Wang, I want to ask you some questions. Do you believe that there should be any limitations on a woman's right to get an abortion? No. So at 39 weeks, you believe that a woman should be able to terminate the life of her child? If that is what is yes the best. Yes or no? Yes. At 39 weeks? Yes. 
you believe that a woman should be able to terminate terminate the life of that Absolutely. child? Absolutely. Why? Because it is not any of there's no one in this room who is can make a decision. To you? Yes, abortion is health care. And I am not that 39 week old baby. I am not in any position to speak for a woman in her personal decision. That is who, not my okay, place and that is not you, anyone's place in this who's room. Who's speaking for that 39 week old baby? The mother. She will make the decision for her body. What, and what no, is what, best what for her body the, and her life. What about the baby, Miss Wang? What about that baby? 39 what about, weeks. What about the mother? Miss Wang, I'm asking you about that baby. That baby that is living and breathing. His heart, her heart is beating. She's moving. She feels pain. She recoils. This is 39 weeks. Science actually proves that a baby can feel pain at 20 weeks. But let's focus on the 39 weeks. Let's focus on that just for a second. Because I want the people of Texas to understand very clearly, not what your position is necessarily, but what the position of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas is. I'm not speaking for NARAL when I say that. You're... You're here testifying on behalf of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas. And I'm Texas. here on behalf of myself. What is the position of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas? I can't speak to that. Are, does NARAL Pro-Choice Texas believe there should be any limitations on a woman's right to get an abortion? Representative Leach, respectfully, Chair, I... Chairman Leach, please. Thank you. Chairman Leach, respectfully, I'm here in the capacity as a legislative intern, and I cannot speak on behalf of the entire organization. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to send along some information to your office. I, I am very, very <laughs> disturbed at that testimony, and I've seen throughout the testimony over the past few hours, people in this room, a few of whom are sitting on that panel snickering and laughing and giggling with each other at what people in this room themselves have gone through, the life's most difficult decisions and the most difficult scenarios and situations. Women who themselves have had abortions and have suffered greatly for their whole lives as a result of that decision. And I cannot, as the chairman of this committee, put up with snickering and laughing and giggling when we're dealing with literally life and death issues. And I don't appreciate it. Members, any other questions? Representative Krauss. Uh, Chair, I, I do want to correct one thing that I think was alleged earlier. You never said that you would not hear a bill. You said you would not pass a bill out of this committee that criminalized uh, a woman. So I, I do think that's a distinction. Uh, thank you for your testimony. Would, uh, does NARAL, would they support um, partial birth abortion? As stated previously, I'm serving as a legislative intern, and I am in no capacity to speak on behalf of the organization on any official position, and I defer to our executive director. You're, okay, you're, how, how about you here personally? in front of the committee on behalf of NARAL Pro-Choice Texas. How, it, personally, partial birth abortion up to 39 weeks, uh, is that okay? I'm not a physician, Representative Krause. I'm just asking for your position uh, whether partial birth abortion... Is something that That's the mom has a choice to, me to do. That's because whatever is best for the health of the woman, that is something that she and the physician must decide. Okay, I agree, but uh, or, or I, I, I see your point. I, I don't agree. I, I see your point. But earlier you had said that we shouldn't even be having this conversation because that's unconstitutional. Well, the Supreme Court has found that partial birth abortion, uh, partial birth abortion ban, is constitutional. So. You would not agree that the Supreme Court got that right and would allow a mother to have a partial birth abortion, even though the Supreme Court has said that that should not happen? I can't speak to that. Okay. Thank you. Members, questions? All right. Thank you. Ms. Cassell, you're not uh, recognized at the time. We'll come back to you in just a sec. Um, uh, Tatum Zico. Hello, my name is Tatum Zico. I am representing Deeds Not Words and myself. Um, I'm testifying against this bill. I have many reasons to be here. And one of them is this idea, excuse me. You talk a lot about murder. And I'd like to talk to you about that. As someone who's had to deal with the grief when I was 18 years old, a friend of mine was murdered in Dallas. Her name was Zoe Hastings. She was brutally murdered. And that's grief. And I resent listening to you all speak about abortion, especially a six-week abortion when the fetus has not moved forward 
when it's still a clump of cells, scientifically speaking, that's not at all equivalent. Excuse me, I'm sorry. You're, you're fine, take your time. I am an advocate for survivors of sexual assault. I've been helping survivors for the past two and a half years. And another issue that I have with this bill is that it takes no exceptions. So a survivor of a rape, which I know we've, we've heard from a beautiful testimony from a rape survivor, and I appreciate that testimony, but I also appreciate that she was given the choice and I hope that we get to continue giving rape survivors the choice. Furthermore, at UT Austin, one in five women will be raped at their time in college. In the US, one in three women will get an abortion. There are almost 200,000 more women in Texas than there are men, and only 33 women in the Texas House. So that means we have to trust the 114 men will believe our pain, even though they can never understand what pregnancy is like. Men are born with bodily autonomy, and I am told at a young age to protect my body from harm. However, I was never taught about safe sex in school, and I wish I had been, because that would have honestly helped a lot of the conversation that I'm having in school for rape survivors. When you all prepared for your LSATs, your SATs, your ACTs, it was probably recommended that for greatest success, you should take a class in order to better succeed, right? That makes sense, right? The more you know, the better off you will be. The same can be said for teaching our students about sex. We set our kids up to fail by not teaching them about safe sex. This bill tells women with histories that they are not important, that they, they are left to be mothers. And my mom was a stay-at-home mother, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that some of us don't want that for our futures. And I appreciate all of the testimonies that came before us. And I appreciate you all staying here so late and allowing me to go over time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Tatum. We really appreciate you being here and for your testimony. Members, any questions? All right, Rhea. 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 Rhea, what's your last name again? How do you Shahane. Know? Shahane. If you'll just state your name and affiliation, your position on the bill. So my name is Rhea Shahane. I'm here with Deeds Not Words and for myself, and I'm here against this bill. And everyone here seems to be arguing for the sanctity of a supposed life, but no one here seems to care about the sanctity of a woman's life. You say you're pro-life, that every life is important, but what about the women who have and will die as a result of this law? You say that abortions won't occur if this is passed, but countries that have made abortions illegal have some of the highest rates of abortions in the world, with 37 out of 1,000 women getting abortions. And out of these women, 23,000 mothers, daughters, and sisters died last year alone because of something that could be prevented. In the U.S., less than 0.001% of women die from abortions. Are you really willing to take responsibility for all the women you killed through the passage of this bill? How can you be pro-life and pro-killing women? Banning abortions has nothing to reduce the need for abortion. It just perpetuates a narrative that women's lives do not matter. If you want to reduce abortions, stop teaching abstinence-only education. Start expanding contraceptives. That's what's decreased abortion by 20% in the last 10 years in developing countries. Not through super superficial band-aids that claim to fix the problem. Not by enacting unconstitutional laws that take away the rights of your con constituents. And not by telling people with uterus that their lives don't matter. I urge you to vote no on this bill and allow women to have their own autonomy. The people here testifying for the bill do not represent Texans, the millions of us who cannot be here today because they do not have the privilege of taking the day off. I urge you to vote no, because if you don't, we'll find someone who will. Thank you for your testimony. I do want to just clarify for the record that we've had um, to testify um, over 350 folks, and there's 10 who are registered against the bill. And the folks that I know that we've heard from tonight, the vast majority of them have, on their own dime, left their jobs, taken time off from work, taken vacation time. They're, they're not here because they've got all the money in the world or that because they've got plentiful vacation days or because they have nothing else to do. These people believe in this cause just like you do. And let's, let's respect them for being here in their capital 
at 10:15 at night with 200 witnesses left to go let's show some respect for everyone no matter what their position is I do bill. respect that and I do admire their dedication of being involved in this democratic process that's the only way democracy works but I also urge you to look at the socioeconomic and racial makeup of the people here today people who do not have paid sick days people who do not have paid leave who cannot come here because they cannot afford to take time off because if they do they won't have money to feed their children and pay rent I just urge you to keep that in consideration. That's all I'm saying. Noted. Say, thank you for pointing that out. We appreciate it. Um, members, any questions? Caroline, I'll re-recognize you. Did you have a question? Yeah, I just um, I just wanted to notice that there was sort of like a, you know, a diversion, I guess, and that you're sort of like calling us out essentially for snickering, but then there was also no equal call out of people who are saying amen in the background and so I just wanted to notice that and you know like I think everybody here wants to be respected and have you know access to that so. sure. I, I uh, excuse the chair for um, allowing people to say amen and calling out people who are snickering at other people you'll have to excuse me for that members any questions thank you for your testimony Um, the chair calls Karen Bain, Stephanie Pena, Abigail Paz, and Fiona Mitchell. The next panel will be Robert Winter, Justin Stanford, Christina Haroff, and Heather Havard. Ms. Bain, let's, is it Ms. Bain? Um, let's start with you, if you'll go ahead. Honorable representatives, my name is Karen Bain. I'm here in favor of this bill and I'm representing myself. I'd like to read a Psalm of David. You formed me in my mother's womb like an open book. You watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. This clearly declares our human conception taken to birth, taken to birth, to live. There are many states that are considering abolition of abortion. I'd surely do hope and pray that Texas is the first. One thing that we've not heard about today is about decapitation and dismemberment and the poisoning of the children in the womb. 150 children have died in Texas today I implore you, with all the power and strength and might that you have, to stand up for them. So help us, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, members' questions. Okay, um, is Stephanie here? Stephanie Pena? What about Abigail Paz? Fiona Mitchell? Karen, thank you so much for your testimony. Okay, um, Robert Winter? Justin Stanford, Christina Haroff, and Heather Haver. Let's do uh, ladies first here. Heather, can we start with you? Sure. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Heather Havard. I represent myself, and I am for this bill. Um, I have studied criminal justice at Sam Houston State University, and in doing so, I came across the case of Dina Schlosser. This Texan woman was convicted of murder after dismembering her 11-month-old daughter. She did this with a kitchen knife, drenching herself in her daughter's blood as she heard her scream. I ask, what is the difference between this and a commonplace abortion? There is ultrasound proof that these unborn human babies try to cry out and fight back as they are dismembered alive in their mother's womb. This is happening to approximately 200 babies every day in this state alone. This has to stop. We urge you to vote today to approve this bill as a law criminalizing the murder of the unborn in the state of Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Christina Haroff. Good evening. My name is Christina Harhoff. I am representing myself, and I speak for this bill. I have been ministering to mothers with scheduled abortions now for about eight years, both outside the clinics and in the pre-abort support groups as they post questions about their upcoming surgeries. I would ask you to open your folders, please, that, that we've passed out to you. 
You will see pictures of the antics of the clinic escorts uh, dancing in tutus and clinic escort uh, defense vests, um, as well as the aborting parents writing things like, Jesus loves this place outside of the abortion clinics. In the paperwork inside of your folders, you will see 11 pages of copied and pasted quotes from my conversations uh, with these mothers pre and post abortion. Quotes like on page four, where one mother says she is killing because she doesn't want to look fat in her bikini. On page 10, one mother jokes about sticking her baby in a blender. Aborting mothers regularly these days, regularly use the terms kill and murder and baby, as you will see in the emails that, that I've provided. And it is for these reasons that, as Ephesians 4.26 says, I hope you will be full of righteous anger and criminalize this evil in Texas to only punish providers and not the mothers who sign the paperwork, giving the abortionist legal permission to have at their child, to pay their hundreds and thousands of dollars, to walk in willingly, to position their bodies so that the abortionist can have at their babies is not just. For without the mothers, there would be no providers. Please do not be deceived. Do not be hoodwinked into thinking that today's aborting mothers are by and large victims. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Justin Stanford. Hello, my name is Justin Stanford. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. 896 is consistent with the second greatest commandment in scripture to love our neighbors as ourselves. That includes <laughs> preventing children from being killed and preventing women from killing their children or anyone who forces them or assists them in killing their children. 896 establishes justice for all Texans. So all I want to say is that God and the state of Texas are watching you, and if you pass this through, we will support you. And the lives of, of 110,000 babies are depending on you. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Um, Robert Winter. Good evening. My name is Robert Winner. I represent myself and the church I pastor, First Baptist Church of Finette in Beaumont, and I speak for uh, the bill before you. I stand uh, before you today as a minister classically trained in conservative biblical theology, but I don't appeal to you on the basis of that classical theology. Instead, I appeal to you on a basis of a much lower threshold. The founders of this great republic in declaring independence from tyrants far away anchored their pursuit of freedom in the idea that every person is created with certain inalienable rights, among which are the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In their declaration, birthing this great nation, they were not alone. For all of history, it's been natural and obvious in the hearts of men and women everywhere that human life is unique and special and precious and worth every effort and expense to protect and promote. Every person the religious, the irreligious, the deist, the atheist, the learned, the ignorant, every person knows innately that there is something special and unique in every human individual. It's the height of absurdity to fall on the sword protecting the rights of free speech and assembly and religion and against unlawful search and seizure while blindly skipping past the most basic and inalienable rights of the human individual to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's way past time for you, our legislators, to take up your responsibility to guard the most basic human rights, the rights of the most vulnerable, the most powerless, the voiceless. I urge you, reject the absurd. Reject the illogical. Vote yes on the bill before you. Thank you, thank you Pastor. Thank you. Um, members, questions? All right, thank you all for being here today. Chair calls. On the next panel, Amparo Apodoc Apodaca. Apodaca, all right. That's what I was going to say. Uh, Joshua Christie, Anika Haroff, and Michael Chang. Come on up. The next panel will be Catherine Vickner, Caleb Head, Delaney Head, and Graham Featherston. How y'all doing? Um, Amparo? Is Amparo here? here. Okay, uh, Joshua Christie. Hello, my name is Joshua Christie. I represent myself. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I am testing for 
HB 896. Simply put, the word of God, like everyone has correctly stated today, says that God knits babies together in their mother's womb. Jesus, died, Jesus Christ died on the cross to save the world because human life has immeasurable value. Again, which has been stated repeatedly throughout this evening. Um, I just also want to add the scope of this bill is very important in that it merely aligns existing murder laws equally. We can talk about capital punishment, actions under duress, and other extenuating factors. My only point, and the point of this bill, is to not add special exceptions for killing preborn babies. Those are all separate topics already addressed in the law. We're not reinventing what rights they do and don't have. We're not regulating who can kill them, how they can be killed, when they can be killed. It simply grants preborn children the same rights as born babies. We have, worried, we have waited 46 years to close loopholes in the current law. We cannot leave any this time. Please pass this bill exactly as it's presented. All right. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. Um, An Anika? It's Annika. An oh, okay. Annika. Annika, um, why don't you just state your name for the record and your position <laughs> on the bill and go ahead. Hi, my name is Annika. I'm a Texas teenager, and I'm speaking for this bill. And uh, Annika, your last name? Harhoff. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. I represent myself. I do not believe that people are more valuable because they're older, stronger, bigger, independent, or in a location outside of the womb. I believe that the same laws that protect people who are born should apply to those who are not born. I believe in equal protection for all human life. As a student in Texas, I do not understand why mothers are not treated equally in accordance with our murder laws. I don't understand why they are shown favoritism when it comes to committing murder, just because they are women. And that is why I am for this bill. It does not give mothers who murder free pass while criminalizing other people who murder older, bigger, and stronger people. We as teenage Texans know it's a baby. We know abortion is killing that baby. And I think most Texans of any age know that too. What we don't know is why those babies that everyone is killing are not given the same equal protection under our law. Please pass this bill through this committee that we may ensure justice by equally applying the law to all. Thank you. Thank you, Annika. Great job. How old are you, Annika? Fourteen. Fourteen. Are you in school? Huh. In Conroe? Well, not today, obviously, but did you miss school today? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, <laughs> what time? Yeah, right, right, right. What time did you get here this morning? Um, around eight-ish. Eight. So, um, fourteen hours ago. You've yes, been waiting sir, all day. Thank you. I, I really hope that that previous witness um, heard your testimony and realized that there's just normal, average, everyday Texans of all ages, from four to ninety. Um, who are here taking part in this process today on both sides of the issue. And uh, I'm so proud of you, and thank you. You did a great job. I am so encouraged um, from some of the bills that we heard last week and these bills tonight with the young people, the young people, the millennials, and even younger than yourself who are taking on this issue. Um, that gives me great, great hope for this country. So thank you for your great um, testimony. <clears throat> Michael Chen. Hi, my name is Michael Chang. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. Uh, it's been hard spending this much time away from my toddler and wife, who's actually expecting and experiencing pretty bad morning sickness right now. Uh, but we both agree that this is a cause worth fighting for, and so it's good to be here. Uh, this bill simply does what makes, at its heart, perfect sense, give equal protection under the law for all living persons, born and unborn. This is a unique opportunity that we have before us, and I urge you all to remember that a holy and righteous God will judge the decisions that we make. And he has put you in this position for a purpose. Please allow HB 896 to move to the floor for a vote. For a vote. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Michael. Appreciate you being here as well. Thanks to the panel. Um, any members, any questions? All right. Y'all go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, chair calls Catherine Vickner, Caleb Head, Delaney Head, and is it Graham Featherston? Yes, sir. All right. The next panel will be Stephanie Jacobson, Abigail Apodaca, Karis Harhoff, and Kaya Harhoff.
probably Annika's siblings. All right. Awesome. Okay. Um, Catherine? Is there a Catherine Vicknair? She's not here? Okay. Uh, Delaney? Yes, sir. Delaney, go ahead. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak today. I am Delaney Head, representing myself, and I am for the bill. I sit before you as a 22-year-old mother of three preteen children who my husband and I have been in the process of adopting. I assume many of you have children. Imagine someone raped, physically abused, drugged, denied education, and starved your child like they did mine. You would want every ounce of justice for your child that you could get. Many would say that my children are better, would have been better off aborted. They're not. Their lives are so valuable. <coughs> they have added so much joy and pride to my life. Being able to see them go through what they've gone through and still have the compassion for a homeless man on the street to give them his gift card that was given to him to decorate his room. We need a justice system that actually hands out justice to make people think twice before committing these kind of horrific crimes. Abortion is murder. The question was asked earlier about the death penalty for the woman. Abortion is genocide. It is the mass destruction of our population. It is the mass destruction of our future children and the future of our country. Genocide is listed as by the Department of Justice as a crime befitting of the death penalty. I ask you all to give this bill a vote and pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Delaney. Appreciate your uh, testimony. These are your kiddos? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And I assume Caleb? Yes, sir. Mine's going to be very similar. Okay. <laughs> just, just say what she said. That's, yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> Caleb had representing myself for the bill. Um, so, yeah, so uh, our children are the uh, poster children for uh, the pro-abortion argument that says uh, it's better to have an abortion than to bring children into this world that uh, will just suffer. And um, we're just here to say that, that it's not true, um, that those children are precious, that those children are wanted and loved, and they deserve to be brought into this world. It doesn't matter how bad their life is going to be because they are worth it. They are, they are so precious, and they are loved. Um, they, our children have found love and safety and um, healing in our family, and um, and yet many people believe that it's better for them to not be in this world. And so when when people say that um, it, it's it's better for them to for children with who will have a hard life to be aborted, um, you're saying that my children should have been aborted. You're saying that my that children like mine are better off dead, and it is it, it's not true. Um, Children are a blessing from the Lord, and they are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Um, so we just ask you guys to please call a vote on the bill and uh, to pass it. You know, um, these children need our protection and need our love, all of them. Thank you, Caleb. Thank, thank you, members. Any questions? Thanks for your uh, testimony. Thank you. Graham Featherston. We appreciate y'all. Graham, thank you. Hello, my name is Graham Featherston. I'm a native Texan, and I'm here representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. My birth mother had me at 24 weeks gestation, and I weighed one pound, nine ounces when I was born, and I'm gr very grateful to be alive today. My birth mother hid her pregnancy and could have aborted me, but she believed in equal protection for all children, both born and unborn, and chose to put me up for adoption. I am here for all the preborn children whose mothers did not believe in equal protection and legally murdered their babies. Those mothers should not have the right to terminate their babies' lives, no matter what the circumstances. Our society should care about the lives of the unborn, and I will testify that I am glad that my birth mother cared, or I would not be standing before you today. Most mothers do not want to kill their babies, and that they have the option to do so is evil. I ask today that you do as my birth mother did, and choose equal protection for all children, and pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Members, any questions? All right, thank you. Great panel. Thank you. Um, the chair calls uh, Stephanie Jacobson. Abigail. Um, Abigail, I'm going to let you. Is it Abigail? All right, I'm let you go first, sweetie, so you can pronounce your last name correctly for me. Uh, Karis and Kaya Haroff. 
close enough. All right, Abigail, go ahead. Hello, my name is Abby Apodaca. I am a Texan. I am representing myself and testifying for H HB 896. Why are we killing babies? To make life easier, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. With all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So, like, we know that he can direct our paths and we can trust him whenever we are um, in hard decisions. Exodus 20, 13 says, You shall not murder. Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. I am only 11. Some of you be thinking, Wow, why does she care about this? But I care about the millions of babies dying each year. I'm thankful for the wonderful family I have, and I hope the committee will let this bill pass. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. Psalm 27, 1 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Mm -hmm. I love babies, and I have one great, and I, I have a great one, and his name is Joseph. He's my youngest brother. I have six, <laughs> and one sister. Abby, uh, yeah, you can give her a round of applause. Um, Abby, thank you. <laughs> Abby, you just preached. Thank you. You brought it. Thank you. Um, thank you. All right, Karis. Is that you? Okay, Karis. You're, just say your name for me, Corinne. Karis <laughs> Harhoff. Harhoff, okay. Yes. Go ahead. First, thank you for um, your continued patience and your kindness in allowing me to speak tonight. Um, hello, my name is Karis Harhoff. I'm a high school student in Texas, and I'm speaking for this bill. I am representing myself. My family has been reaching out to actively aborting mothers for around eight years. I've noticed that my mom has perhaps never counseled a mother over all these years who didn't know it was a baby. They all know it's a baby these days. Second, I've noticed that the mothers often joke about killing and murder. One of the last mothers my mom reached out to told her in writing the night before her abortion, women are greater than babies. Small, I will prove it. If the babies survive, you can have them. After she wrote that to my mom, she included a laughing so hard I'm crying emoticon. And so that is why I'm for this bill. Aborting mothers are often not so sweet and innocent. They are very vile. Because of that, I support not m only making abortion legal for every Texas baby of any age, but I also support punishing the mothers who are to violate this law going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Great job, Karis. Um, Kaya? Hi, my name is Kaya Harhef, and I am 11 years old, almost 12. I asked my parents if I was, could speak as well. They gave me permission, so I am speaking for this bill, and I am representing myself. Ever since I was little, my parents have taught me the Ten Commandments from the Bible. Com Commandment 6, thou shalt not murder. My parents have taught me that it is always wrong to murder, to take human life unjustly, and that children are always a gift from the Lord. As Psalm 127 tells us, even if they are still in the room, I have read of many heroes in history, but today I would like to see real be heroes in protecting all the children in Texas by passing this bill through this committee. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Let's give the Har Offs a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then Stephanie Jacobson. You got a tough act to follow. I'm right? telling you what, I yeah. don't know how I did this. <laughs> I will tell you I'm blessed, though, because this is our future yeah. and that makes me happy well you're all the way from kansas city missouri aren't yes you? sir i am and i so drove in welcome to texas this thank is, you this is what texas has it's to offer awesome in this country. i like this yeah. i i'm i'm very blessed to be with these three tonight so Good. thank you Great. so much for being so late um i did redact everything and hopefully i'll stay within my time limit here my name is stephanie jacobson and i'm from kansas city missouri and i'm here representing myself and I am in favor of this HB 896. It has been said that no little girl ever dreams of becoming a prostitute. And I can say with much conviction that no little girl ever dreams of having an abortion. I've had two abortions. Two lies perpetrated on women looking for abortions are abortions are safe. Abortion is anything but safe. 
a potential autonomous human being with a heartbeat is torn limb from limb. Death is never safe. Abortion is a decision. This is the second lie. Abortion is a decision between a woman and her doctor. To be clear, I never saw or discussed my pregnancy benefits, risks, or all alternatives of the abortion procedure with any doctor. The ruling on Roe v. Wade lied to us. The law is there to protect, and it did, did not do the job. Abortion undermines the fabric of the woman and the fiber of this nation. When we don't value life, nothing we do has value. Liam Elias and Victoria Isabel were given names. Why? Because they existed. I now have joy because I know they existed. The fight for per personhood and the fight for life now rests in your hands. Thank you, Stephanie. Members, questions? Thank All right, thanks to each of you. Thank you. Thank you, and safe travels back to Thank Kansas you, sir. City. You've got my uh, ministry there in your car. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, the chair calls John Wheeler, Sam Bryant, Larry McAlk, and Laura McGregor. The next panel is going to be Fred Grube, uh, Toivaya Nelms, Rebecca Long, and Damaris Tudor. Mr. Wheeler? Is, is John Wheeler here? Um, Sam, go ahead. Yes, sir. You're up. May I approach? My name is Sam Bryant. Um, from Corsicana, Texas. I'm here testifying on my behalf for the bill. Uh, may I approach? Um, for what? For what uh, reason? Show, show a picture. Uh, sh show us from right there okay. if you can. Um, this right here is uh, Haley May yeah, Bryant. We can, we can see that. It's my daughter. She's 16 months old now. We were told that we were going to have to pull the plug or consider it. Uh, the placenta had erupted uh, prior to an uh, emergency C-section. It was unknown uh, as to how long she was without oxygen. And then it took additional eight minutes to resuscitate her to establish a heartbeat. With all the odds stacked against us, what you're looking at here is what it looks like for, for God's grace. Because earlier in my life, uh, the very first time I was ever put in a position to to, to take a life was at the age of 23 when I was downrange in Iraq. Um, that particular moment in my life, uh, that part that slipped away from me when I took a life, it was because uh, upon further investigation we found no explosive devices or weapon systems in the vehicle. So that weighed extremely heavy on my heart uh, and I felt a sense of conviction and I actually wept and prayed for the family. Later on in 2008, 2007, 2008, I was in a relationship where we chose to abort. And it weighed so heavy that no one ever tells you about the effects, about the long-term emotional effects. And that's as, as the father of the child, of the unborn that we made that decision and it had such a long lasting effect that when it came to my precious daughter whom I'm married with my wife now and the long lasting effects I would not wish the emotional turmoil mm -hmm. and the long term effects of making that decision with as many available resources if we put as much uh, attention on resources available as we do abortions, yeah. I think we would see a, a long, steady change of hearts on getting back to the basics of humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you for your testimony. Members, questions? Okay. Um, is, it, is it Larry? Larry, Mike Chalk. All right, Larry, go ahead. Uh, speaking for myself, I'm for the bill. Uh, abortion is crumbling in Texas. And when abortion is illegal, and the abortion clinics are closed, 90%, 95% of all the issues that were raised earlier about criminality, about coercion, will be gone. 
and the remaining problems, all of this energy spent for life will be transferred to the living. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. How sweet to hold Larry. a newborn hey, Larry, born baby. I, I'm so sorry, sir. I can't let you do that. Your testimony, I, I'm sorry. My minute's not up. I've got to have you sit down and offer testimony okay, to the committee. We can't have as much as I would have loved to have heard that song. You yeah, can't um, sing? We have to have you offer testimony to the committee, sir. No. Okay, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, they can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds their future. And life is worth the living and fighting for because he lives. Amen, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, it's one of my favorite hymns. Thank you. And I'm sure it would have been beautiful had you sang it. Stay, stay seated if you can. Wait just a sec. Uh, Laura, um, if you'll go, um, if you'll state your name and your affiliation, your position on the bill. Hi, my name is Laura McGregor, and I am representing myself, testifying in favor of HB 896 to abolish abortion in Texas without amendment. Um, I had this big old speech planned, but I wanted to let you know I go to the abortion clinic with the Sims, and uh, they are so encouraging. I can't tell you, those kids get up Saturday mornings. They don't go watch cartoons. They go and plead with women to not kill their babies. How somebody can look in their eyes and flip them off and just walk in those doors doing what they're about to do, that is monstrous. I don't know how somebody could do that. Uh, those kids are so sweet. They are so dedicated. We just had the horror house out here. It's very encouraging to see them all, see their testimonies. I don't know how you can't be encouraged by that. These kids, these, these women are not by and large victims they go in there laughing. They go in there um, angry at you. Um, nobody, if people offer help and they refuse it. Um, I, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Members, are there any questions um, for the panel? All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Chair calls Fred Groob, Tavoya Nelms, Rebecca Long, and Damaris Tudor. The next panel will be Mandy Harris, Deborah Nelms, Perry Hubert, and Janet Magana. <clears throat> Magana. Um, Fred, let's start with you. Chairman, members, my name is Fred Gruby. I'm representing myself and the Polk County Republican Party, and I'm for the bill. I came here today skeptical that y'all were serious about this bill, but Chairman Leach, I'm now wholeheartedly convinced that you are for it. And for that, I'm truly grateful. So let's address what seems to be y'all's greatest concern, the fact that the bill holds women criminally liable. This bill punishes no one for things done in the past. Once the bill passes, it will go like this. Texas will declare to all that abortion is no longer allowed in this state. Texans will be informed that anyone caught engaging in the taking of a preborn life will be subject to the same exact penalty as though the life were a day old or a week old. So when somebody ignores all that and still seeks out an abortion, is this really the person that y'all are gonna concern yourselves with when it comes time to pass this out of committee? I don't think that it is. And for that, I thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Members, questions? Okay, uh, Tavoya Nelms. I don't think Tavoy is here. Rebecca Long. Hello, my name is Rebecca Long, and I am representing myself and testifying for this b bill. I believe that all life is precious, whether inside the room or outside the room, whether young or old, strong or weak. This bill protects both the unborn lives and liberties equally. If we are okay with taking the life of some of someone in the womb, what will we be okay with next? Taking the life of those who are not as intelligent or as strong as us? It is God who is the author and finisher of life. 
In Jeremiah, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. And in Exodus, it says, You shall not murder. God has created every single one of us and put us here for a reason. And one day, each of us will be held accountable for what we have done. I don't want to be held accountable for allowing the lives of millions of children to be taken. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Mandy? Demar Damaris. Damaris. Okay, Damaris yes. Tudor. Hi, my name is Damaris Tudor. I am representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. I would like to say that I'm so thankful that HB 896 is getting this hearing. I feel that it, I feel that it is more truly pro-life than any other bill that has been put forward in Texas in the past. I feel strongly that this bill brings glory to God in the way that it protects the unborn, lending equal protection to both the born and unborn citizens of Texas. I hope that you will keep that in mind. <laughs> I've always been shocked and confused by the fact that men who are prosecuted for killing their children, that men are prosecuted for killing their children, while women walk away scot-free. Women aren't stupid, they know what they're doing. Murder should always have consequences, regardless of which parent decided to follow through, and regardless of the excuses the parents come up with in order to try and justify their horrific behavior. As a woman, I, how would I be motivated to keep, that, to keep from having an abortion if I knew I could get away with it? There should always be consequences for sin and wrongdoing. I feel that strongly. I would like to close with this verse in Amos that came to mind while I was preparing for today. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the gate. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Damaris. Really appreciate the testimony. Is members, are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. The chair calls Mandy Harris, Deborah Nelms, Perry Hubert, Perry, come on up, and Janet Magana. Okay, th they might be in the overflow room, and uh, so we'll give them time to get over here, but Perry, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman Leach, and um, I just want to thank all of you for putting in a long day and not done yet, but uh, sincerely, I had things prepared. Everybody's, it's been said, I'm, I'm a... Uh, First off, I'm uh, representing myself. I'm here in support of HB 896. Thank you. I'm uh, from Spring Branch. Um, I volunteer with a pro-life uh, group. We go to the abortion clinics. We also go to the college campuses. We go with posters that graphically show what abortion does to an unborn child. And um, we have uh, seen um, women change their minds that were <coughs> Uh, planning to have an abortion and so that is what keeps us going um, in the in the battle to save babies precious babies I have six children and six grandchildren and um, I just implore you to keep doing keep this bill going and have um, Texas be an example for the rest of the nation of what we should be doing and just thank you so much for what you're doing. And I just uh, we pray for you guys. And thank you for the courage that you've had to take it this far. And just let's keep it going. Thank you. Thank you, Perry. Thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions? Thanks. Um, is Mandy Harris here? Deborah Nelms? Or Janet Magana? Okay, our next panel is going to be Ashley Valdez. April Ross, Kendra Albright, and Barbara Ziegler. I need folks to be uh, be ready, be on your feet, um, if you can. Okay. Tell me your okay. name. Tell me your name again. Ashley Valdez. Okay, Ashley. Thank you. Hang on, just a sec. So, April Ross, Kendra Albright. Or Ashley Valdez. I'm Ashley. You're Ashley. I I'm sorry. Or Barbara Ziegler. Okay. Nancy McPhee. Nancy, come on up. Jessica Garza. Is Jessica here. Okay. Jessica's on her way. And then Gabrielle Gonzalez. Okay. Miss Valdez. 
if you'll go ahead. Hello, I'm Ashley Valdez. I am a Christian wife and mother. I will be representing myself today, and I am for this bill. I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak to you all today on behalf of the 40 to 50 million babies murdered every year. Please consider with me a time in America when it was legal to own a slave. Did that make it just simply because it was legal? No. Or the Holocaust when Jews were dehumanized so they were murdered. Now I want you to think about America today. Currently the law states that the unborn are not human and have no rights. If the mother doesn't want her baby, she can legally pay for someone to murder her child. Majority of abortions are not emergency situations for the mother's health, but rather for the mother's convenience. Of course it's dressed up in terms like women's rights and abortion, instead of calling it what it truly is, murder. Proverbs 24, 11, 12 states, rescue those being led away to death, hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he repay everyone according to what they have done? Ladies and gentlemen, God has placed you in the power of authority that you're in today, and you will be held accountable for your decision regarding this bill. Slavery was abolished in 1865. The end of the Holocaust was 1945. Let's make 2019 the year Texas goes down in history for abolishing abortion completely. No more regulations, no more innocent lives taken. I am pleading with you all today to uphold your duty and make passing this bill a priority. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ashley. What's your daughter's name? Faith. She's Faith. one. She's, She's one. one. That's awesome. Thank Thanks for being here, Faith. No uh, any questions? No? All right. Uh, Barbara Ziegler. Barbara Sorry. Ziegler. I was taking care of my grandson. There you go. Six weeks old. Um, hello, my name is Barbara Ziegler, and I live in Austin County, and I am representing myself on behalf of HB 896. Um, I believe many of you are sitting there tonight um, uh, making the decision, why did you want to become a legislator? I mean, that's probably a good question this time of night. Maybe you decided because you wanted to make a difference in other people's lives. I mean, maybe that was your choice. Or perhaps you wanted to right a wrong or see that justice prevails. Only you know the reason why you decide to become a legislator. Well, um, today is the day you can make all those things happen. You've heard all that you need to hear. You've heard the death, you've heard the horror, you've heard the powerful testimonies. I've heard them too. I, I just looked at this and thought, throw it out the door. Because there was nothing I could say that these folks had not already said. I was just dumbfounded as well as you all as well. So I hope that you didn't decide to become a legislator because you thought it would be an easy job. Because I don't envy any of you that are sitting here right now. Because you're going to need God's courage. And you're going to need God's strength. Because you've got some very difficult decisions to make. And I think one of the biggest decisions is this particular bill. And voting on bills like this. You know, this is definitely not for wimps. So you have to decide what to do. And we pray that it is the right decision. Um, we ask that you do your duty, and you need to take the leadership. I mean, you're, you're elected officials because people saw that you were leaders, so I encourage you to do that. So let this bill go to the House for a vote. I encourage you to abolish abortion for good. And I want to finish quickly with Deuteronomy 13, 3, 4. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. Thanks for listening and for hanging in here tonight. You got a hard job and Thank I encourage you. you to make good choices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? No. Ms. Harris? No. Ms. Albright? No. My name is Nancy McPhee. Nancy McPhee. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. I am. Oh, you know what? Uh, can I go back real quick? Yes, uh, sir. Recognize Barbara. Did you give us your name? Uh, I did. Your well, position on the uh, bill and Barbara who you're representing? Ziegler representing myself on behalf. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Miss McPhee, go ahead. I'm Nancy McPhee. I'm representing myself, and I am for this bill. And uh, I believe if Norma McCorvey, aka <clears throat> Jane Rowe, were standing here today, she would be for this bill also, as she had given her life to the Lord, and she did uh, advocate for pro-life before she died, and she would want you to save our babies. Thank you. Thank you, Miss McPhee. Appreciate the testimony. Anybody? Thank you all, especially yeah. Faith, for hanging in there. Thank yeah, you. appreciate you all. All right, our next panel is Jessica Garza, 
Gabriel Gonzalez, Joshua Garza, and Sharon Sanchez. Did we? Thought that I was on this panel. I'm Kendra Okay. Well, then we are backing up. I think she's supposed to be in the last one. We'll get that figured out. But with the newborn, you're not used to sleeping anyway, so this is all easy for you. Isn't it? Jessica? Yes, sir. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Go ahead. My name is Jessica Garza. I am representing myself and I'm testifying for HB 896. I am first and foremost a Christian. In Exodus 20, 13, the sixth commandment of the Lord, you shall not murder. This is a bare minimum of what we should be doing in the state of Texas, and we haven't. You have the authority right now to delegate and institute, institute the foundation of abolishing the murders of babies in the state of Texas. This power and responsibility is given to you by the Lord. I also want to ask, where is the voice crying out for the fathers that have had to watch their sons and daughters be slaughtered and no one caring about their voice or right? Let not the blood and death of the unborn United States citizens be on your hands on the day of judgment. A higher judgment of Jesus Christ is coming and we are warning you to be on the side of righteousness and not destruction. I ask, plead, and beg of you to repent and believe the truth and pass this bill. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Carson. Um, Ms. Albright? Hi, my name is Kendra Albright, and I am testifying on behalf of myself, and I am for HB 896 to protect all life from conception. Uh, I believe only God has the right to govern the life of his creation, and I implore you to use your God-given authority to do what the Word of God says is just and protect life. Um, our basis of morality must be the Word of God or else it, it cannot stand, and we are accountable to him. I am licensed by the state of Texas as a midwife to practice safely to protect babies in the womb, to care for women and newborns as well as in, uh, babies in the womb. Uh, midwifery law directs and pro prohibits certain actions with the purpose of protecting babies. While I deal solely with low-risk pregnancies, I have been trained in recognizing and handling medical complications. Life is rarely an either or as was brought up earlier by a, an uh, uh, an opposing view of the bill. Uh, there are so few complications that endanger the life of the mother that don't allow time for delivery. So that's really not a point that, that uh, is, is, it's just a mute point from that perspective. Um, I am also licensed by the state of Texas as a foster parent. Uh, during this past year, my husband and I have had 11 children come in and out of our home. Um, this, as somebody stated earlier, these are the children that are the, at, are at risk for being aborted. And these, every single one of them has been so precious. Not, uh, on the one hand, yes, by, it is a God-given statement that we are made in his image. And just, you can see for yourselves, these children deserve to live. These children deserve a chance. Um, I, I, believe me when I say there are plenty of Texas regulations uh, regarding uh, foster care and, and taking care of children, and I urge you to do the same for preborn babies as well. Uh, these are some, these are children that some would say do not deserve life, but please give them a chance. Please pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Joshua? Yes, sir. Joshua Garza, go ahead. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, the committee, I want to start by thank you all for your endurance and y'all's patience and utmost respect today. It's been displayed and I'm kind of baffled at this point. I've never come this high in government, so to see that, it, it is encouraging. So I know you all want to get home to y'all's families as well, do we? And I want to honor your 60-second rule, but I made this about 12 hours ago and I've been up for 28 hours at this point, so I don't think I had focus at that time, but uh, I'll try to make it short. <laughs> so my name is Joshua Garza. Um, I am, rep I am uh, representing myself, and I am for House Bill 896. I'm here to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. Um, infants in the womb are being murdered in our country daily, around 55,000 per year in our state alone. 
our moral compass has been inverted. So my plea for you all today is to do that which is good, to uphold justice, to yield the sword rightly and to punish the evildoers, to no longer allow the slaughter of thousands of children in our state, to no longer regulate the murder of the unborn, but to abolish and criminalize it entirely. In short, to do the job God puts you in power to do. Make no mistake, your decision today will be recorded in the books of heaven. Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, said as a final message, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. So I implore you this day to trust in Christ and live. Do your duty. Pass this bill and make history today by establishing the value of the image of God as something you would not compromise on and set the example for other states to follow. Defend those defenseless in the womb. Uphold the Constitution. Ignore Roe and let, let it not be said of you that, that you were besought by the people, that they were pressed to pass this bill, but they hardened their hearts, stiffened their neck, and shut their ears to the cries of injustice and warnings of judgment. Fear God, not man. Pass this bill and clear conscience, clear, clear consciences by the precious blood of Christ, by faith in him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Tell me your name again. Sharon Okay, okay, Sharon. Good evening. Go, hang on just a oh. sec. Yes. Ken, Kendra Albright? Yes. Okay, Kendra, and then Jessica and Josh Garza. Is Gabrielle Gonzalez here? Gabrielle Gonzalez? Okay. Um, all right, Ms. Sanchez, go ahead. Hello, my name is Sharon Sanchez, and I'm representing myself. I'm testifying for HB 896. Texas already validates the unborn as humans, and we already have the heartbeat bill. Thank you for that. I am now urging you to go a step further by abolishing abortion altogether, which is the best and complete way to protect the unborn. Please throw out political correctness. Fear God. Continue to do it big in Texas. Be the first state to abolish abortion by properly and correctly protecting the unborn. Thank you for your kind consideration. Sharon, thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions for the panel? Thank you. Thank you, each of you, so you. much. Okay, the chair calls um, Hannah Weidman. Hannah? <coughs> Carol Davis? April, come on up, April. Give us just a sec. Okay, April. Just say you're going to go first in just a sec. We're just And then your, your name, ma'am? I'm Carol. Carol Davis. Davis. Okay. Uh, the chair calls Charles De La Durante. And Esther De La Durante. Charles and Esther, make your way here. Um, Ms. Ross, go ahead. Sorry, sorry for the delay. That's okay. Um, hello, my name is April Ross, and these are my son, two of them, that are here with me tonight. Toughing it out. Yeah. Um, I come on my own behalf to you today to testify in favor of this bill. I also come to you today with a testimony of God. In Exodus, God commanded Moses, you shall not kill. He also commanded us to honor our mother and father, and he is our father. Are we honoring him by killing what he created as a gift? Our country is founded on his integrity, so are we keeping that integrity intact or are we being hypocrites and going against our Constitution? Also, Jesus Christ himself testified this in Matthew. It is better for a man to have a millstone hung around his neck than to harm a hair on one of these little ones. If Jesus Christ was standing here right now testifying, would he hold us accountable for the decision on this bill? Do we want to be a millstone state that dishonors our father? 
You want me to stop? Okay. Yeah. That kills his creations and teaches hypocrisy? Please consider the weight of what I've testified before you today. May God be with you and lead your heart to make the best decision for this bill and for Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ross. Thank you for bearing with us today. And is You're it welcome. your two boys back there? Yeah. Hey, bud. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, Carol Davis. And, and, and is it Esther? Yeah. Is Charles on his way? No. He's not. I have a brother, though. Uh, who's here to testify? What's his name? Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan, come on up as well. Okay. Carol, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Carol Davis, and I appreciate y'all staying this long because it's been a really long day for all of us. I, I just wanted to let you know that um, I represent myself, and I am for this bill. Um, I'm a grandmother. I care about my granddaughters, and I just... I, I care about our country. I'm concerned with our country. So I, I just made a real short little thing, and I thought it was supposed to be just real, you know, not too too religious or anything, but <clears throat> I am a Christian. I, I love the Lord. But that's, you know, this would work for anybody. Okay, so anyhow, all people are valued, especially our littlest citizens, the pre-born. Roe versus Wade went into effect in 1973. We were not as well educated of the science of pregnancy. I certainly didn't know that much about it. I, they didn't do sonograms back when I had my kids in, in the 70s. They weren't doing that unless you were over 40 and you might have a chance to have some sort of health issue. So it wasn't common practice. So we didn't know what these babies looked like. We didn't know if we were going to have a boy or a girl. Things are different. We've come a long way, baby. Okay, in science. So, I was just thinking, we just, we just, these pre-born -ba pre babies, they are, they are just as value as the babies that are a year old or three years old or any, any child or any adult. They're valued. And so, we've come a long way in science, so I feel like we need to update our, this law. This law needs to be abolished. So anyhow, there's no reason to continue this barbaric murdering of children. And like she mentioned, our God commands us, thou shalt not murder. So we need to stop this insanity in Texas today. Thank you, Carol. Um, Esther Deladorante? Close. Deladorante. <laughs> Esther. Deladorante. Uh, I would have yes. gotten it right earlier today. <laughs> uh, Deladorante. Yes. Esther, go ahead. So I'm here testifying in favor of the bill, 896, and I know a lot of people already spoke, but I just want to encourage the committee to vote it out. And millions of babies are uh, murdered each year, and I just really feel like let's make Texas the first state to say no. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. And just to be clear for the record, are you from Texas, Texas? No. What's the, what city are you from? Luling. Say it again. Luling. Okay, we're going to correct, it does say Texas, Texas. Oh. I, like, I didn't know there was a I city named Texas. Either. That would be the best place on earth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking I want to move there. Uh, uh, okay, so Luling, Texas. Okay, and Charles is not here. Is that right? Okay, but Jonathan? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, Jonathan, go ahead. Um, yes, uh, my name is Jonathan Delaterante. And um, I'm here to represent myself, and I'm testifying in support of um, HB 896. And uh, I in would encourage you all to vote for it and that uh, we can get this moved on to the House and we can get it voted on. Um, I'm not going to say anything, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. There's been a lot of people here talking and uh, a lot of encouragement, and I just pray that you all would make the right decision. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you Jonathan. Members, any uh, questions for the panel? All right, thank you. Um, y'all go ahead, thank you all so right. much. All right, the chair calls uh, Steve Slate, Lizette Guajardo, <coughs> Tyler Weedman, and Roxanne Hollingsworth. Steve Slate, Lizette Guajardo, Tyler Reedman, and Roxanne Hollingsworth. The next panel will be Bob Jarash, 
Betty Taylor, Andy Taylor, and Cindy Solis. What, what's your, your name, man? Are you? Roxanne you're Roxanne, Hollingsworth. okay, and then? Lizette. Lizette, okay, is Steve Slate here? No, he's not. He's not here? Okay, what about Tyler Weidman? Or Weidman? Bob Jarash? Joe Rash? Betty Taylor? Andy Taylor? All right, why don't we, they might be coming over from the overflow room. Um, Ms. Hollingsworth, let's start with you. Okay. Go ahead. Hello, Chairman and committee members. Thank you for spending so many hours listening to repetitious <laughs> testimony. <laughs> uh, but my name is Roxanne Hollingsworth, and I live in Dallas County. And uh, I just want to say that uh, I am representing myself and that I am for this bill. <clears throat> the 14th Amendment states in part that no state shall make or enforce any laws which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. An estimated 55,000 babies are killed by abortion every year in Texas. This bill merely provides for the equal protection under the law for all living persons, born and unborn. I respectfully submit my testimony today for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hollingsworth. Thank you so much. Um, Lizette Guajardo? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Lizette Guajardo. I represent myself in wholehearted support of this bill. The heinous act of murder through abortion is often attempted to be justified on the contingencies of a baby not being wanted, loved, or provided for enough. The reality is that we live in an imperfect world tainted with great pain, suffering, and heartbreak. To say that the endurance of hardships makes these children's lives worthless is to say that no one person here is worthy to be alive. We need to open our eyes, stop lying to ourselves, and bring an end to this horrific act of evil. Each of you know that this is wrong. Your conscience bears witness to this. James 4.17 says, Whoever knows the right thing to do, yet fails to do it, is guilty of sin. You have the ability to help stop this atrocity and abolish the great evil of abortion. Will you continue to sit on your hands and do nothing? Or will you do everything in your power to make right what is wrong? Thank you. Thank you, Lizette. Um, and just to be clear, you're here on behalf of yourself for the bill. Yes. Sir. Okay, and Ms. Hollingsworth, I need to come back to you to clarify the record. Um, you're here on behalf of... Um, Oh, I mobilize for him international, okay, and which is my ministry. That's fine. Thank you. And yourself, correct? And myself. And you're for the bill. And I am right, for the thank bill. Thank you. Members, any questions for the panel? All right. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, one more time. Is Steve Slate here? No. Okay. Tyler Reedman. All right. Bob Jorash. Betty Taylor. Andy Taylor. Are, are there still folks in the overflow room? How, how many? Okay, because um, we, we, we're starting to get room in this room now, and so if there's people who, over there in the overflow room who have registered to testify, um, if, if you can make your way over here, that just, just so we can move this along a little more rapidly. I, I don't, don't want to skip over anyone that's en route from the overflow room. So Betty Taylor, Andy Taylor. Cindy Solis, Cynthia Dillard, Chad Welty. Is it Miss Dillard? Yes. Okay. Um, Chad Welty, uh, Cynthia Zotig. Is that you, ma'am? Cynthia? Okay, come on up. Anna Lenz. Anna Lenz. K. 
Okay, Julie Enriquez. Julie, come on up. Lisa Kane. Is Lisa here? Caleb Lenz. Kimberly Margison. Michelle Ibambi. Is that you, Michelle? All right. Tell me your name again, ma'am. Julie Enriquez. Okay, Julie, come on up. I know. <laughs> okay, so Miss Dillard, if you'll if you'll go ahead. Hi, my name is Cynthia Dillard, and I'm representing myself. And I am for this bill. Um, I'm supporting this bill as it is written. And I'm very thankful for this opportunity to stand for this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cynthia. And um, your state representative is? Kyle Biederman. Representative Biederman <laughs> is here with us tonight. Representative Biederman, thank you. Representative Swanson, thank you to you as well. Um, and, I, and I do at this moment want to, Scripture tells us to give honor where honor is due. And um, I want to honor Representative Niave, you being sticking with us tonight. Seriously, thank you so much for being here. And, yeah, and, um, and, and I, I want to point out my two staffers who are here with us. You've been sitting here faithfully all day doing a great job. Cassidy, my chief clerk, and Sean, our deputy clerk as well. So thank you. Okay. Um, Cynthia, go ahead. Can I? Thank you for your time. My name is Cynthia Zotai, and I represent myself testifying for HB 896. Committee members, you swore to protect and defend. Please protect then the most vulnerable among us. Each child murdered through abortion was unique and made in the image of God. These babies should be the future of this country. Instead, they are discarded as trash. And I agree this is genocide and a genuine domestic threat. If you fail to establish a valid standard of justice, who will be the next group of people deemed undesirable? Could it be conservative politicians or liberal politicians? And will you then be only worthy of death? I ask that you be the faithful few, obedient to God, save these babies, and you may be instrumental in also saving a nation, not from any future conflicts between citizens, but from the wrath of a holy and righteous God, who will bring a fury of judgment for the shedding of innocent blood, unless we repent and turn away from this wickedness. Please put this bill forward for a vote. Thank you. Uh, Julie, Julie Enriquez, yes. Julie. Hi, my name is Julie Enriquez. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying in support of this bill. Chairman Leach, members of the committee, I'm here to say that abortion hurts women in a deep and profound way because it goes against our innate sense to protect our young. I do not claim to be an expert, but I can tell you how abortion affected my life. When I was 10 years old, my mom died from breast cancer, which essentially left me orphaned. The doctor told my family that she developed breast cancer due to her abortion. Her death shattered my life. I didn't know she had an abortion until later in my life. Had I known this, I might not have had an abortion when I was 16. I was taken advantage of by a 23-year-old man and became pregnant. I went to Planned Parenthood for help, but the only choice I was given was abortion. And I was told that if I didn't schedule it that day, that it would cost more and could be more complicated. I felt pressured. Out of fear and ignorance, I capitulated. I didn't think I had a choice. I wasn't given a choice. After my abortion, I tried to shove it down and not think about it. But no one told me how abortion would shatter what was left of my life and the long-term emotional trauma that I would suffer. 
I began to drink heavily. I experienced low self-esteem, depression, guilt, self-destructive behavior, suicidal thoughts, and I even attempted to take my own life. My abortion negatively impacted every relationship in my life. I'm happy to say that I was able to find healing through a personal encounter with Jesus Christ at a post-abortion retreat called Rachel's Vineyard. I wish my experience after abortion was the exception and not the norm, but I have talked with so many women who experienced similar symptoms when I had the privilege to facilitate those same retreats. I'm here to say that abortion hurts women, and I ask you to please put this uh, bill out for a vote to protect women. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for the testimony, and I do want to reiterate thank you for the enthusiasm uh, for all the testimony, but let's please um, keep our applause limited as much as possible. Thanks for understanding. Uh, Michelle Ibambi. Hi, my name is Michelle Ibambi, and I'm here representing myself, and I'm testifying for HB 9896. As I was preparing to testify at this hearing, I remembered one documentary that our mother made us watch when my sisters and I were teenagers. It was called Le Cri du, Le Cri du Silence, which means silent scream. It was about abortion. I saw an ultrasound showing how the unborn baby was opening its tiny mouth, trying to run away from the instrument of abortion going into the uterus. That little baby was moving away again and again from the instrument. What I saw was not a blob of, t a blob of tissue. What I saw was a little human being trying to fight for his life, but in the end it was crushed and stuck out. At that young age, I saw abortion for what it was, a killing of an innocent human being. Ellie Whistle once said, I swore never to be silent whenever and wherever human beings endure suffering and humiliation. We must always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. In our case, the victims are the little human beings who human rights are being denied. On July 4th, 1776, the United States Congress approved the Declaration of Independence, which stated, among others, that we hold this truth to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed with the, by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. All I ask is for you to vote and pass this bill so that Texas can lead the way by preserving the right of all Texans beginning with the youngest and most vulnerable ones, the unborn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Ibambi, is that right? Yes. For your testimony. Members, any questions for the panel? All right. Thank you each for being here. Lisa Kane. And Anna Lenz. Oh, okay. Anna Lenz, come on up. Uh, my husband's here too, Caleb, Caleb Lenz. Okay, Caleb Lenz, come on up. Is Lisa Kane here? Um, Kimberly Margison. Kimberly, are you here? Paul Fancher, Paul, come on up, and Abigail. Ab <laughs> Gush, Abigail Gush. Okay. Tell Abigail I got her name right. Um, and then <laughs> Mary Smith. She's in overflow. Okay, Mary, make your way on over if you can. Okay, um, Anna, let's start with you. Okay, thank you very much. Matt, hello, my name is Anna Lins, and I am for this bill, HB 896, and I am representing myself. Every man and woman has been given a conscience. It's the same conscience that tells us lying, stealing, and murder are all wrong. I would argue that this same conscience also speaks to each man and woman, whether pro-life or pro-choice, that the unborn child has equal rights as any other living human being. To do anything but abolish abortion completely gives men and women an excuse to deny what we all know to be true. Abortion is murder. 
I'd also like to say that uh, seeing this little girl on my ultrasound when uh, she would have been at an age that's legal to abort, um, I saw her stretching and moving and there's really something special about that tiny little stage mm -hmm. where you see those tiny little babies. So all life is important. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excuse her, please. <laughs> wow. I love it. Usually members turn off their mics when they do that, but uh, it's late, so. And what's her name? Susanna Jane, Susanna. and this is our other daughter, Elaine Marie. Hi. We're glad y'all are here. Um, okay. Caleb. Caleb, go ahead. Hello. My name is Caleb Lenz. I'm representing myself and I am testifying for this bill. Many of the people here tonight have taken upon themselves the difficult and somewhat frustrating task of trying to formulate an argument for something that actually is self-evident. That is that human life inside the womb is intrinsically valuable. So rather than dwell on this fact, I would like to simply go on to asking you to be men and women who take action for those who cannot, remembering that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. But I ask, are we good men and women if we do nothing? Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Paul Fancher. Hello, my name is Paul Fancher. I represent myself and I am for this bill. I would like to start by pointing out something that is worth noting since there have been so many references to the words of God this evening. And that is, as of, we've already looked at your oath of, oaths of office three or four times now. I'd like to look at them one more time and focus on the last four words. As you do all that you do, you do it, so help you God. In hard questions like this, it makes complete sense. And in, indeed, it's indisputable that you should turn to God, who gave life, to learn and to know more about what you should do with that life and how you should act and what laws you should put in place for that life. Look now with me at what God said to Noah. For your lifeblood, I will require a reckoning. From every beast, I will require it, and from man. From his fellow man, I will require reckoning for the life of man, whoever sheds the blood of man. By man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Mary Smith. Hi, my name is Mary Smith, and I am the North Texas Area Director for Concerned Women for America. We are a public policy organization that is nationwide, and we stand for sanctity of human life. Last year, I had the privilege of mentoring two young women, both new mothers, both beautiful, and I also had the privilege of working in a pregnancy center. And one of the young women that came in was trying to decide whether she was going to end her pregnancy or not. I mentioned her to these two young women that I mentored, and they nodded understanding, and they were very sympathetic. But for the first time, they did see something that they had not expected to see. As new mothers themselves, they knew that this lady was carrying in her womb. They saw that her decision was not just for herself. A week later, I had to tell them that she decided to make that decision and she aborted her baby. These two young women put their heads down and wept. One of them told me that she had always, all her young life, been told the woman's choice was what was important. They had never considered the baby, but now, after having their own children, they knew they had bought a lie. Abortion on demand cheapens the life of the unborn child, and we in this country are making a mistake when we say that it is right for convenience and we can cover mistakes. I am here today to ask you to do something that's going to be hard, that's going to be difficult, and it's going to take a lot of boldness. I am asking you to remove the law that normalized what is abnormal and abusive and destroys life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Members, questions for the panel? All right. Thank you each for being here. Mama, get that. Get that. Okay, Matthew Newland. He's not here. Jason Nurnberg. 
Jason Nurnberg, Daniel Blair. Peter Maggio. Are you Peter? Yes. Okay, come on up. Um, Adam. Adam Cohen, come on up. Yuri Popko. If I say your name, yell at me. Yuri Popko. Okay, if you'll get him and then Nikki Kelton. I bet uh, Diana Popko is still here too. And so if you'll, if she's here, if she'll come over with uh, with Yuri, that'd be great. Okay. Um, Peter. Yes, sir. Okay, Peter, go ahead. My name is Peter Maggio. I am representing myself, and I'm speaking in favor of this bill. Since 1973, there have been over eight Supreme Court decisions concerning abortion. Each one has in some way either enhanced or inhibited access to abortion. Most of these cases upheld the same basic premise that was established in Roe v. Wade, that women have a right to have an abortion prior to the point of viability, and the state can restrict this right past post-viability, as long as it doesn't impose undue burdens on women. The problem with this is that the point of viability is largely contested, leading to laws on the books restricting abortions as early as six weeks to late in the third trimester. It is clear that the Supreme Court's decision, decisions have not actually led to proper interpretation of the law. Therefore, it is time for us to clarify the law, to remove the ambiguity in no uncertain terms. This law will set into motion litigation, the litigation process that should have occurred in the first place in 1973. When a law is not clear, it should be changed to make it clear. Lastly, there are those that would oppose this law, saying that it will set back the pro-life cause if it is passed. To those people, I say this. It is time that we realize that the, that the time will never be perfect. This process will always be difficult and have a small chance of success. So it is time for us to act and trust in the goodness of this great nation. Should we succeed, we will save the lives of millions. And while failure may lead to setback, we must realize that setback is a risk we will always face and forge onwards anyway. All right, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Diana? Mr. Yes. Chairman? Yes, yes, Representative Nyamdi. Thank you. And so you live in Dallas, I see. Yes, ma'am. In House District 107. Um, I, I'm sorry. You live in House yeah. District 107, <laughs> yes, remember, like, from uh, your address. So I just want to thank you for coming to testify today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> thank you. Um, Diana? Diana. Hi, um, my name is Diana, and um, Diana Popko and I represent myself, and um, I'm for this bill. Um, I noticed while strolling through the Capitol today that there was a statue called the Texas Pioneer Woman mm -hmm. in honor of the early women settlers of Texas. Many of you have probably walked it, past it countless times and have never really pondered on it, I suspect. And you might ask, what's so remarkable about a statue of a modestly dressed woman holding a newborn child in her arms against a strong opposing wind? I bet almost anyone who would take the time to look upon her would be struck with a natural sense of amazement or awe of how composed she is despite the hardships faced. There is an implied sense of achievement for having preserved and caring for this helpless child she holds. Now fast forward to today. Would our modern day equivalent of the statue be a career woman holding a briefcase, proudly pursuing her ambitions in life, sacrificing her children through abortion if they got in the way? Every abortion is demeaning to women. It implies she is incapable of handling the hardships that we face in life and not suited to handle our God-given duties and privileges. I reject such a narrative. Don't try to use female victimhood as an excuse not to abolish abortion. Ending infanticide will not make women criminals. It will help them rediscover <coughs> their identity and continue the legacy of the pioneer women. Thank you. 
Thank you. It's beautifully written. Thank you. Uh, Yuri? Yeah. So my name is Yuri Popko, and I represent my family. I was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore because it thought that God was irrelevant, uh, and that is the USSR, or Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, which occupied my homeland at that time, Ukraine. It was the first time, or the first in the modern world to legally recognize a right to abortion. And 70 years later, it collapsed, and uh, we now live in Texas. <laughs> I, yeah, thanks for, for that. I heard that this was the most independent state with a history full of courageous folks who had an active faith and weren't afraid to oppose tyranny. I believe you already know and have uh, heard today about the scientific evidence, the moral implications, and legal um, considerations surrounding abortion. I can add this wisdom from scripture, which I believe addresses your duty as magistrates. Quote, uh, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of people is fully set uh, to do evil. This law would be a deterrent. It all comes down to this. Are you all ready to do the right thing as men, as uh, fathers, as Texans, or not? There will come a day when we will be telling about an era of legalized infanticide that began here in 1973 until a just state stopped this socialist experiment. It is my hope that it would be the Republic of Texas. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you. Um, members, any, any questions? Welcome to Texas. We're glad you're here. Appreciate Adam, it. thank you. Go ahead. Hmm. Um, Adam Kahn, blog of the website, Kahn Man's Musings, testifying in favor of the bill. Um, we hear a lot of phrases a lot of the times around this building, and typically they tend to be used as euphemisms. Uh, but in this case, I actually think that they are somewhat apt. Um, people in this building love to talk about starting the conversation and multi-session processes. And I don't know what's gonna happen with this bill. I think given where we are in the session, everyone can agree that getting this passed the, to the governor's desk will be challenging at best, but you have to start somewhere. And so Chairman Leach and Representative Tinderholt, I really wanna thank the two of you for getting this ball rolling. Um, who knows what's gonna happen, but you need to start somewhere. And so you filed the bill last session and we're getting a hearing on it now. You are the chairman and you are holding the hearing. And I think that this is a big step in the right direction. And I think that one day this is one of the nights we will look back on that really made a difference in terms of just ending this abomination in our country. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Um, and just to be clear, you're here on behalf of Convince Musings. And mm -hmm. you're, for, you're for the bill. Yes, right. and I, I, I will say that the gentleman to, by uh, sitting to my side uh, talked about Adam. You can say he's to your right. I know you don't believe anyone else is to your right, but you can say <laughs> that he's, I, he's I, to I, the right of you. <laughs> Um, so you'll he, notice he was, how he, he, Adam stopped he was, down and said that, that. He, he was talking about as, as, uh, leaving socialist republics to come to the state of Texas. And, I mean, I, I just, I was about to say that about New York. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thank members, any questions for the panel? All right. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The, um, the chair calls... Is, is there anyone that made their way over from the overflow room that I called earlier? Okay. Chair calls Sarah Covey. Sarah? Okay. Um, Nikki Kelton? <clears throat> Rachel Walden? Lisa Park? And Dana McElvain. Okay. And then the next uh, panel will be Abigail Gervais, Sarah Allison, 
Aaron Fry, and Levi Hopkins. Sarah? Yes. All right, yes. go ahead. Hi, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Sarah Covey. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. In 2016, the Imperial College London revealed a study they had done on the psychological impact of early miscarriages. That is the natural abortion a woman goes through when she is losing a pregnancy. The results showed that 4 in 10 women experienced PTSD symptoms and 40% cited various negative emotional issues. I have miscarried six times. The emotional trauma is very real. So my question to you is this. Why are we allowing the murder of babies and the ability to end pregnancies? It is killing a child, as well as causing great emotional distress on the mother. In both a miscarriage and an abortion, the end is the same, death of a child. One is elective and one is not. Miscarriages are surrounded by grief and abortions are celebrated. This should not be the case. So I plead with you, out of love for these innocent children, as well as the mental and emotional health of these women, Will you please support this bill and abolish abortion in the state of Texas? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, Rachel Walden. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank you all so much for your patience and for um, allowing all of us to talk tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Rachel Walden. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. Supporting this bill may be placing yourself at the front line for criticism, but the support of this bill ultimately honors God. So I ask for you to be strong and to not waver. I ask you to support the abolition of abortion in Texas, and I ask all this out of love for these babies who do not have a voice to speak for themselves, out of love for the mothers and the fathers who will live with guilt for the rest of their lives, out of love for you, committee, for it is God who raises up rulers and authority, and it is God who has put you in authority, and when you die and you stand before God to give account for all you have done, I do not want you to stand before God, the just judge, who will execute judge judgment as an aid to the act of murder. Soften your hearts and have courage, knowing that God will honor your obedience to him. Thank you so much for, for your time. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Lisa? Lisa Park? Yes. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all of you that are here um, for giving this bill its hearing, um, especially you, Chairman Leach, for presiding over it, and Representative Tinnerholt for bringing this proposal forward, and then also James White for, uh, for co-authoring it. I greatly appreciate that. Um, my name is Lisa Park. I'm here representing myself, and I'm speaking in support of House Bill 896. Um, I mostly, this I've never done one of these things before, and this has been such a wonderful experience for me as an Austinite, as a Texan, seeing so many of my fellow Texans rally around this, and I've been greatly encouraged hearing those of you uh, on the committee speak about it and the questions have been really intelligent. Uh, I would like to ask, may I ask you, you had concerns about the uh, criminalization aspect of it regarding women. Have those been addressed? Just for the sake of those after me who may be rewriting. <laughs> no, it, it, just, just go ahead and okay. keep going on your testimony. It's all helpful. Um, but mainly that's it, is that I am so proud to see Texas leading the way in this historic movement to abolish abortion completely and to uphold the Constitution, providing equal protection to all life before and after birth and equal justice uh, in, you know, for all who would threaten it. That's the proper duty and function of the government, and I am really pleased to see that we've got uh, a group of people here that you know, have legislators with the character and strength of mind to fulfill it. Um, and if I've got a little time left, I'll just add, I used to be pro-choice, and what changed my mind, because I thought, well, I don't want the government interfering, what changed my mind was realizing, no, that's the job of the government, is to protect the innocent. What's at stake here is the actual baby. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, 
Is it da Dana? Dana McElvain. Okay, go ahead, Dana. My name's Dana McElvain. Um, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a Republican precinct chair. I was a delegate to the 2018 Republican convention where we put abolish abortion as a priority plank. I'm speaking for myself in support of HB 896. Uh, I prepared my testimony, but it's all kind of been said already. Uh, there's not too much more to say. But I do want to thank each one of you for being here and for giving this a hearing. That in itself is a miracle for me. Um, we left, my husband and I left home at 4 o'clock this morning, so I feel your pain, and we still have to go home tonight because we're ranchers and we've got animals to take care of. So um, I do want to quote Abby Johnson, who said, Never in the history of mankind has a woman ever delivered a cat or a dog. It's always a baby, and it's always delivered, either dead or alive. And I believe that to be true. Tonight in Texas is a historical moment for not only Texas, but for the nation. Roe versus Wade opened the door to abortion, and it happened and started in Texas. Tonight, HB 896 is going to hope fully close the door to abortion in Texas and will be the role model for the nation. You all don't each one of you individually have to have all the answers. I know you have concerns about the criminalization for women, but your job, I believe, is to listen to the preponderance of the testimony and let that preponderance lead you to advance this bill to the floor for a full vote. Let it have the light of day, and let each one of your colleagues have a voice. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Dana. Members, any questions for the panel? Thanks to each of you, and safe travels home tonight. The chair calls Abigail Gervais. Abigail, you here? Okay, come on up. Sarah Allison. Aaron Fry. Are you, is it Aaron? Aaron? Aaron, okay. And then Levi Hopkins? Levi? Okay. Uh, the next panel is going to be Mason Morrison, <coughs> Burrell McElvain, <coughs> Teresa Ann Bond, and Becca Peterson. Abigail, Thanks, go ahead. Sir. Hello, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Abigail Gervais. I'm representing myself, and I'm here testifying for HB 896. Thank you so much for having this hearing, Chairman Leach. My first son turned six weeks old yesterday. The journey of becoming and being his mother has not been easy. In fact, it has been and is very, very hard, physically, mentally, and emotionally. However, knowing that I, as his mother, through my sacrifices, gave life to another human being, makes it all worth it. Abortion not only kills people made in the image of God, it also robs women of being able to be mothers, make sacrifices as mothers, feel the joy of holding their baby. It is unjust to unborn babies that they can be <coughs> legally murdered. It is unjust to mothers that the law allows them to kill their children. I would ask the committee to allow this bill to pass out of committee. Do what is right before the Lord and Texans, especially the unborn children and their mothers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And did you get that little <clears throat> notebook today? I did. So if you, if you haven't seen this, can you, can you bring it up here real quick? Oh, sure. Thank you. I hate you to get up. So, so this is available in our bookstore for those of you who want it. This is the official Texans guide to the other 49 states. And it's full of, like, it's, it's full of uh, blank pages. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Sarah Allison. Sarah, go ahead. Hello. Um, my name is Sarah Allison. I'm representing myself, and I'm here to speak for HB 896. Unlike every other bill on the topic of abortion that has come through the Texas House, this bill treats women as intelligent people capable of making moral decisions. Every abortion-related law exempts women from the consequences of breaking that law, and it's defended with reasons like women don't know any better, or they're going to break the law anyway, and women are victims. What I'm supposedly a victim of, nobody says, but somehow the entire female population are victims and therefore can't be responsible for our actions. 
Texas law already defines a person as a human being who is alive, including unborn children at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth. If a father were to kill his unborn child, he would be charged with homicide. Yet if a mother kills her unborn child, you say she shouldn't be held to the same standard. Just as we are fighting for equal protection under the law for the unborn, it is equally necessary to have equal justice for those who break the law. We should not have one consequence for men and another for women. Moral right is not determined by our gender. Please give women the respect that they deserve and outlaw complete abortion completely by approving HB 896. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Aaron. Yes, my name is Aaron Fry. Uh, I am a pastor at Grace Family Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Um, I thank you for this opportunity to testify. Um, I am for House Bill 896. Uh, I believe the bill is good as it is, um, without any exception. I think it's necessary to have it in the wording as it is if we're going to be honest with ourselves about uh, the value of human life beginning at conception. I want to read a, a quick verse, Psalm 139, verse 16. It says, Your eyes, being God's eyes, your eyes saw my unformed, my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. Now, I believe this testifies clearly to the value that God places on us at the moment of conception because he marks it in his timeline of our lives. Now, I understand that a primary concern at this point is uh, the, the women that have had an abortion and that received care through many of these ministries that we've heard tonight, and they're terribly heartbreaking stories. I would just ask the committee to understand and, and consider the fact that the law would greatly reduce that number from even existing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Levi Hopkins. My name is Levi Hopkins. I'm a licensed peace officer in the state of Texas. My opinions are my own. They do not represent my department in any way. I represent myself, and I am in support of this bill. In the penal code, the definition of an individual, individual means a human being who is alive including an unborn child at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth. <clears throat> Capital murder is the taking of the life of an individual under the age of 10. So in our state, we already have the laws in place where it is capital murder, the highest chargeable offense in the state of Texas, punishable by death or life imprisonment. But we've got these exceptions in here for licensed physicians if it's their intention to commit that offense. If it's not their intention, if it's an accident in the procedure, then it becomes an offense. There's confusion in the laws and it needs to be cleared up. That needs to be removed. These exceptions where a mother can do something that a father can't do. A father, if he doesn't want to accept the responsibility of his child, and slips pills into a drink and takes the life of his child, it's capital murder. A mother, if she slips a pill, doesn't want to accept responsibility, down her throat, takes the life of an individual, it's fine. Pat on the back. In law enforcement, how can we, how can we say this is just? Our hands are tied where we're forced to be unjust in our dealings with the, the people in Texas. So I want Texas to stand up. I want us to stand against the overwhelming pressure of, of the media, politics, federal, and uh, Supreme Court decisions. And let's call murder what it is. Let's call capital murder what it is. And the laws we have in place, let's uphold them and take out the exceptions. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I have one more thing. Okay. Levi. <laughs> so... Let's not be like the Nazis in Nazi Germany that at the end of the day, we say, hey, it was, it was our boss that told us to do it, so we're not guilty. If we, if we don't let this bill pass, if we don't remove these exceptions, we stand guilty. Let's wash our hands of the innocent blood of these children. Thank you, Levi. And thank you for your service as a peace officer. <laughs> Members, any questions? Any questions for the panel? Okay, thanks to each of you. Uh, chair calls Mason Morrison. 
Mason, come on up. Uh, Burrell McElvain, Teresa Ann Bond, and Becca Peterson. The next panel will be Luke Densmore, Zara Arias, Seth Peterson, and um, Alice Allison. All right. Um, Mr. Morrison, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Mason Morrison. Uh, I'm a United States Marine. Uh, I'm from Huntsville, Texas. Uh, and I'm here representing myself solely, uh, and I'm in favor of, of this bill. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all all for being here. Uh, Chairman White, uh, you mentioned to us earlier that uh, us men need to be men. Um, I'm here before you today as a, a testament to the lack of rights that men, us men, have uh, in protecting the lives of, of our preborn children. Um, in April of 2013, I drove my girlfriend at the time to the Planned Parenthood on Ben White Boulevard here in Austin uh, and assured her that that it was all gonna work out. Uh, I did so after several weeks of pleading with her uh, for my child's life. Um, while I didn't agree with her decision, I felt it my responsibility to not let her go through it alone as she was not alone in creating this child. Um, I will never forget the sounds of her crying as we left that day. I have no doubt that I will see my child's face one day, but I can only hope that he or she is not nearly as ashamed of me mm. as I am of myself. I implore you to vote this bill, this bill favorably out of this committee and give us fathers in the state of Texas some ground to stand on. Thank you for your time. Mason. <laughs> Mason, Mason, thank you for your testimony. I know. I, well, no, I don't know. I can't imagine how difficult that was, but it means a lot to this committee that you're here. Seriously, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Sarah Allison. Okay, I'm sorry. Teresa. Teresa Ann Bond. Hi, I'm Teresa Ann Bond. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for HB 896. When I was 18, I almost aborted my daughter. She was no less valuable then than she is now, almost 10 years later. There were no laws protecting my daughter from my own selfish decisions. Had it not been for my Christian aunt who made me realize what a blessing my daughter was, she wouldn't be alive today. I was not an innocent victim. I knew it was wrong. But I would never have made that appointment had abortion been illegal, and I would have known that I would have faced punishment. Having a law that recognizes abortion as murder is good, but without punishment for that crime, the law would hold no weight. That is why HB 896 is a great bill. Please pass this bill, and thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Um, Becca Peterson. Becca, go ahead. My name is Becca Peterson. I am representing myself and testifying for HB 896. I'm from Houston, and I work at a pregnancy center where we provide support for women throughout pregnancy and beyond. I'm asking you to support this bill that provides equal rights for unborn children. Your duty as legislators is not to regulate how murder is to be done, but to abolish it entirely. Those of you who claim to be Christians must obey God rather than men. You must call evil evil and punish evildoers accordingly. If killing an unborn child is wrong, then it is wrong for everyone involved, including the mother. I also believe, as we talked about earlier today, that those who force or who co coerce abortion should be punished accordingly. The writer of Proverbs says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. I also want to thank you each of you for being here and for listening to us and for your service. Thank you. 
Thank you, Becca. Um, Burrell. My name is Burrell McElvain uh, from uh, <coughs> Stevens County. We're about 200 miles north of here, and uh, I've, I've, uh, I'm retired from the military, from the Navy. I've also retired from higher education, and now I'm a farmer and rancher and really have to work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm also in House District 60, which is Mike Lang's district. But I want you to know my early work years, I spent most of my first 10 years in Southeast Asia in uh, Gulf and, uh, Tonkin Gulf and in, in surrounding uh, countries. And when in 1973, when Roe v. Wade was announced by the Supreme Court, we had no idea what was going on, what effect it would have on our culture, because our sole source of information back then was the Navy Times. And for those of you that's been in the military, you know, the Army, Navy, or Air Force Times, that's, uh, that's pretty restrictive. No cell phones, no internet, no anything. But at that time, there was a huge battle going on in our culture, and I did not realize that till I was transferred back to Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1974 following that. And what I soon found out was everybody was putting their spin on that particular Supreme Court decision. That became not just a Supreme Court, but, gee, they have approved, they've made it law that it's legal to abort babies. But it wasn't the law. It was a judgment. And, uh, but I, I knew something was not right with myself because growing up in rural West Texas Ranch, I knew that you couldn't take something that was not alive, let it incubate for a few days or a few weeks, and suddenly it sprang to life. Uh, that just didn't make sense. Uh, I'm a strong believer in the Judeo-Christian ethic and for the biblical principles which our nation is founded. And, and uh, I, I firmly believe that God doesn't make mistakes. Each one here has been, uh, uh, have that, uh, regardless of how they were, uh, conceived, they have a, a mission in their life. And I strongly want to sub ask you to support that because we have law, many laws on the books that support wildlife, the snail darter, the Battle Creek, Silver Shiner Minna, and God help us, even certain varieties of rattlesnakes, which uh, it's inconceivable to me how we can have those laws on the books uh, protecting all the animals and a lot of them that we really like and we do not do anything for the unborn children so I would encourage each of you uh, to search your heart and support this bill pass it out of committee and and let's get it on to the full house thank, thank you, you sir for your time. members any um, any questions for the panel all right thank you and safe travels home tonight thank you thank you um, the chair calls Luke Densmore Zara Arias, Seth Peterson, and Alice Allison. The next panel will be Kent Densmore. Where's Kent? Okay. Um, and Elizabeth, where's Elizabeth Densmore? Okay, I tell you what, um, Luke, why don't, why don't you step back? I'm going to call you and your brother and sister up here together. Um, give me just a sec, buddy. So the next panel is going to be uh, Kent Densmore, Elizabeth Densmore, and Luke Densmore. Let's start with the three of you. What's your name, sweetie? Zara. Zara? Zara. Okay. okay, put the mic up close to your face, and if you'll just tell us your name and your position on the bill. Hi, I'm Zara Arias. I'm representing myself. And I'm testifying for HB 896. I asked my mom if I could speak on the mic to help save babies in Texas. My mom has told me the story of how when I was a tiny baby in my mom's t tummy, almost ha she almost had an abortion. But my mom's aunt helped her to know that I was a gift from God. Please um, pass this good bill so other babies have a chance to live 
like I did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Zara. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Great job. Um, Alice Allison. My name is Alice Allison. I represent myself. I am speaking for the bill. The logic of the Roe decision of the Supreme Court supports this bill. During the oral re-argument, Justice Stewart asked, I quote, if it were established that an unborn fetus is a person within the protection of the 14th Amendment, you would have almost an impossible case here, wouldn't you? So, to which the plaintiff attorney replied, I would have a very difficult case. In Roe, the High Court stated, quote, if this suggestion of personhood is established, the appellant's case, of course, collapses, for the fetus's right to life would then be guaranteed. The appellant conceded as much, end quote. The Texas Penal Code has held for over 15 years that an unborn baby is a person. By the logic of the Roe decision, this bill is long overdue. I also want to tell you guys how much we really appreciate all your hard work, your kindness to us this day, and that we are praying for you, that you will have wisdom in deliberating and um, come to a decision that gives honor to the Lord and for our country. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Allison. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Peterson. Howdy. My name is Seth Peterson from Houston. And representing myself, I'm here to testify for HB 896, mm -hmm. which would apply equal protection of the law to little Texans still in the womb, made in the image of God. Regarding the culpability of women, this bill simply removes specific exceptions that explicitly allow and sanction abortion. It is impossible to legislate every situation, and it is for the courts and juries to weigh the facts of each case to determine the party responsible for the mur murder of the baby. A trafficked woman who is literally coerced into abortion has zero responsibility compared to the pimp or the abortionist. But if this bill is passed, pimps and abusers will no longer have legal, nice-looking facilities to hide their atrocities. A vote against this bill would feed right into their hands. Prostitution is illegal. Abortion should be too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Members, members, questions? Okay. Uh, thank you to the panel. All right. Luke, Kent, and Elizabeth. All right, Elizabeth. Ladies first. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Grace Densmore, and I'm for this bill. I'm here to plead for who are we to judge these innocent babies? We are no judges, and we spiritually cannot judge. God is the only true judge. For Jeremiah 1 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. You are appointed to be a prophet to the nations. These are babies created by God we are simply destroying. And according to God's word, murder is wrong. And that is what we are doing to these babies. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a woman forget her nursing child that she has no compassion over the son of in her womb? Even these who forget, yet I will not forget you. I call you to help me abolish abortion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Um, Kent, go ahead, buddy. Uh, my name is Kent Densmore. I am here today to, I'm here representing myself. I'm for this bill. And uh, I'm here today to plead for those who cannot plead for themselves. To quote the preamble to the Constitution, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that we are endowed with, by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men 
deriving their just uh, der deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. We need to abolish the detestable practice of human abortion that has become destructive to the ends of these truths. Millions and millions of babies have been destroyed in ways which we would find unjust for even the most infamous criminals sitting in prison with several life sentences. Answer the call. Do your duty unto God, unto the state of Texas, and unto its citizens born and unborn. Because we are equal from the moment of conception, which even before birth is when life truly begins. Abolish a board of murder in the state of Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, good job. Luke? Hi, my name is Luke Densmore. <clears throat> I am here representing myself, and I am for House Bill 896. We have come today to call the men and women of this body to open your eyes to the evil that is happening each and every day across the state of Texas and across the United States of America. Since the practice of human abortion began to be regularly practiced in 1973 as a result of an unjust and flawed opinion given by the Supreme Court in the United States, of the United States. Over 60 million human lives have been unjustly taken, and that practice must stop. The Supreme Court's opinion is not law. Congress is the body of our government that establishes law. We call you today to abolish the awful practice of human abortion and make the state of Texas a place where all lives matter. Pass this bill and abolish abortion in Texas. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you to all the Densmore kids. Great job. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth, hold on just a sec. Representative Swanson. Apparently, you're all my constituents, as are several others of you. So welcome to everyone from District 150, and thank you so much. You did a great job. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, the chair calls um, Robert Allison. Sue, is it Sire? Did I get that right? So I've got Sue, David, and Michael Sire. Okay. Uh, Craig Seahack. Craig Seahack, is he here? All right. Uh, Lee Allison. Leah Allison. Okay. Chris Park. And Amanda Fields. Tell me your name again, ma'am. Amanda Fields. Okay, Amanda Fields. And then, did I hear Leah Allison is here? Is she coming from the overflow room? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, all right, Amanda, go ahead. Thank you. My name is... Thank you. My name is Amanda Fields. Um, by Jesus' mercy and grace, I am here. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. From, con from conception, each child is a human being, an individual with separate DNA, and an identity completely separate and distinct from the mother, from his or her mother. And they are endowed by their creator with unalienable <coughs> rights that must be protected by law. A father does not have the right to rape his child, and a mother does not have the right to kill her child. The child's individual rights must be protected. Without penalties, how is their protection? God gives life. It is always wrong to murder a human being, and these truths are self-evident. Each life is precious. Abortion is never right and should never be legal. Abortion is the willful destruction of precious human life. In cases such as rape or incest, abortion just enables the abuse, often allowing it to go undetected. Executing the victim's child does not heal the mother. We are responsible and willing to protect and help both victims, the mother and her child, 
find life and hope. And I just want to say that, that that unique individual can never be repeated. They can never be replaced. They have unfathomable value. And we're not dehumanizing the woman by humanizing her child. We're just acknowledging the reality of what already is. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> Folks, I got to, we're, we're having a great hearing. I, I just got to ask you to please keep the applause. Let's, let's all agree to applaud for the kiddos. And, uh, and not, I, I, Amanda, nothing against your testimony. It was great. Thank you so much. But, but I'm going to be consistent and ask for no applause. Chris Park. <clears throat> Chris, go ahead. Hi, my name is Chris Park. I'm representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill, HB 896. So many support this bill and will support you as you lead a nation to turn from evil to good, to the light. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This bill is not retroactive against women who've had abortions in the past and leaves due process of law and its lawful exemptions like duress, deficiencies, etc., intact. I know the pressure you're under concerning criminalizing women who have abortions, but in every case of murder, you prosecute everyone culpable. After watching several videos of ground level abortion ministry, I can tell you the men and women who abort children say from their own lips, they know they are killing their children. Clump of cells is a bygone argument. Ignorance is no defense. Other states unambiguously allow the death of children who survive attempted abortion. So there is no question. Neutrality is a myth. Thank you, Thank you Chris. Thank you. Uh, Robert? Well, I would like to be the uh, first person to wish the committee a good morning. Uh, <laughs> thank you for, for sticking with us. Uh, my name is Robert Allison, and I'm representing myself uh, uh, for this bill. Um, I'm speaking in strong support for this bill because it is the only bill that will completely outlaw abortion, which is the uh, murder of innocent people. Uh, that happens every day in Texas. Uh, you have an opportunity today uh, to make the final leap to stop uh, the shedding of innocent blood in our state. Texas law defines life as being beginning at conception, and yet we have an exception clause in our penal code allowing doctors and mothers to murder innocent people. God calls you to do justice, to be God's minister for good, and to punish those who do evil. This bill punishes those who deprive the innocent the right to life. We would be horrified if a mother decided to kill her newborn baby, and we would rightly demand she be prosecuted under the laws of our state. This is how we need to view the murder of a 20-week-old baby or a baby that is only one day old. The Supreme Court does not make the laws for Texas. That is your responsibility. I ask you to vote this bill out of committee as is, without amendments that water it down. And I thank you again for your time. All right. Thank you, Robert. Members, any questions? Okay. Did Leah ever make it in? Leah, come on up. And don't worry about the, the baby. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, we all get it. Hey, buddy. All right. Go ahead, well, Leah. Hi, my name is Leah Allison, and I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. As a mother of three little boys, my baby is with me. He's also in my testimony um, today. And my other two needed child care so I could be here today. Yeah. And one word that I thought of was to make it happen to be here was how inconvenient it was to this is so important to me to be here to testify for this bill in favor of it. And so I was thinking about it. So to make sure my children are safe and well cared for in my absence was not convenient. And if I neglected my children, we have laws in place to protect children from parental abuse and negligence. However, we as Texans, uh, we have failed, what we have failed to do is to ensure equal protection under the law for all children, whether they are born or, um, Preborn. So uh, HB 896 would ensure that children are protected from the horrendous abuse of murdering innocent life. And I'd love to see Texas, which is the greatest state in this nation, hands down, to lead the country in true just justice and protection for the unborn children. As we have other states such as Idaho, Washington State, Oklahoma, and Indiana, considering bills to abolish abortion as well. Texas can do better. and. Texas ought to be leading the nation on this issue. So I urge you committee members to stand up and do your duty. Um, 
There will always be excuses and there will always be pressure to ignore justice. There are plenty of reasons to pass less controversial pro-life bills to make yourselves feel better and to ease our consciences. But at the end of the day, an estimated 55,000 babies will still be murdered every year in Texas. So don't let your fear of man and what uh, he will do to you keep you from defending the truth and enacting justice. Thank you all so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Members, any questions? All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around with us for your patience. All right. Chair calls Glenna Hodge. Did, did, were Sue, David, and Michael Sire here? Okay, they had to take off. Craig, Craig Seahack? Glenna Hodge, Sarah Witten. I'm gonna call the whole Witten family up. Are they still here? There's four of them. Is that y'all? Okay, Sarah, Mariah, Seth, and Bethany Witten. Thank you all for your uh, patience today. Um, Sarah, let's start with you. Okay. My name is Sarah Witten, and I am for Bill HB 896. Um, I also just wanted to clarify what was stated earlier about um, increased mother mortality rates in nations abolishing abortion. And I just looked that up online in between sessions, and um, it said the, that it showed that these numbers are completely <coughs> misrepresented. Many of the countries where abortion is illegal have third world conditions, and seven of those I checked rank in the bottom one third of the worst overall life expectancy rates. Ireland, which is an abolitionist country, which is not third world, um, on the other hand, claimed that contrary to public report, it had remained a leader in maternity health care sustained through their country's abolition of abortion. On the other hand, over 68,000 women die every year from unsafe abortions in countries around the world. So just a little fact check there. Um, I also stand before you today to be a voice for those who cannot speak for themselves. On this most basic tenet of freedom on which our country was founded, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all, I plead with you to uphold this constitutional right for the unborn, remembering the supremacy law that where the court has ignored the Constitution, we must ignore the court. We see this even in the little-known jurors' right to rule not guilty, contrary to the laws of the land, if they deem those laws to be unconstitutional. And was also mentioned earlier, the Unborn Victims of Violence Act um, recognizes the unborn as a child in utero at any stage of development. Texas was actually a leader of this constitutional protection of the unborn in 2003, even before the U.S. law was passed in 2004. Yesterday, the unborn are murdered. Today, those born. What tomorrow? Why not the delinquent teen, the senior in need of constant care, or you and I if we are in some tragic accident and deemed a burden to society? There is no desire to punish past crimes by women lied to in the past, facilitated by the law, and encouraged by ruthless health care givers to murder their unborn, but rather the knowledge that murder is murder and current laws must protect the unborn and their constitutional rights, and that without consequences, laws can never be enforced. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Seth, let's go with you, and then we'll go with the girls. I am uh, Seth Witten, and uh, father of six kids, and uh, entrepreneur, and uh, in favor of HB 9. 896. 896. Um, a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> Just hearing some different, hearing the different things today, and you know, there's a lot of people in favor. I had, had something written out, but I'm not. It's been said already. Um, but there was also something said uh, to you, Jeff, <coughs> Mr. Lynch, Chairman, that you know you had made a promise to never receive. I don't know how it was said, but to the fact that you would never hear, hear even hear this bill. Um, but you know, someone throwing your word back in your face or something you said in this and out of context, or even if you did have a change of mind, or all of you maybe have a change of mind, that's not wrong. 
we, we change and you know godly sorrow is not to be repented of and god gives if he, god produces a sorrow in us and breaks our heart over the things that breaks him don't think you need to repent if, if you've changed from where you stood before that's that's about it thank you thank you seth and um, members any questions okay mariah hi my name is mariah Witten and Today I will be supporting the HB 896 bill, and I would just like to say that I'm so glad that all of you guys have took this time, and I know it's probably hard for everyone, and I know that I'm really tired too, but I'd just like to share what is on my heart about this bill and about this subject. Since when has been killing any human being been legal? These defenseless babies are being murdered day after day. We know from science slash DNA that in the womb, these babies are definitely human beings. What have we come to if we are allowing murder? These little ones don't even have a chance to live their lives because they are murdered before they can even speak or even defend themselves. This verse descri describes it so well. Psalms 94, 21. They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. This is what is happening to these poor, helpless, innocent children. They are being condemned to death. How can we stand by and allow this murder? A federal court forcing states to allow the murder of, ch of children is not just unconstitutional, it is evil. For these reasons, I thank you and I, I hope that uh, this bill can be passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah. Bethany? Hello, my name is Bethany, and I'm 14 years old. I'm for the bill HB 896. And we can, uh, I would first like to start off by saying we can all agree that crimes are worth punishing. Then I would also like to say, how come we make exceptions with the littlest and most vulnerable of us? When I was 10, I realized that abortion was legal. I mean, why does size matter a human being is a human being no matter what and i hope we can stand together as true texans we're to save precious lives please stand today thank you thank you bethany members any questions for the witten family thank you all so much thanks for being here okay the chair calls uh, melinda catching melinda are you here Okay, Beverly Cunningham. Beverly. Shannon Kingsbury. Abigail Thompson. Is this Abigail and Shannon? Yeah. Both of you? Okay, come on up. Juan Guardado. Juan, are you here? Sarah Kingsbury. What about Carmen Guardado? Okay. Suzanne Harrington. All right. Uh, Shannon? Which one's Shannon? Shannon, go ahead. First Did I call all, your name? I didn't? Okay. All right, Shannon, go ahead. First of all, I want to thank you all for staying up late, all of us. We're doing a really great job. Uh, my name is Shannon Kingsbury. I'm 21 years old. I'm representing myself and testifying in favor of this bill. As Dr. Seuss put it, a person's a person, no matter how small. And the Texas Penal Code defines a person to include an unborn child at every stage of gestation, from fertilization until birth, making it murder to intentionally kill an unborn child. However, a later section of the penal code states that the, um, these laws against murder do not apply to certain people because of Roe versus Wade. Texas has bowed to the ruling that is unconstitutional and not only that, evil. Since 1973, unborn Texas children have lacked protection and justice. HB 896 provides for equal protection under the law for all living persons, born and unborn. 
Texas should lead the nation to extending the fundamental rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to the unborn. I know there was concerns brought up earlier this evening, and I had concerns with the bill about um, laws concerning women who are forced, say, through sex trafficking or other very, very undesirable situations. Um, I think those concerns have been addressed by other people who have been testifying, and so I ask you to support HB 896 because from conception, every life, every human deserves life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Shannon, was that Shannon, right? Yes. Okay, Shannon, okay. Um, which one's Sarah? All right, how did I know it? Sarah, go ahead. Are y'all sisters? Yes, yes okay. she's older, sadly. And you're from, uh, Cal <laughs> from Caldwell, to ha <laughs> ha. Yes, sir. All right, go yes. ahead, go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. My name is Sarah. Um, I am testifying for this bill, and um, I'm representing myself. Thank you all so much for staying up so late. I wish I could all give you each a Starbucks coffee. Um, I uh, have always had a huge love for history, and I always wondered, when you go back in history, slavery in America, women's suffrage and equality, the Civil Rights Movement, and the Holocaust, I mean, all of these we should have learned from, yet we're making the same mistake with abortion today. And I just don't quite understand that as a teenager. I'm 17. Um, I'm here for life, but I also have every bit of compassion for any woman who has had an abortion or is put in that situation. But I'm here for life, and I believe all of us should. Um, America was built on the belief and idea that everyone has the God-given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I wonder if our nation still believes that today. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you can pass this bill because it's step one and we can't have step two without step one. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah and Shannon. Um, Abigail. Hi, my name is Abigail Thompson and I'm testifying in favor of HB 896 for, um, for myself. I don't have any aunts or uncles. I did, but the one before my dad, and one after my dad, but they were both aborted. And I don't know why my grandmother gave my dad life. And that's, I'm here today because if he was aborted, I wouldn't be here. Um, I just think of those cousins I could have had, and aunts and uncles who could have, are not here. <laughs> to think that anybody wouldn't think that they were human. One thing that will always stick in my mind is when my mom, she had the first of her miscarriages, and we saw that baby, my dad said, don't let anyone ever tell you that baby wasn't alive. I saw its little body and hands. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I just, I know I'm here for purpose, to be a voice for the voiceless, for the aunts and uncles who I could have had, the aunts and uncles of tomorrow and the cousins and the sons and daughters and sisters and brothers that my dad doesn't have. And so I hope and pray that you guys will support HB. Thank you. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Suzanne. Hi, I'm Suzanne Harrington, and uh, I live in Dallas. I'm a native and a sixth-generation Texan. Uh, I'm representing myself and the HB 896 with no changes. I just want to say, first of all, this has been a monumental day for me. It's been like a V8 shot because you're so thrilled that you're seeing people the, uh, that have morals, that you are doing what you're doing for us, and we thank you. We, we, I can't tell you how much we thank you. This is a sacrifice, but wow, everything that's been said has been a sacrifice. In my 20s, I was pro-choice. Sad, but there it was. But God changed my mind. And so if I can do a 180, anybody can. And honestly, he said one day, 
just out of the blue. Sus I didn't like rules. And he said, Suzanne, have you ever noticed that not one thing that I ask you not to do is for my benefit, only yours, only to protect you, to take care of you and keep you from making um, awful decisions that you have terrible consequences from. But I was hearing as we were talking through, I mean, as people have been talking to you for hours, <laughs> that you personally are struggling with the responsibility of sentencing a woman to death. And I just want to take that burden off your back and say that God is not asking you to be the judge. He's the judge. And as a matter of fact, he's rolling that off your shoulders and your con consciences by just saying, just obey me, do what I say, don't allow murder, and I'll take care of the rest. So we honor you. Thank you for honoring us. It's just been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you so much. Members, any questions for the panel? Thanks to each of you. Really appreciate it. Okay, the chair calls Mr. Kilgore, Seceed Kilgore. Barbara Maxey. Uh, Johan Gervais, <coughs> Craig Licardi. But Craig's already. Craig, have you already testified? I testified on uh, previous bill. Okay. Okay. All right. You're right. <coughs> is is uh, Johan Gervais here? Okay. Uh, Rusty Thomas. What's your name? Okay, Mr. Thomas, hold on just a sec. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you and Kinder come up in just a sec. I'm sorry. All right, Johan, if you'll sit here. Um, okay, Barbara, let's start with you. Go ahead. My name is Barbara Maxey. I represent myself. I am in support of HB 896, and you know, mostly everybody else has already said the really good things. <laughs> Uh, maybe except about four people. <laughs> so I do support that bill. Um, but I, what, I, what I would like to say is about 40 plus years ago when I was 15, um, I was lied to and told that it was just a blob of cells. Um, had there been a law such as the HB 896, it would have probably changed my mind because I wouldn't want to have consider being charged with murder. So I think that a bill like this would cause people to stop because there's a standard that if they cross it, there are consequences. And when there aren't um, laws with consequences, then if you don't have moral right in your, in your heart and on the inside, then you go ahead and cross that line, which I didn't have then. But since that time, I've seen truth. Life begins at conception. And um, I've seen that, I've seen and found God's mercy, his forgiveness, his grace, and salvation through Jesus Christ. And so knowing that life starts in conception, finding truth and knowing that, I think that um, now we, you and I, we have the, the moral and the, the choice that we need to make for life and for the unborn that don't have a choice and a life they have, they cannot speak their voice, but we can speak for them. So I just want to say, appeal to you, choose life for the unborn. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Um, all right, Seceed. Howdy. I'm Seceed Kilgore. And, uh, man, I'd love, oh, I'm, I'm for this bill. All right. Thank you. And I'd love to be a civil magistrate like y'all. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. And I was a civil magistrate back in the, when I was 22 years old, I held a key around my neck at NORAD, and I was prepared to launch nuclear weapons if given that determination. Millions of people would die. Y'all also have in your hands tons and tons and tons of thousands of people. Mutual assured destruction works. Folks don't die under mutually assured destructions because nukes don't get exchanged. 
if a woman knows that she's going to get executed because she executes her baby, she ain't going to be doing it. Mutually assured destruction works. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore. Uh, Johan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Johan Gervais. I'm representing myself, and I'm for HB 896. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution of these United States says that no person shall be deprived of life without due process of law. The Supreme Court has violated this Constitution in its illegal opinion of Roe v. Wade. With HB 896, Texas has an opportunity to end discrimination against our preborn children and afford them the same protections as there are for you and me. Over 55,000 children are murdered per year in our state, and it is your duty before God to do everything in your power to end the Texas Holocaust. The people of Texas are watching you, and we will hold you accountable for what you do with this bill in your committee. Please give HB 896 a vote tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you, Johan. Uh, Craig. Good evening. My name is, well, good morning. <laughs> My name is Craig Licardi. I'm a precinct chair in Smith County, testifying in favor of HB 896. I'm representing myself, my wife and our 11 children. We have seven living of whom my oldest is here with me. Uh, and he's got the star test in the morning. Um, the other four passed away before birth via miscarriage or a spontaneous abortion. I hate that word. I hate that that word when it is used in an intentional manner to murder a child is the same word that describes what we experienced when we lost Jedediah and Judah. It's in your packet. It's the last page. We need to call it what it is. It's prenatal homicide. That's really what it is. So here's three of my kids. Jedediah, we lost him at 11 weeks. Jeremiah at 14, that's a representation. And Judah at 20 weeks. Um, if they were still alive right now inside of an, another wom a woman's womb, if they were still alive under in Texas under current law, that woman could conspire with an assassin to murder these innocent human beings. That assassin, who's masquerading as a doctor, he would take sofa clamps like these in this picture that's also in your packet. As sofa clamps are like vice grips that would grab a hold of a leg and literally pull it off of the body or the arms. <clears throat> If the child's fortunate, her head gets pulled off first and she dies quickly. Otherwise, she feels the pain of her body literally being ripped apart. Perhaps those who may not be hearing this at this moment would change their mind if, if they could hear the little baby screaming in pain, but those vocal cords aren't developed enough yet. But rest assured, the pain is all too real. Liars with an evil agenda will say that the fetus feels no pain. They also say that it's just a clump of cells. This doesn't look like a clump of cells to me. Those fingers are well formed and they're less than half an inch long on top of a postage stamp. So looking at our, our back to the, our, our miscarriages, when we went Craig, through those, Craig, we agreed. Craig, I gotta ask you to, it's been over a minute, so I gotta ask you to come to a stopping point. Okay, again. thank you. Okay, um, real quick. Yeah, thank you. Um, we didn't shake our fist at God and ask him why. We grieved, but we didn't shake our fist at him. But, Chairman and Representatives, you will remember this hearing from now on because the Holy Ghost is going to bring this hearing and all this testimony back to your remembrance the rest of this session and perhaps the rest of your lives. If you fail to vote this out of committee, it will be the betrayal of the ages, another opportunity to advance righteousness squandered. If you don't pass this out of committee, then one day he will point his holy and rightfully indignant finger, perhaps even shake his fist Craig. At you. Yes, sir. Craig, it's been two minutes now. I've got to have you wrap up. Okay. Thank I'm, you. I'm just trying to stay consistent. Please. God, God will ask why if you don't stand for it, if you refuse to affirm it and neglect, if we don't pass it, God's going to ask why. All right. And that's you. not a good place thank to be. You. Members, thank you. Thank any, you. Uh, any questions, members? Okay. Thanks. Thanks for understanding. Appreciate just trying to be consistent with everybody. Sorry uh, to appreciate you. Um, appreciate the panel. Okay, the chair now calls uh, Rusty Thomas and Kendra Thomas. And Thomas Russell Hunter. Can you go grab me a cup of coffee? Yes. And Molly.
Holly Goodson. Okay, um, Kendra, go ahead. Um, my name is Kendra Thomas. I'm here representing my son, Jeremiah. I am for this bill. Jeremiah was 16 years old, an all-star football player when he found out his sports injury was really a large malignant tumor in his chest. From the time we found out that he had cancer to the time the Lord took him home, we had 224,780 minutes with him, and every minute was precious. He lost the use of his legs, his dream of playing football, his plans for missions and a future in the ministry, but he did not lose his faith in his Lord Jesus Christ. When he learned he'd never walk again, he told his dad, I can still preach from a wheelchair. And he did. He preached from his wheelchair outside of Planned Parenthood at churches and youth groups using his social media accounts. And Jeremiah was paralyzed on chemo, was dying and in pain, but he spent the last of his life abolishing abortion because he knew Jesus came to give life, to abolish sin and death. Make-A-Wish contacted our son, and while Jeremiah was in excruciating, death, excruciating pain, his wish was for others to live. Jeremiah's dying wish was to abolish abortion in Texas. Governor Abbott graciously called Jeremiah while he was in the hospital. Jeremiah asked him to abolish abortion, and Governor Abbott said, Your wish is granted. This is the bill. This is the bill Jeremiah wished for. Please grant Jeremiah's dying wish and support HB 896. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Uh, Rusty. Thanks for going the extra mile, committee. You guys are champs. My name is Rusty Thomas. I'm Jeremiah's dad. I'm representing my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm his ambassador. And uh, I guess I'm representing myself in Operation Save America. Just a few comments. We know the law is not just punitive in nature. The law is also a teacher. And the question we have to ask is, what has Roe versus Wade taught an entire generation? The message is clear. If you have a problem you can't handle, murder it. And our culture has learned that lesson very, very well. It is also taught the problem is the baby in the womb who is made in the image of God rather than the sexual immorality abortion enables. For those of you who are familiar with the Bible, you know King David committed a horrible sin and a horrible crime. He committed adultery and he thought the solution to the problem was murder. It didn't work for King David and it will not work for the United States of America nor the state of Texas. Our nation has made a covenant with death and has produced a culture of death that is savaging this generation. HB 896 will end this Holocaust in the state of Texas. It will establish justice that God Almighty demands and it will begin to cleanse our defiled state that has committed child sacrifice and the shedding of innocent blood. I call upon this committee to fear God rather than the Supreme Court and do your duty, which is to protect life and stop the shedding of innocent blood. You are not to hold the sword of justice in vain. You are called God's minister and your duty is to punish the evildoer as God has defined evil and protect those who are good in God's sight as God has defined good. So I ask you 
to make sure this bill sees the light of day. Do your duty. That is your job. And trust God for the results. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. And uh, before, you, before you get up, I, I do just want to say on behalf of the committee, um, thank you for your testimony. Jeremiah um, was a hero. Um, I was really blessed to follow alongside in those last weeks and days and um, from afar uh, via Facebook. And just um, he, was a, he was a hero. And you should be, as I know you are, very proud. And uh, thank you for being here today. Thank God you. bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Molly. Yeah, this is Molly Gibson's written testimony in her daughter's behalf of the week. Okay, did you, were you registered to testify? Yes. You Tell me your name again. Jennifer Madrid. I've already testified. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay, well, yeah, we'll make sure that the committee gets this. Thank you. Um, Sean Cowett, Cowett. Sean, are you here? Faith Goodson. Faith, are you here? She just got turned in. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. Ella Cowett. Are there still folks over in the satellite room? There are? If, okay, okay, that's fine. Um, if, if you're over in the satellite room and you're listening in and you, you're uh, registered to testify, please make yourself over or make your way over here. Uh, Chris Keys. Chris? All right, come on up. Miles Tope. Miles? Come on up, buddy. Madeline Tope and Catherine Tope, all three of you. All right, Chris, go ahead, and then we'll get to the, the Tope family. There's a lot more? Okay. Chris, go ahead. All right. Uh, my name is Chris Keyes. I am representing myself, and I'm for said Bill. Uh, I have a little bit of trouble with an eye that is separating from years of boxing in my past, so I might juggle around on these scratch notes, but I'll do my best. Um, I live in Texas, but I am not a proud Texan right now. How could I be? I'm the father of eight children, and one was a daughter who was, uh, we adopted out of a crisis pregnancy situation, and she is turning 17 in a couple weeks. And we lost four um, via miscarriage. Um, I've had many women stay at my home with their children, women who left uh, abortion clinics um, after talking with us and who stayed at my home for sometimes extended periods of time. And I, I'm not trying to say these things uh, bragging, especially in a room with much better uh, men than myself. But I, I say this to say during that time of having these women many times stay with us, some rape victims. My wife was a rape victim also. And I do remember um, laying on the floor beside her bed at 3 in the morning and um, peeking up to see if she was asleep and her eyes were wide open staring at the ceiling. Um, and I bring these things up to say that I agree with you guys about the brutality of men. And I see it all the time. I see it at the clinics. I've been arrested at least 39 times at abortion clinics, often for challenging men in their cowardice and crossing the line. Um, I also got to hear the men when I get to the jails, yours in this city included, <laughs> Waco and San Antonio and others. And when I'm in there and sharing the gospel with these men, I get to hear the grotesqueness and the, and the brutality of men. And um, you, we brought up rape and human trafficking. Both of these things are interlocked with the horrors of abortion. I've participated in two human trafficking interventions. 
one with a Bible in one pocket and a 357 Magnum in my other pocket um, by myself. Um, and, and to just to watch the things that women have been through, I, I agree. But there's, there's nothing that I've seen or heard of in all these interactions with women in our home and otherwise that has been more long-term devastating than the horrors of abortion. And um, the human traffickers, the rapists, and the pornographers, they depend on abortion clinics. And they fuel abortion clinics. And I say that to the men in this room to consider if you're against abortion, I hope that you're also against uh, pornography because it is intricately connected with that as well. Thank you, Chris. If you could come to a stopping point, it would be great. Okay, Thank well, I, I am encouraging you guys to also stand against these men that we were talking about by passing this bill because it will have an effect on that. And please do not give Jesus the back on this bill. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, Madeline Tope. Madeline? Sorry. Hello, my name is Madeline Tope, and I am 15 years old. I am here representing myself, and I am in support of this bill. I was born with an extremely rare heart disease called Epstein's anomaly. I shouldn't have survived, but by God's mercy, I did. I am an example of an, when an abortion would be considered medically necessary, and without it, the child's quality of life would not be worth living. I am a testimony that all life is valuable and not worth throwing away. It is, this, this it, it is not the decision of the mother or a doctor whether someone lives or dies. If my mother had aborted me merely because of a problem with my heart, I would not stand before you here today. Every life, whether normal or abnormal, is precious in God's sight and is designed by Him. Who else is to say besides? Abortion is murder. This is not a governmental issue, but a moral one. Just because someone is different or at the time unwanted does not mean that they don't deserve a chance at life. I am a living testimony of this truth Please, I ask you, make abortion illegal in the state of Texas so that the rest of the nation and the world may see what an atrocity abortion is. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madeline, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Catherine? Go ahead. <coughs> Hello. And when I wrote this, it was good evening, but good morning, um, Chairman and the committee. Thank you so much. For allowing us to to speak my name is Catherine Tope and I'm a mom of four I teach at a homeschool co-op called Covenant Paideia Academy they asked me to give them a shout out um, I am representing myself and I am in favor of HB 896 um, one of the things that I wanted to say first before I started my testimony was that in Philippians it says that when we stand together as a body of Christ that the whole world will know that God is real and I want to say tonight, this is quite a showing of all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds, with all kinds of stories and all kinds of colors, and it's to God's glory. And one of the things I prayed was that when you limited our testimony to one minute, that you would hear what God wants to say to you through all of us. And it even was to the um, Horton, here's a who, is what was going through my mind of, we are here, we are here, with those little voices. And um, I just wanted to say, even that was represented. So I just feel like God is, is with us. Thank you. Um, at the age of 16, I was raped. Mercifully, I did not have an abortion. Um, I did not get pregnant from it. Uh, part of my grooming was that abortion was the way to go if you did get pregnant. Um, so I know that I would have had one. The legality of abortion actually protects the abusers and lets them continue. As a victim of that sexual abuse, I would have turned around and committed the more heinous crime of murder. As a victim, I would have made another victim. Two evils do not make a right. There is no metric that would have justified my choice to murder, but the victims that I represent are held up as the caveat, the addendum. And I am speaking out on behalf of all of those who say, well, what about the ones who were raped? Okay, and I'm here to say, you need to stop 
That is not a good reason for us to commit murder. It is not. I'm alive today, praise God, testifying to the healing power of the Lord and my Savior, Jesus. The sin that was committed to me was also paid for on the cross as well as my own sin. And so I believe that God allowed it for good for me because I don't think I would have come to him otherwise. So I wanted to say that no government can save a soul, but our government does have a sworn duty to protect life. So please, I pray that you would open your eyes to who the real victims are of the, uh, of the unborn, um, of the abortions. It is not the women, it's the babies. You are truly helping the women by taking the murderous um, and or by, I need you to wrap up if yes, you can. Sir. Thank you. If, by taking the murderous choice off of the table and not compounding their grief. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Miles, go ahead, bud. Oh. Hi. My name is Miles Soap. I'm 12 years old. I am representing myself and I am testifying for House Bill 896. In the Constitution, it says that we each get life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You are taking the baby's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for once, for the mom's pursuit of happiness, which is not fair in any way for the baby. And you can just put it up for adoption or something like that if you don't want to take the responsibility. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Miles. You. Uh, members, any questions for the panel? Thanks to each of you for your testimony. Appreciate it. Um, chair calls Carol Byers. Carol, are you here? All right. Jubilee Thomas. You here? Josiah Thomas. Um, Are Tora, Sophia, and Maranatha from the same family? Yes. yes. Okay, why don't the three of you come up as well? Um, Carol? Are you Carol? Yes. Can you wait just a sec? Yeah, let's do the uh, Thomas family. We've got five of them. So we've got Jubilee, Josiah, Tora, Sophia, and Maranatha. Here's a chair over here if you want to come over here, one of you, and just this, this, just pull this chair over and pull it up next to the table you can move that microphone around all right what, who's the youngest okay what's your name Jubilee. um let me start is it yeah jubilee yes sir. okay yeah go ahead okay my name is jubilee thomas i'm 11 i'm testifying for this bill i'm jeremiah's younger sister before he died from a terminal cancer, he made a wish to talk to Governor Abbott and asked to have abortion abolished in Texas. Governor Abbott said, your wish is granted. This bill will abolish abortion so Governor Abbott can keep his word to my brother. Imagine how my brother feels in heaven knowing that his dying wish might not be fulfilled. If this bill makes it to Governor Abbott, he can keep his word to Jeremiah. As feminists say, women aren't stupid, so I guess they're saying women know they're killing the baby. <laughs> um, abortion is murder, and that's a fact. Thank you. Thank you, Jubilee. Um, <coughs> Sophia? Hello, my name is Sophia Thomas, and I represent myself. I'm 17 years old, and I'm testifying for this bill. My older brother, Jeremiah, got sick with an aggressive bone cancer at the age of 16. Before cancer, my brother fought to save the lives of little babies scheduled to die by abortion. He would quote Proverbs 24, 11 through 12, where God tells us to rescue those unjustly sentenced to death and to hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. Before my brother passed, the Make-A-Wish Foundation contacted him. Jeremiah's selfless wish was to abolish abortion in the state of Texas. Our Governor Abbott called Jeremiah and told him that his wish was granted. HB 896 will abolish abortion in Texas. Please support this bill and help fulfill my brother Jeremiah's dying wish. Thank you all and God bless. Thank you. And um, 
Is it, is it Sophia, right? Yes, sir. And Sophia, you're here on behalf of Answer the Call Ministry and yourself. Yes, sir. Right, and you're for the bill. Yes, and, sir. And then Jubilee, you're here on behalf of yourself. Yes, sir. Okay, just trying to correct the, or make sure the record's accurate. Josiah? Uh, yes. Um, sorry. Uh, my name is Josiah Thomas. I am testifying for this bill. I represent myself, uh, my ministry, Answer the Call, and uh, my baby brother, Jeremiah. Uh, for those who claim to be pro-life here, here is your chance to not just stand for life, but to stand against those who would try and take life. Uh, my younger brother's dying wish was to abolish abortion, and Governor Greg Abbott said that his wish was granted, and we would love to see his integrity shine through and truly stand and oppose this horrific act of murder. Now, if I could be honest, the fact that we're doing this to me is insane. The fact that we're making bills and decisions whether kids should live or die um, is absolutely crazy. Um, we're trying to play God, and he will not let us get away with it. And we've all heard, you know, the constitutional rights, the, the life, liberty. My last point is this. One day and someday soon, this abortion holocaust will come to an end, and it will go down in history as one of the most violent acts of murder against a child. And when they write about history, they will quote and mention how there were those who stood for life, who didn't just say they were pro-life, but acted accordingly. And that will be us, those who go to the clinic, who actively stay here to 2 in the morning to do this type of stuff. But what will they say about you? Did you fight for life and the sanctity of it? Or were you a coward and allowed this bloodshed to pass through your hands? What will history say about us as Texans? Do what is right by God. Please pass this bill and abolish abortion today. Thank you, Josiah. And Josiah, you're here as well on behalf of Answer the Call Ministry and yourself. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, Torah? Sir. My name is Tora Thomas, and I'm representing myself, and I'm here to testify for HB 896. So, I'm Jeremiah Thomas's younger sister, and he was just 16 years old whenever he was diagnosed with a terminal cancer. While lying on his hospital bed, he was given a dying wish. Instead of wishing for something for himself, he asked for a meeting with our Governor Abbott to request that he abolish abortion in the state of Texas. While on the phone with Jeremiah, he said, your wish is granted. Jeremiah's life first was Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah understood that God creates each life in the womb for a purpose. I believe my brother was put on this earth to tell people about Jesus and to save as many lives as he could before he passed away. I'm asking you to support this bill and please help fill Jeremiah's dying wish. Thank you all for your time and God bless. Thank you, Torah. And Sophia, or I'm sorry, Maranatha. Hello, my name is Maranatha Thomas and I'm 17 years old. I'm here to testify for this bill. I'm here on um, behalf of myself and answer the call ministry. I'm Jeremiah Thomas's younger sister. Before Jeremiah got sick with a very aggressive bone cancer, we would minister outside of abortion clinics trying to save babies. When Jeremiah got sick, Make-A-Wish approached him asking what his wish was. Jeremiah said his wish was that abortion would be abolished in the state of Texas. Governor Abbott called my brother about his wish and told Jeremiah that his wish is granted. Even when Jeremiah was in his wheelchair, he still came with us to minister and save babies. This bill will abolish abortion in Texas and will fulfill my older brother Jeremiah's wish. Even when sick, Jeremiah still fought for the lives of our pre-born neighbors. Now that my brother is gone, please grant my brother his dying wish. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Maranatha. You all went, right? Yes, <laughs> of course. Hey, uh, your older brother, was, was Jeremiah the oldest? No, he was the youngest of the boys. The youngest of There's the 13 boys. 13 in our family total. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Well, you must be really proud of him, and I'm sure he's very, very proud of you as well. So thank you all for being here. Really appreciate your testimony. Great job. Um, <clears throat> Chair calls George Tope and Jackson Tope, Carol Byers, and Rita McNeil. <clears throat> George, why don't you go first? Hi. Um, good morning. Hi, my name is George Tope, 
I'm 14 and representing myself, and I'm testifying in favor of, Hou of House Bill 896. I if this bill was allowed to pass, Texas would be the first state to prevent abortions. During Roe v. Wade, Roe, who was for abortion, had the baby she was trying to kill and put it up for adoption. Later, she became a Christian and was against abortion because it's unbiblical and wrong. I feel the same way because I'm a Christian. We are treating babies in the womb the same way that the Nazis treated Jews, not human. Please allow this bill to pass for the safety of babies in Texas and to show what the rest of the world, uh, United States should be doing. Thank you. Thank you. George, good job. Jackson. Uh, Hi, my name is Jackson Tilp, and I'm 11 years old. Um, I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying in favor of the House Bill 896. I believe that in the Declaration of Independence, it says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women, or all men, are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with a certain un um, un sorry, um, unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Therefore, we think it is just and fair to secure a woman's life, liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. But most people don't think, or what most people don't think about is we're taking a child, an innocent baby who, who can't speak for its life, we're taking its life, liberty, and its, in their pursuit of happiness. I thank you for listening to a child like me, and I hope you will listen to the voices of the unborn ones that can't speak for themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. Okay, Carol. Hi, I'm Carol Byers. I'm from Carrollton, and I'm representing myself, and I'm in support of this bill. Um, I, uh, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. <laughs> um, I used to work for the National Right to Life, Dakota Pro-Life Action League, and Rapid City Right to Life, and I, it's just been horrific for me. And I've got two beautiful children myself. I could never bring myself to ever harm an innocent little baby. And I, I didn't even have anything to take a script. I just, it's from the heart. All of us are here because somebody did not want to murder us and let's just pay it forward and do the same thank you thank you carol rita mcneil just want to say i've never been so thrilled to hear my name called <laughs> i talked to some of the policemen outside because they told me this morning at the bob bullock museum that the parking closed at one o'clock it would be closing at 1 a.m but they reassured me that They'll make sure I can get my car. Good. So this is thrilling. Those guys do a great job, by the way. I hope all of you will make sure you thank them for sticking with us tonight. Yeah, I, I can't you. leave until we do. I know you will. Thank you. Go ahead, Rita. Awesome. My name is Rita McNeil. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. One of my life's top priorities for a great many years has been trying to reverse our tragic national tsunami of aborted children. When I was a 22-year-old senior in college, I became pregnant. I was terrified that my parents would learn about the pregnancy, mainly because of my pride and my fear of their disappointment or rejection. <clears throat> I was also selfish. I had heard years of a cultural message that proclaimed, having a baby will destroy your chances at a good career. I immediately made a rushed and frantic decision to, quote, get rid of the problem. You see, because abortion was available to me legally, I had been conditioned to believe that it was an acceptable choice somehow. I told myself there was absolutely nothing wrong with getting this quick removal of the unborn baby, even though she carried my own DNA and her own beautiful, unique identity. And I knew that deep in my heart, but I proceeded anyway with the actions. <clears throat> Writing these words still brings tears to my eyes. <clears throat> The abortion ended the short-term problem I was facing, but it also brought a huge aftershock of despair and depression that would haunt my life for decades. I know many, many women who suffered similarly from their decision to pay a few hundred dollars to end the life of their own child. 
no matter how many women's marches or politicians proclaim that abortion is just wonderful and it's totally a woman's right to choose, <clears throat> we know this is not wonderful or positive or without lifelong regrets and repercussions. I entreat you to make a courageous decision today. Please vote to let this bill move forward to the entire Texas House of Representatives, the People's House. Please let a full and thorough study of this bill see the light of public debate, and please consider bringing moral sanity to our state and help stem the rivers of children's blood being shed every day here. One last thought. I, Rita, I'm going to have to call you. I know you don't want to hear your name called again <laughs> for me, but if you can May I make one up. quick statement? Yeah, real quick. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've just heard over and over questions about the main concern about the possible penalties under this bill for a woman choosing to murder her baby. But we know that laws and penalties create deterrence for wrong actions. And at age 22, if I had had to consider an abortion, but I also knew that I was risking a trial and maybe an incarceration or worse, I would not have chosen to hire someone to kill my baby. I would have had to face the question squarely. Will it be more embarrassing to myself and my parents for me to be an unwed mother or to go to jail? Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Members, any questions to all of you? Thank you so much. Um, the next panel. Michael Harms, Jonathan, or Jotham Craven, Michael and Jotham, uh, Colleen Rodriguez and Daryl Rodriguez. Are the Rodriguez is here? Colleen and Daryl. Okay, Rex George. Rex, are you here? Nicole Bowles, Daniel Woodworth, Daniel, come on up, uh, Jake Niedert, Jake, come on up. All right, Michael, let's start with you. My name is Michael Harms, and I'm for the bill, and abortion is murder. I have a six month old baby that was going to be brought to pa Planned Parenthood to be murdered and torn apart. And I stepped in and I told my sister, don't do it. And she kept the baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for being here. Uh, jo Jotham. 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 Um, Thank you. My name is Jotham Craven, and I'm here to testify in favor of the House Bill 896. I was one of Jeremiah Thomas's closest friends, and uh, we stood, he stood against abortion with everything he had, and so will I. I believe abortion is murder, and a third of my generation is lost to, the, to that Holocaust. So I testify for, this bill, testify for this bill to abolish abortion in this great, in great state of Texas. Thank you for your time. Okay, Jotham, thank you. Um, Michael, I want to come back to you real quick, buddy, if you don't mind. You're here on behalf of yourself, and you're for the bill. Okay, thank you. Um, Daniel. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Woodworth. I'm here <laughs> representing myself to testify for this bill. I know by this point in the morning you've heard basically every reason why you ought to support this bill. So I want to take a slightly different approach myself and give you my perspective on a reason that you, you might have heard or it might have occurred to you why you might not oppose, uh, might not support the bill. And that's the perceived notion that um, pro-life legislation is working to reduce abortion rates in Texas. Often, you'll see the argument made that because abortion rates decreased following the implementation of a particular piece of regulation, that regulation saved lives. But we don't have any reason to believe that. In fact, if you look at the abortion rate trends in other states, and I would encourage you to do that, what you'll see is that you see these same decreases, the same frequency and the same magnitude, and you can correlate those to Texas abortion regulations if you want to. That doesn't mean we're reducing abortion rates in other states. What it means is that regulations aren't causing those decreases. The current strategy doesn't work, and if you want to save lives today, and I hope you do, what you're left with is this bill and supporting it and bringing it to a vote on the floor. Thank you for your time. Daniel, thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Um, Jake Nieder. Uh, yes, Jake Neidert. Uh, as much as I'd like to start off by standing up and singing a hymn, I will not subject you to that. Um, my name is Jake Neidert. I'm from Denison, Texas, uh, District 62, which is Representative Smith's 
uh, district. I am a student at Baylor and I will be testifying on behalf of both myself and the executive board of the Young Conservatives of Texas. So for Jake, I've got you here just, just on behalf of the Baylor Young Conservatives. Oh, well, yeah. Um, okay. And also the executive board. I found that out after I wrote the thing, but... Um, well, you're, I've got to make sure that what you say here matches what you've put that's, in. That's fine. So you're here, yes or no, you're here on behalf of the Baylor Young Conservatives. Yes. Okay, thank you. YCT believes, as an issue of life and liberty, that the Texas legislature should support any measure that protects the lives of unborn children by eliminating abortion in Texas. I urge that this committee not think of this as a simple vote on whether to send this bill to the floor or not. This issue transcends political barriers. This is life and death. Texas can lead the nation on the issue of abortion. Let's make the first move and end this evil practice. I would say on my behalf also that the movement is growing among young people to support the sanctity of life. We've heard that people we've heard from people who are Republicans tonight, but I offer you to offer to you the opinion of myself and other young conservatives from across the state. If you're a Republican in this house who serves as representative to your constituents and you vote no, I hope that you start campaigning now. Because people like us here today will remember you, and we will find a candidate that will have voted yes on this bill. It may not be the next election or the next one, but it will happen. The tide is changing. We don't just want an issue to be raised. We want the issue to be addressed, and we want it to be changed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members, any questions? All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your testimony. Uh, the chair calls Isabel Woodworth. Isabel Woodworth, Carolyn Powell. Isabel, are you here? Hey. Uh, Carolyn Powell? CJ Grisham? Jerry Lynn Ward? Chris Kilmer? Grace McDonald? The next panel, if y'all will come up, the next panel is going to be Peter Allison, David Lopes, Christina Hastings, and Renee Bush. Again, that's Peter Allison, David Lopes, Christina Hastings, and Renee Bush. Um, Isabel, go ahead. Hello, my name is Isabel Woodworth. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. Um, Forty years ago, the debate was whether an unborn child is a living human being. Advances in medical science have made indisputable what many already knew. An unborn child is a human being. Now the debate has shifted to whether that human being's life matters. And some who believe it does not have even taken that position to its logical conclusion and argue that even shortly after birth, a baby's life is worthless. But what does it mean for a life to matter? One thing in one thing it means is that we protect it the same way we would yours or mine. We cherish it and punish those who seek to take it. If we don't do that, we haven't value, value life. It's exciting to have a hearing for a bill that's important, not just for unborn Texans, but for people across the country who may be able to see that Texas legislators are courageous enough to do their, their duty and protect all lives. God rules over history, and he will bring about the end of legalized abortion. Will you be the means he uses, or will he do it in spite of you? Thank you so much. Thank you, Isabel. Um, Chris? Sure. Um, hi, my name is Chris Kilmer, and I'm from Hayes County. I am representing myself. I'm testifying in favor of House Bill 896, and above all, I'm a child of Christ. Some argue that abortion gives women freedom, but in actuality, it can chain them down with shame and self-hatred. I've seen this firsthand. I personally witnessed the life of someone very special to me spiral out of control for nearly two decades. At one point, I was genuinely concerned that she was going to kill herself. I learned years later that she had had an abortion in college. She had thought at the time that having an abortion would protect her future, but instead it created an intense self-loathing in her which nearly destroyed her life. The state of Texas limits many of our freedoms in order to prevent us from harming ourselves and others. Please protect Texas mothers and children by abolishing the supposed right of abortion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate your testimony. Uh, Grace? Grace McDonald. Hi. My name is Grace McDonald. 
I'm representing myself today, and I'm testifying for House Bill 896. No law on earth will ever stop a crime. That's not the function of law. Um, the function of law, law is how a society says, we will not tolerate this. You can fill in the blank with whatever your law is on. This committee has an opportunity. An opportunity to say, we will not, as a state, stand for the destruction of innocence. Seize the opportunity. Pass this bill forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Grace. Uh, Jerry Lynn Ward. My name is Jerry Lynn Ward, and I'm here representing myself, and I am in favor of the passage of House Bill 896. I'm a lawyer. I'm a Republican precinct chair here in Travis County. I was also on the Legislative Priorities Committee at the State Convention, uh, Republican event, uh, Convention last summer. I support the passage of this bill without any changes. I support the passage of this bill without any kind of triggering effect where we would not pass it or make it effective unless a certain number of states did it. Let me tell you why. If Texas had a corporate confession of sin like my church does that we recite every single Sunday, Texas should have a confession of sin regarding the fact that it facilitated the passage of Roe versus Wade by an extremely weak, ridiculous law that didn't acknowledge the humanity of babies, did not treat abortion as homicide, and also did not make women the principal, a principal or an accomplice in the death. And that is what Justice Blackman hung his hat on in the opinion. Texas should lead. We should repent as a state and Texas should lead us out of this. This bill should be passed as is. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Nine members, any, uh, any questions? Okay, thank you to the panel. I really appreciate it. Um, Peter Allison. Peter, are you here? Okay. Uh, David Lopes. Christina Hastings. Christina, come on up. Renee Bush. Renee, are you here? Okay, Sonia Featherston. Ms. Featherston, come on up. Pat Hastings. H. Apley. Scott here. Okay. Uh, Dan Hart. Ms. Hart. Okay. Uh, Melissa Apley, she gone as well? Okay, come on up. Tell me your name again. Deanne Hart. Deanne Hart, okay. Um, we're going to start with you, Miss Hastings. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. I know it's late. Um, my name is Christina Hastings. I am representing myself, and I am in favor of House Bill 896. Uh, I've heard and, and respect the concern to not punish mothers, but if you believe that the unborn are people made in the image of God, then a mother should be held accountable to the law, whether she murders a baby 12 weeks after it's born or 12 weeks in utero. We need to stop the discrimination toward both the unborn and towards women as well. I am a woman, and women are equals with men before the law, whether we are the victims, whether we are the perpetrators, whether we are the mothers. Let us have equality before the law. There was a concern stated earlier that these women were deceived and lied to, and they were lied to by the law, which tells them that abortion is okay. If they weren't lied to by the law, then law-abiding citizens wouldn't do it. You hear opponents say that this is impossible, the courts won't allow it. And that's what William, the naysayer said to William Wilberforce too. And he replied, we are too young to realize that certain things are impossible, so we will do them anyway. And by the grace of God, they did the impossible, and we can too. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hastings. Uh, Ms. Featherston. Hello, my name is Sonia Featherston. I am representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. My adopted son was born at 24 weeks gestation wearing one pound nine ounces. 
Neither he nor I nor all who know him would want to end his life now, nor would they have wanted his life to have been tragically ended before he was born. The laws in our, our great state should protect the life of all pre-born babies because they are people. Corey Tim Boone, a famous speaker who survived Ravensbrück, the treacherous concentration, <coughs> concentration camp in Germany, lost her father, Caspar Tim Boone, who died 10 days after imprisonment for illegally hiding Jews in his home to protect their lives. When Holland was occupied by Germany, when that began, the godly, um, upright man illegally hosted the Jews in his home because he stated, God's law is higher than man's. Let us learn from this man and his family. Most of them gave their lives to protect the lives of people who at the time the government considered dispensable. A pre-born baby's life is not dispensable. Please vote for this bill. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Featherston. Um, Mr. Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Pat Hastings, and I'm representing myself. I'm here to speak in favor of the bill. Last summer, while in Israel, I saw Canaanite sites dedicated to the literal slaughter and blood sacrifice of children to their pagan deity Molech, to which we all rightly recoil in horror today. Fortunately, here in Texas, we still consider the murder of newborn children, otherwise known as post-birth infanticide, to be in a heinous and illegal deed. But finding it possible within our hearts to condone abortion, that is, pre-birth infanticide, is something we must reject as a grossly inhuman and horrific act. Post-birth infanticide and pre-birth infanticide, or abortion, are both great moral evils that should never be legitimized or legal in a civilized society. We must not continue in the unspeakable travesty of somehow mistaking murder for ministration. If we can callously continue to stand by and permit the slaughter of the innocent and not give them equal protection with the rest of us, what has happened to our humanity? I implore you to help the most helpless among us and take action to the end the killing of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hastings. Uh, Dan Hart. Go ahead. My name is Deanne Hart. I'm here representing myself, and I'm for the bill. Um, President Trump, in his State of the Union, said, let us reaffirm a fundamental truth. All children, born and unborn, are made in the holy image of God. Never was it contemplated by our founding fathers, nor is in the Constitution, that five individuals on a court would be able to dictate that the citizens of Texas could be murdered. Roe v. Wade is not a lawful order and it is way past time that somebody stand up to say so. If not Texas, then who? Please give President Trump a chance to do his job and refuse to enforce an unlawful order. You sought the position you hold, um, and you are responsible before God and to the citizens of Texas um, to protect those you represent, I respectfully say. It is shameful and, again, unlawful for you to allow unborn babies who our president, for the first time in U.S. history, acknowledges are made in the image of God to be murdered because five individuals said so. They need to be held accountable by um, the legislative branch and the executive branch. The defense that one was just following orders was not valid at Nuremberg, nor is it a valid defense now, allowing this Holocaust against the unborn to continue. So I plead for you um, to pass this bill. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hart. Thanks for your questions? time. Okay, thank you to the panel. Okay, the chair calls um, Drusilla Tigner. Drusilla, uh, Amy Aaron I think Amy's gone. Is Amy gone? Okay. Uh, Delma Limones. Delma. Um, Joe Goodson. Okay. Um, Alexander Williams. <laughs> hey, Alexander. Sonja Burns. She here? Okay, Clay Embry. Olive Embry. Okay. 
Um, is Joe Poyman still here? Did I call y'all's names or you just? Okay. Um, Mike Openshaw, I think Mike left. All right, hold on. Don Hart. Brad Pierce. David Sadler. All right. What's your name, sir? Don Hart. Don Hart, Brad Pierce, and yours? David Sadler. Okay. Good, David, give us just a sec. Okay, Drusilla, let's start with you. Drusilla, thank you for sticking with us today. <laughs> um, really, really appreciate it. If you'll go ahead and you know how this works. Sure, of course. My name is Drusilla Tigner. I am here on behalf of the ACLU of Texas. I'm a uh, policy <laughs> attorney and strategist for the ACLU, and we are here today in opposition to 896. Um, there's been a lot of chat today about what is constitutional or unconstitutional, um, and I just want to make it clear that uh, HB 896 is unconstitutional under the current law, under Roe v. Wade, but also under the Supremacy, supremacy Clause of the Constitution. The 896, sp 896 specifically states that it would like for you to, or the state of Texas, to disregard uh, federal law that is in conflict with it, which is a direct, um, indirect con conflict with the Supremacy Clause and would call into question our stability of our system of government, which I don't think anybody uh, wants today. So um, my first point is that we should respect the Constitution. My next point has been uh, made several times, but it's just, as m many members of this committee have recognized, uh, women have abortions for lots of reasons. Um, one of those reasons happens to be to save her own life. Um, lots of women have abortions when they are in conflict with a, a current medical condition or they cannot sustain labor. Um, as the law is written, that person would potentially face the, the death penalty if she, were make the, if she were to make the choice to save her own life, and that is just not a fair choice um, for a Texas woman. So I encourage you today to um, vote no on 896. Thank, Thank you, you, Drusilla. Members, are there any questions? Yes, Representative Yabe. Mr. Chairman, um, you, men you mentioned you're an attorney. Correct? I am, yeah. Um, as I was looking at the section three related to, and you mentioned <coughs> that the specific language where they're specifically stating that, I guess regardless that the attorney general shall direct the state agency to enforce those laws, enforce those laws regardless of any contrary federal law executive order or court decision yeah. are are there it do we have any other statutes like that on the books where our state laws are specifically stating that we can disregard federal law so i can't speak to the entire texas code obviously but i know that if we do have statutes that say that state law uh supersede federal law that those and when they are in conflict, um, those would be unconstitutional in the supremacy clause. <coughs> Excuse me. So it'd be preempted. It would be preempted. This is a yeah, clear federal question. Okay. And then as I was looking at the Roe v. Wade, how is House Bill 896, um, specifically the criminal provisions, how are, is it the same or different than the penal code that was under Texas law when Roe v. Wade was decided? The penal code um, prior to Roe v. Wade was, it, it didn't criminalize women in the way that 896 does. It's been discussed, I think, um, um, throughout this panel. Um, so you're so saying in Roe v. Wade it was not? It, it, was, it, was, a it, was, it was, it criminalized physicians um, and, and not women in the same way. Um, from my understanding of the law, I'm not an, I'm not a historical um, law as expert, but that was my understanding of the so law. So yeah. are you saying that this legislation, House Bill 896, <coughs> goes even further than what Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court held unconstitutional at that time? I, I mean, I think that uh, as in like, it, that it criminalizes women, yes. Okay. So even when Roe v. Wade was determined or decided by the Supreme Court, the Texas Penal Code at that code at that time did not criminalize women? That's my understanding. Okay. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Members, any questions? Yes, Representative Krauss. Uh, more of a comment. Sure. I, you are, as Chairman Leach said, I want to uh, commend you for, for sitting through this. Uh, your 
testimony is always professional. It's always yeah. insightful, and we really appreciate what you add to this conversation. Yeah, so thanks for so being much. here tonight. You took the words out of my mouth, Drusilla. This is the third week in a row you've testified on pro-life legislation, and I know um, <coughs> we might have some disagreements, but I, I couldn't more strongly agree with Representative Krause that we so appreciate you sticking with us and being here and um, defending your beliefs just like <laughs> we're defending yours and doing so in a respectful way. So thank you sincerely on behalf of the committee for how you approach this. Um, Thank you very much. Members, are there any other questions for Drusilla or the ACLU? All right. Uh, Alexander? Hmm? Hey, how you doing, bud? Good. <laughs> All right, state your, um, your name, your full name, and your position on the bill. Um, I'm Alexander Williams, and I am for the bill. Okay. Because I'm thinking that when it comes to abortion... Hey, Alexander, hold on just a sec. Before you g get off to the races here, I've got you testified at showing you against the bill. Um, I got confused. I thought I didn't know which one to pick. That's I fine. You're confused. not the only one. I promise you that. So, uh, just to be clear, <laughs> Alexander Williams, you're here on behalf of yourself and you're for the bill. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. And I'm just thinking that abortion is wrong because why would you get rid of something God gave you as a gift... It's a privilege to have someone so, what's the word, amazing to have in your life, to raise and to show what it's like to be a person. And I do think that they should have equal rights because I don't see why they're not humans because it's like they're in a human, so shouldn't they be a human? And everyone knows because you were a human too. You were like that once too. So why would you get rid of someone that was just like you? And I'm hoping y'all will vote yes. Thank you. For this bill. Thanks, Alexander. Yeah. Uh, Next question. yeah. Members, any questions? Yeah, Alexander, thank you. <laughs> You've been sitting there so patiently today. Uh, are your, are your parents here? Are you catching the Vaughn Lane back to Fort Worth tonight? <laughs> What's, My mom's outside. She's outside? All right. I kept trying not to fall asleep. I understand, bud. I understand. Thank you. Great job. All right, Brad Pierce, go ahead. Great. Thank you. My name is Bradley Pierce. I'm representing Abolish Abortion Texas, and I'm speaking for the bill. Mr. Chairman, members, thank you all for your just kindness and respect that you've shown everybody uh, in being here and for your attention. Um, I do want to address the supremacy clause was just brought up and as another attorney speaking to fellow attorneys, uh, many of you, um, and the supremacy clause doesn't say that every single federal law trumps, trumps every single state law. It says that laws made pursuant, that this constitution and laws made in pursuance thereof are the supreme law of the land. And it's our position that Roe v. Wade was not made in pursuance thereof the constitution. Therefore, it does not trump state law. Um, getting to my prepared testimony um, we're asking today that you vote today today and to prove this bill to abolish abortion which is a top legislative priority of the Republican Party of Texas some say we can't do this because of Roe versus Wade but think about this in 1857 I'm a former history major I'm an attorney so sometimes I go back and I look at our old penal code from 1857 okay I'm a nerd I do that back then it was a crime in Texas to help a slave to escape. Now to everybody listening to me, ask yourselves whether you would have been part of the Underground Railroad helping slaves reach freedom even though it meant violating that statute, or would you have been someone who said, no, we must be those, we cannot ignore the law, no matter how arbitrary, unlawful, and downright evil it is. And if you agree with that, if you would have been someone who would be part of the Underground Railroad, then I ask you to act like it and vote for this bill. I know the question of, of you know, equal protection and that, that law applying to everybody has also come up throughout this evening. Um, I've only had a minute here. If there is another opportunity, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to address that as well. I welcome your questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Members, any questions? All right. Thank you. Don Hart. Go ahead. <clears throat> 
My name is Don Hart, and uh, I am also here uh, in favor of the bill. And uh, I wanted, in the brief time I have, to address some policy considerations that a legislative body really should be thinking through. I know there has been some reluctance to criminalize the actions of, of a mother who might abort um, uh, an unborn baby. Um, a couple of things just to consider about that, that that might perhaps persuade you that that there might be some misguided compassion in that. I, I can't give testimony that is com as compelling as what you've already heard from women who've been hurt by that kind of thinking. Our nation's been hurt by that kind of thinking. The family is being ripped apart and we're seeing the country suffer. We're seeing the, the state of Texas suffer because of it and that, that compassion, while it is well-intentioned, is, is misguided in my opinion. Uh, there's an inconsistency there that you need to recognize. Parents are given the highest duty to protect their children. No one has a higher duty to see that the best interest of a child is, is respected than that child's parents. What are you saying when you say, except that you may murder your unborn baby? As children mature and need protection less, that duty of parents diminishes. Never is it more needed than when they are infants. We cannot send the message from a pure policy perspective that we will not criminalize a mother, not only not protecting her baby, but murdering her baby. If you are pro-life and your convictions dictate that you believe these are living human beings in the womb, you must encourage the mothers not to murder, to protect, to do as they should. Would you ever suggest a mother's heroic if she is in a burning building holding an infant child and in order to survive herself, she beats out the flames with her baby and takes that life, but escapes. Concerns have been raised about the life of the mother. Never have those been less well-founded than they are today. With modern medicine, there's an easy solution to that. Save both lives. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Thank you to the panel. Appreciate you. Um, Mr. Sadler, come on up. Kristen Youngblood. Kristen, are you here? Come on up. Isaiah Ringen. And Carly Spaulding. Carly, are you here? Yes. All right. The next panel, Brian McNaughton. If you'll take a seat up here. Uh, and then, is the Hopkins family still here? All right, y'all hang on just a sec. I'm going to bring all of you, try to bring all of you up together. Mark Einkoff, um, Christina Wickman. <coughs> Do what? Okay, come on up, Ms. Wickman. And then Ryan Lundin, or Lund Ryan. <coughs> okay, if y'all will come up in the on deck circle. Um, Kristen, which one's Kristen? Kristen, let's start with you. Hello, my name is Kristen Youngblood, and I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. Thank you for your time. Um, I am a midwife, and every day in my profession, I work with women and their unborn babies, um, caring for them, and I have cared for women who have had abortions in the past, and I've cared for women who have scheduled an abortion and canceled it and come to me for care. And they always tell me that they knew it was wrong to kill their child. That's not a doubt for them. And that if abortion would have been illegal, that they never would have considered it. And from the perspective of that it's necessary for the life of the mother, as has been stated before, the circumstances for that have just are even beyond reason of what we can think of in this day and age. It's insulting that as a woman, I could kill my own child with no punishment. As women, if we insist on being treated equally, we must also insist on equal justice for ourselves. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you. Um, Mr. Sadler. Yes, sir, thank you. My name is David Sadler. I represent myself and uh, my small business. And uh, I think a lot of the concern, or I, I, I feel like this committee is maybe largely pro-life, but uh, maybe some concern and apprehension around the criminal consequences with the way it's written. And I just encourage you, you mean, you're my legislators. 
to write laws that have teeth. Otherwise, they're just recommendations or guidelines or, you know, your suggestion. And, and that's not what we have our legislators do. So uh, I ask you to, to write laws, to enforce laws, and, and to make them count. So um, I encourage you to, um, to have consequences behind it. Just like if I killed my child, that the mother that does the same would face the same consequences. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Sadler. Um, and Mr. Sadler, you're here on behalf of yourself, and you're for the bill, just for the record. I, I am for the bill, yes, right. sir. I'm for the bill and for you uh, putting consequences behind your laws. Okay, uh, Carly? Hi, um, I'm Carly. I'm, a, I'm from Dallas, but I'm a student at Texas A&M. Um, I'm testifying on representing myself, and I'm for the bill. Um, honestly, when I was thinking about, like, what I would say, <laughs> uh, I just came back to like what a gift it is to exist like um sorry I just trying to get this okay um yeah so none of us chose to exist like none of us chose to come into this world none of us chose to meet the people that we've met and be born into the family that we were born into some people get lucky and some people get really unlucky with the things that happen in their life but I think since exist existence for us is a gift um that we don't really have the authority to take that gift away from others. Um, so if you think about your own life, like we just have to remember that our own lives uh, are gifts. None of us chose them. None of us decided to have a life. Um, but I think that this crazy, weird human life that we all have um, is something really beautiful. And just in simplicity, I think that kind of just speaks for itself. So. Spalding. Um, Isaiah? Yes, howdy. Um, my name is Isaiah Ringan. I am support in favor of this bill. I am here on account of my own self. Um, I would just ask you to consider the overwhelming testimony that you've heard for this bill. Less than 4% of the people who came to speak here today are speaking against it. I believe that in and of itself demands that this bill be heard on the House floor that regardless if you support it or not, that it deserves to be heard and that a vote should be held for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. Members, any questions for the panel? All right. Thanks to each of you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Hopkins, well, our next panel, y'all come on up. Uh, we've got Brian. Which one's Brian? Brian McNaughton. Um, Mark. Mark Einkoff and Ryan and Christina, is that right? Okay. The Hopkins family. There's uh, there's six of you. So to what? Why don't um, Alicia, Timothy, Titus, and Stephen come <clears throat> sit in these four chairs here? Okay. Perfect. Okay, um, Brian, let's start with you. Go ahead. Okay. Howdy, my name is Brian McNaughton, uh, and I'm here today on representing myself uh, in support of the bill. As I was thinking about this bill, um, what really came to mind is when it was said earlier tonight uh, that the, our law is a teacher. Um, when we come and look back to 1787, uh, the three-fifths compromise was created, and what that uh, taught our country was uh, was it supported the systematic treatment of African Americans as less than fully human. It took almost 200 years to overcome that. What Roe versus Wade has done is so similar. It has taken away the um, the fully human quality of babies in the womb. Um, so my friends and I have come from Texas A&M tonight uh, just to testify to this one truth, that from the moment of conception, an unborn child is fully human. Uh, we support this House Bill 896 because it proclaims that. Thank you very much for all of your time here. Brian, thank you. Uh, Mark, go ahead. 
Yes. My name is uh, Mark Einkoff. I'm representing myself. I support this bill. I'm a, a lifelong Texan. I wouldn't live anywhere else. And um, this is Texas. And in Texas, we care for our own. We care for our own, whether they're old or young, whether they're strong or weak, whether they're healthy or sick. We love our neighbor. We love our neighbor in Texas. But you know, today or I, yesterday, Monday, many of those neighbors died. And today, Tuesday, about 200 of those neighbors will die unnecessarily. Wednesday, 200 more will die. Thursday, 200 more. On and on and on, 1,000 a week, 55,000 a year will die of these neighbors. And that's not what we do in Texas. We know this is wrong. Everyone in this room knows it's wrong. Everyone that's presented uh, testimony today knows it's wrong. The Supreme Court may disagree. But in Texas, we don't kill the weak. We help th the weak. We help the innocent. We protect them. And to do that, we need this bill. We need this bill on the floor of the House. And Chairman Leach, this won't happen without you. It's your decision to vote or not vote on this. And we need four others of you here, heroic men and women, to agree that this needs to be heard. If it's not heard, those 200 will continue to die every day for the next two years until the next se session, 55,000, hundreds every day. And we need this. This is, this is Texas. This is what we do for one another, for our neighbor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good timing. Christina, go ahead. My name is Christina Wickman. I am representing myself, and I support this bill. Every single person in this room knows that abortion is wrong. Babies, whether inside the womb or out, are human beings. God says life begins at conception. All those who kill babies through abortion have committed murder and are guilty of death. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Genesis 9, 6. Every woman that has allowed an abortion has murdered her own child. Every doctor that has performed an abortion has murdered somebody else's child, an innocent human being. This is a horrific holocaust, and God's wrath and judgment will be poured out upon this nation unless we repent. I plead with you all, on behalf of the people of Texas, to put an end to this slaughter of the innocent and illegalize abortion in the state of Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, Ryan. Good morning. My name is Ryan Londeen. I am representing myself and my wife, Kaylee. We are both in support of House Bill 896 without amendment. I am a husband, a foster, an adoptive parent, and a follower of Jesus Christ. During Christ's ministry, he taught that the second greatest commandment is to love others as yourself. I'd like for all of you to give special consideration to this command. Scripture teaches that man is made in the image of God and that life begins at conception, a fact confirmed even by modern scientific evidence. A preborn child is just as much a clump of cells as you and I are, a clump of cells immaculately formed and fashioned by our Creator. I would like to remind you, again, that these fundamental truths are reflected in the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence, which affirm that all men are created equal and endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life and liberty. I call on you as a less lesser magistrates of the state of Texas to use your divinely appointed authority to boldly thwart the modern evils of the murder and genocide of the unborn. Let your consciences guide your actions, not political agenda. Allow this, allow this bill to be given a chance in the Texas House of Representatives without amendment so that the people of the state of Texas can voice their support for those who do not have voices. Thank you for your time and for staying up late to listen to all of this. Thank you, Thank you Ryan. Members, any other questions for the panel? Okay. Thank you all so much. Appreciate your testimony. Okay, um, Elijah, Timothy, Titus, and Stephen Hopkins. The next panel will be Josiah and Noah Hopkins. Mary Carroll. Mary, are you here? Okay. Uh, Leroy Whitman. Faith Hart. Is Faith here?
Is that Faith right there? No. What's your name, sweetie? Faith. Oh, you are Faith. Okay. Okay. Where are the two other Hopkins, uh, Josiah and Noah? Y'all come on up here as well on this side. Okay. Um, let's start with uh, Elisha. Go ahead, buddy. Hello, my name is Elisha Hopkins. I'm here on behalf of myself to testify for HB 896. You men and women have the power to stop abortion and taxes, and if you don't stop this slaughter, you will be as guilty as if you had murdered a baby. And an, an eternity in hell will not pay for one drop of blood that has been shed. Thank you, Elijah. Is that it, buddy? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Timothy? Hello, my name is Timothy Hopkins, and I'm here on behalf of myself. I'm here to support the bill, HB896. I just want to say that if you're aborting your children today, that you need to repent before it gets too late because your creator is going to come and you're going to have to face him. And you better know what to say because if you don't, then you're going to face eternity in hell. And I want to say that if you're just aborting your children because you want to be a part of your generation, then you're going to be a part of your generation for all eternity in hell. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, Titus? Hello, my name is Titus Hopkins, and I'm representing myself, and I'm here to testify for the bill, HB 896. I believe that abortion is a sin, and that in the Bible it says that the land was spewing out its inhabitants because they were committing sins, grievous sins, and one of the sins were they were throwing their children into the fire so that they could receive better crops. And that's the same thing we are doing now just in the womb, and it needs to be stopped. And if it doesn't, then the land will begin to spew us out. That's, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Stephen? I'm Stephen Hopkins, and uh, I have, I'm here on behalf of myself also, and I have on behalf of my family too. And um, wow, I didn't, I didn't know what any of them were going to say, except this guy said, can I say this, Dad? And I said, I, I, I guess so, yeah. But I'm supporting this bill as well. Some people say, I guess you guys don't have an opinion. We've got an opinion. Um, but it's, it's, it's based on, on God's Word. I have nine sons and seven daughters. And yes, we do adopt also. Uh, but what, what I wanted to say today is, is, is just listening to all of this here and then outside, it's kind of surreal. Because you know what's going to happen? 50 years from now, when people look back at this, they're going to say, you, you guys spent tens of thousands of hours around the country trying to convince your legislators to, to, to outlaw the butchering of children? Well, you know where we're going to be relegated to, where you guys are going to be relegated to in history. So you're, you're making your legacy. I don't want to, to, to use my time to try to convince you. I want you to not be convinced. I want you to be convicted. I want you to understand, in, in, in ancient law, in which our, our laws were, 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 are built upon, Hebrew law, in order for, for, for magistrates like you to be innocent of the, the, the shedding of the blood of, of, of innocent souls, you had to be able to say two things. We didn't shed this blood, and neither have our eyes seen it. And your eyes have seen it, 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 and your eyes have seen it. You've all seen it. You've all seen it. And you're guilty because you've seen it, and you've done nothing to put an end to it. All right. We need to wrap up your testimony, Mr. Hopkins. Okay. The end of that, I'll wrap it up with this. Thank you. And I'm not... I'm not... I don't want to be offensive except where it's necessary. But I've if, gotta ask if, you I've gotta ask you to, to come to a stopping point. Okay, here here's here's the stopping point. If your children were gonna be butchered at eight o'clock in the morning, 
you'd get this thing done tonight and you'd call the governor for a special session and you'd get this thing over with and done tonight. But the reason you don't is because you don't love your neighbor's kids as much as you love your own. All right, thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you. Um, the chair calls Josiah and Noah Hopkins. Um, thank you, guys. Josiah and Noah Hopkins, Faith Hart and Leroy Whitman. It, are, are you Mr. Whitman? Yes. Okay, all right. Join us up here. All right, uh, Noah, are you Noah? Yeah. Go ahead, right. Noah. So I'm Noah Hopkins. I'm here on behalf of myself. And I, uh, I'm, I'm for the bill, too. I didn't want to try to say all those letters and numbers and stuff because I'm a homeschooler. <laughs> and I might mess <laughs> up. So, <laughs> But I am going to try reading something for you all. It's a, it's a Bible passage. So hopefully I can make it through without messing up and embarrassing myself. So it's Exodus 21, verse 22 and 23. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so their fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determined. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt, then thou shalt give life for life. And I think this just kind of ties in with my dad and younger brother said, and just the last uh, verse 23, it says, And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. And those who have been in the place where they could have changed it and could have stopped abortion, you will, your life will be held life for life. Thank you. So, thank thank you. you, Noah. Josiah. Hello, my name is Josiah Hopkins, and I'm here. Um, I'm here on behalf of myself, and I'm here for Bill HB eight nine six, and I'm praying that you guys will pass this bill, and that those that are aborting their babies will repent, and will make themselves right with their Creator before they die, so they will not have to pay for it, but for themselves for all eternity. Thank you, Josiah. Uh, Faith Hart. Hi, sweetie. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Faith Hart. Um, yeah, I'm here on the bill, and just, I'm here for abolish abortion in the state of Texas forever, and I understand that y'all have a chance to help babies live. Please try and do it. Killing babies should not just be undoable. It should be unthinkable. Mm. Thank you. Faith, thank you. And uh, how old are you, Faith? Eight. Okay, and you're here on behalf of yourself, and you're for the bill, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Faith. Great job. Great job, Dr. Uh, Leroy Whitman. Leroy Whitman, go ahead. Thank you. My name is Leroy Whitman. I live in Denton County, Texas, and I'm testifying for this bill to abolish abortion in Texas. I'm testifying not only for myself, but also representing the over 61 million preborn children intentionally slaughtered since the Roe decision in 1973. Before 24 years serving the poor in another country, I blocked abortion kill mills. We did save babies' lives. And in going to jails, I took the name Baby John Doe many times in identification with the unborn, and I still maintain that identification. Abortion is not a political issue. It is an issue of law. It's an issue of justice for the children who are ignored and forgotten in our political debates. I am speaking for the children. Consider the cost of human capital to the state and the suffering of these children. There's no reason to protect their killers. There are many practical reasons to protect their lives. And when I say protect their killers, I don't mean the women. I mean the abortionists. And when they're taken care of, the women will be a little problem. Um, we do not legislate a woman's choice. We must use the law to protect the life of a child. There are many options to take care of that life other than killing a pre-mortem person. Passing laws to abolish abortion is not persecuting those with no other options. It is setting a healthy boundary. The question is not whether we can detect their heartbeat, but whether we detect our heartbeat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whitman. Uh, members, any questions for this panel? Thank you again to each of you. Um, 
Okay, we've got a, just a couple more panels of witnesses left. Thank you. Y'all can go take your seats again. Um, the chair calls is Melissa Apley here, Chelsea Barlow, Chelsea. I'm here. Okay, um, Malaya and Mariah. Maria. Okay, Francisco Cardenas. Francisco, are you here? Is Lauren with you as well? Okay, have Lauren come up as well. Uh, we can fit all five of you up here. And we've got a couple more panels of witnesses, as I mentioned. If anyone is going to wish to testify on for or against House Bill 896, uh, please uh, make your way to the kiosks now and register your positions so that we can um, avoid having to do that last minute. Y'all come on up. Um, Chelsea, let's start with you. And by the way, I do want to recognize Speaker uh, Moody, uh, Pro Tem Joe Moody, who's here as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for joining us. Uh, Chelsea, go ahead. Hello, my name is Chelsea Barlow. Good morning. Thank mm -hmm. you for being here. Um, I'm representing myself, and I am for House Bill 896. I align with the intent and language of House Bill 896. It is my goal as a homeschool mom that my five children understand our rights and that we that were recognized as given by our creator. Our homeschool focus is on politics and religion <laughs> um, because they are the core of what it truly means to love our neighbor. It is my prayer that when my children fill your seats in the future, that abortion will have long been illegal and they can focus on other issues. I strongly request that you allow the House to debate this. Even if you agree that abortion is wrong but wish to hold back this bill due to some aspect of it or an organization who may have aided your campaign, please allow this bill out of committee and allow the House to debate and decide. I'm very close to done. Let those who cannot speak for themselves be fully represented by our testimonies and the very broad consideration of the full House and hopefully the Senate thereafter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Malia, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Malia, go ahead. Hi, my name is Malia Barlow and I'm 12 years old. I'm here to testi testify for House Bill 896. I'm representing myself when, and when um, a baby is aborted that erases the chance that the child could be a friend of yours, someone who gives charity when needed, or could be the next Albert Einstein. You never know who those babies could be. I'm 12 years old and I heard about all the murders that people are choosing to do legally and it's making me feel fired up. I want abortion illegal because it, I can see how many people are murdering their children legally. How can we be the United States of America when the Declaration of Independence <laughs> And the Constitution says we have the right to life, and we kill babies in the 20th and 21st centuries. It's not an amendment, it's a preamble, which means the words that our whole country is based. It's a foundation, the rock. If I can't change your minds, then so be it. Not only abortion is murdering babies, but it's also bad for the woman aborting. I may not, I may be only 12, but I will fight for what is right. I have one question. Do you see the pattern in this room? I have only heard of a few say that they were for abortion. Please vote yes for HB 896. Thank you. Um, Malia? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Uh, am I saying that okay? Malia, yes, you're yeah. here on behalf of yourself and you're for the bill. Yes. All right. And Mar Mar Mariah. Mariah. Go ahead, Mariah. Yeah. Close, okay. Um, hi, my name's Mariah. I am 14 years old. I'm here to speak for the House Bill 896, and I am representing myself. First of all, I do not care for women's rights for abortion. It's just wrong. Even when a mother is going to die by birth, by giving birth to a child, it, it's still wrong. You shouldn't reject the child, be selfish, and save yourself. Baby is alive, and it has a beautiful personality. I don't understand how 
women live with this killing. I, I some women just the baby is alive and it can move, it can hear it's living at the first start of pregnancy. How can we be the United States of America if we reject the Constitution and the Bill of Rights or the Declaration of Independence? Um, <coughs> it's not right at all. Thank you. And I'm saying that respectfully. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farley. Um, Lauren Cardenas, mm -hmm. go ahead. My name is Lauren Cardenas. I'm a Christian, and I'm a mother of four kids, ages five and under, all of whom are here at 2 a.m. <laughs> I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. <clears throat> HB 896 grants equal protection as stated in the Constitution. All living persons should be protected equally, including babies in utero. If you believe the babies are living human beings, which they are, then murder should be punished as murder. As a little girl, I remember the first time I learned what abortion was. I was absolutely horrified and equally perplexed as to how this was something people do. I mean, who kills their own children? As a small child, this was a very basic truth, was so evident to me. No baby deserves death. I think we all know that. HB 896 is about giving every, every baby the chance to, to live. Our most basic right is to life. How is it that a woman's right to choose somehow trumps this baby's right to life? Abortion is not women's rights. As a woman, I reject the notion that my rights as a woman involve the death of other human beings, much less the death of my own children. It is not my right, and it is, not, and it is certainly not health care. Ripping apart a living baby is not anyone's right, but it is gruesome and barbaric. Please support HB 896 and protect the lives of 55,000 of the littlest Texans who are murdered every year. We are simply asking for equal protection for all human beings. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Francisco. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> thank you for staying this late with us. Thank you for staying this late with us. Yes. Um, my name is Francisco Cardenas. Um, I'm representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. Again, thank you for listening to us. Um, I'd like to urge you to support this HB 896 for the grant of equal protection to the unborn as we do to other people. All living persons should be equally protected from the harm. This bill will remove discrimination from the protection of the unborn, from not protecting the unborn children, Texas citizens that the state of Texas currently has for other people. Unborn children are people, human beings. From the, from the moment of conception, they have their own DNA, and soon after that, they develop their own unique fingerprints. And I just, in just sh six short weeks, they have their own heartbeat, very own heartbeat. When a pregnant woman is murdered, the law charges the guilty with a double homicide, and, then because, and that's because it counts the unborn as a person who, who, who has been forcibly deprived of life. Abortion is no different. Thank you. As a Christian, I cannot help but to remind you of the responsibility that you have on your shoulders and the, and the seat that you're in <clears throat> and to the fact that it has been appointed for all of us to die and then the true judgment will come. Please keep that in mind. I urge you to support HB 896 and to protect the lives of the 5,500 plus Texans, little Texans that have been murdered, that are being murdered every year. Please stand with us and fight for this people group that cannot stand for itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members. Any questions for the panel? Thank you. And I want to recognize Representative Bell um, as well from Coffin County. Thank you. Good to see you this evening. Um, this, this morning. Um, we're not the only committee that's meeting into the morning. Uh, I believe the Criminal Jurisprudence Committee just wrapped up as well. Um, okay, a couple more 
panels here. Mark Coulson. Mark, are you here? Okay, and uh, Sylvia. Miguel Del Toro. Caleb Hopkins. Ms. Colson, let's start with you. Okay, thanks. My name is Sylvia Colson. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for the bill. Uh, my first friend that I talked to, Monica, had said I had two abortions and if it ha had been illegal at the time, I would not have done it. My uh, next friend, Sharon, said she waited three years and paid $30,000 to adopt. And her quote is, there may be unplanned pregnancies, but someone is planning for the baby even if the woman carrying them is not. These babies are wanted. We are, too are adoptive parents, and there are wide open arms for these children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Colson. Mark? I'm Mark Colson. <clears throat> I'm representing myself and in support of the bill. The American bald eagle and the sea turtle eggs are protected by law. The children of Texas need to be protected and have the same rights that they have. And so I urge you uh, to support the bill. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you both for your patience today. Um, yeah. Miguel, Miguel, go ahead. I'd like to state that my white privilege allowed me to work a full shift before coming here. And um, yeah, so it's been great to have that white privilege. What? Uh, my white, my white privilege allowed me to work a full shift before coming here. Uh, we had a statement earlier that, uh, you know, we're chock full of white privilege here, and that way it enables us to take okay. time off work and all, all right, that go sort on, of thing. Go on with your testimony. Thank you. My name is Miguel Del Toro. Okay. Um, I am speaking on my uh, – representing myself, and uh, I am speaking for the bill. Um, it, it strikes me that um, whatever I say will not be so loud uh, as the – Post the board of women who have testified here tonight, uh, women who are perpetrators of what would be a crime under this bill, have testified in favor of this bill. And that should say more than anything I can say. Uh, I would like to say also, uh, it strikes me that uh, there's pretty just, just one question really that needs to be answered, and that is, in abortion, is a human life being taken, an innocent human life being taken? Common sense. The laws of nature and nature's God and science all tell us what the answer to that question is. If that is the case, that life should be protected like, like any other innocent human life. Crime should be punished like any other crime. And um, I don't think there are a lot of judges or juries or prosecutors that are going to go murder one on a woman who has been uh, coerced into an abortion. Finally, I'd like to say to you, Chairman Leach, I think we've all made commitments that we can't later in good conscience keep. We'll forgive you. We will forgive you if you take this to the open chamber. Okay. Well, it's not my decision alone. Understood. Um, thank you but for your comment. I, um, Caleb, go ahead. Hi, my name is Caleb, and I am here to testify for the bill. And... I just wanted to share a thought with y'all and uh, see if y'all can follow me. But it goes like this. I just wanted to share that if I were to take a group of innocent children and place them in the hands of a group of men and were to tell these men to provide and protect for these, protect these children until I returned, if I were to you know, return and find out that these men had brutally and violently destroyed those lives, uh, well, if I, if I were to find out that one of those men violently destroyed those lives, I would deal with that man when I returned. But I would also deal with the men that stood aside and did nothing when those lives were being destroyed. And my point is that when Christ returns, he's going to return with vengeance on all those who went into the womb and destroyed innocent lives. But he's also going to return with vengeance on those who sat aside and did nothing when the innocent lives were being destroyed. And I believe that everyone who has the ability to stand for this bill and doesn't is going to have innocent blood on their hands on Judgment Day. And so I wanted to share that with you all. 
Danny, I appreciate y'all letting us talk. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. And just to be clear, you're testifying on behalf of yourself for the bill. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you to the entire panel of witnesses. Members, any questions? All right. Thank you all. Um, chair calls Jason Penny. Robert Hart and Victor Hart. Robert and Victor, right? Is Jason Penny here? Are you Jason? Okay. Jacob Pennington. Madeline Ratliff. Madeline, are you here? Okay, Daniel Rusk. Okay, the next panel is going to be uh, Denise Smith. Denise, are you here? Come on up if you don't mind. Joshua Smith, come on up as well. Russell Tudor. And uh, Hannah Whitman. Hannah, are you here? Okay, yeah, go, go grab her if you don't mind. Okay. Um, Jacob Pennington, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jacob Pennington. I am testifying for myself in favor of the bill. Now, Texas law currently allows for the abortion of children who are only a few weeks old. But let me suggest to you that killing a 15-week-old is no less humane or morally excusable than killing a newborn baby. We've made tremendous scientific advancements since the days of Roe v. Wade, advancements that demonstrate preborn babies smiling in the womb, feeling pain, starting to recognize their parents' voices, and experiencing various emotions before they ever pass through the birth canal. Because of these advancements, we are just beginning to understand how cruel and inhumane it is to reach into a womb, tear a baby limb from limb until its broken body can no longer sustain life. During the days of Roe v. Wade, we may have been able to argue that we were ignorant. We can no longer do this. It's cruel. It's a barbaric thing to crush the life from a child who cannot defend itself before it ever takes a breath, before it's even able to scream from the pain of death. If a pregnant woman is unable or unwilling to raise her child, the child can be cared for by others. If the child is viable, if it's able to, to survive outside the womb, it can be induced, it can be removed from the womb alive by C-section. So the earlier stages of pregnancy are those in which it is most difficult to keep alive, a child alive outside the womb. This is also the time in which a pregnancy is least burdensome on the mother. My point is not to encourage early C-sections, but rather to point out the fact that modern medicine provides alternatives to the killing of the child. Even if the mother is not willing to carry a child through the more difficult early stages of pregnancy, this can be dealt with in a manner which does not involve any death. I say all this to emphasize there is never a justifiable reason to kill the innocent, not according to the natural law against murder, and not, as your conscience will affirm, according to the law of God, our creator. Thank he you. made us, he governs us, and he will hold accountable those who commit, affirm, or purposely allow for the shedding of innocent blood. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Thanks for your patience today and for your testimony. Daniel Rusk. Go ahead, Daniel. Sir. <coughs> I'm Daniel Rusk. I speak on my own behalf, and uh, and I stand in uh, absolute uh, support of this bill. And uh, I hope that you uh, men and women will do what's right. Uh, the The reason that we're here so late was because of a majority of people that stood all on one resounding thing, one answer, to let it go to, to, to be heard by the rest of the lawmakers. Your, your lawmaking ability comes from God. Every single one of you will face God. You will face God. 
And the Bible is very clear. I'm a campus preacher, and I see young people, 20-something, they think it's okay to kill babies. Why? Because people like you have gave them that impression. You're responsible for their opinions because they look up to you. We want to take religion out of it, but you are their, their religion. They're looking to you for morality. The Bible says to justify the wicked or to condemn the just. Both are an abomination to God. That's Proverbs 17, 15. We've heard a lot of scripture tonight. Thank you, Mr. Russ. If you, if you could uh, come to a stopping point. That's all I'm saying is that we've, you've heard a lot of scripture. The evidence is here. It's very, you know, God is big in this room. If you don't see it, you'll see him one day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russ. And to you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Robert Hart. Robert, go ahead, bud. Hi, my name is Robert Hart. I am test representing myself and testifying for this bill. I would just like to say one thing about the bills that are regulating abortion. The Pol Polish poet Stanislav Letz said, Is it progress if a cannibal uses a knife and fork? So I say, How is this progress? We are still allowing the murder of children. We have an opportunity to actually end abortion. If you're pro-life, letting babies be dismembered in a slightly more civilized manner isn't progress. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Robert. Victor? My name, is, my name is Victor Hart. I am 13 years old. I am here representing myself, and I am for the, this bill. You have heard scripture quoted from Jeremiah today, stating clearly that God knows us in the womb and even before he places us in the womb. This completely answers the question as to whether an unborn baby is a person who cannot, who must not be murdered. Please pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Good job, boys. Um, members, any questions? All right, thank you all. Okay. Um, are either Denise or Joshua Smith here? Okay, if y'all come on up. Russell Tudor? Russell, are you here? Yes, sir. Okay, come on up. Hannah Wickman? Hannah? And then is Christopher Youngblood here? Okay, Christopher, come on up here. This is our final panel for the night or for the morning, I should say. Again, if anyone else wishes to testify on for or against House Bill 896, um, this is your final chance to register on the bill. Okay, um, Ms. Wickman, let's start with you. Hello, my name is Hannah Wickman, and I'm here in favor of this bill. I'm here to represent myself and my unborn baby boy. Uh, this due in July. Um, Congratulations. I'm not going to be able to say anything any better or <laughs> any more than what's already been said, so I just want to Thank you guys so much for being here. I, I was actually here early this afternoon, and I left and uh, had dinner with my husband, and we ended up going to bed, and I, I ran, got on there and decided to watch a little bit uh, live, and then we were just sitting there watching and watching, and I said, what are we doing in bed? Let's go over there. <laughs> so I just, you know, I wanted to thank everybody that's already uh, spoke here, and I wish I knew all your favorite coffees and could have brought everybody a coffee here because <laughs> I know you must all be really tired. But uh, so just thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Hannes. Really appreciate you uh, waking up and coming back. Um, <laughs> chair calls Denise Smith. It's on your phone. Sorry, it's on my husband's phone. But yeah, well, thank you all for wait until the last, uh, whenever I woke up this morning, I definitely didn't <laughs> expect to be at the state capitol at 2.40 at night. But Thank you for your patience amen. today. <laughs> so I, um, I'm a mother, this is my husband, and my son Liam, he just turned, well, his birthday party was Wednesday, but he just, he's turning one on one, um, Saturday, awesome. and he's turning one on Wednesday, and then I'm eight months pregnant, so I'm due here in a m another month or so. But um, when I woke up this morning, I definitely, I expected to just kind of roll out of bed, feed my little son here named Beckham, Zion, and um, feed my son there. And 
um, I got on Facebook and I saw the post that this was happening and I had no idea and I felt this unction to pray and I just kind of in my heart just started to pray and I felt the Lord was just like no I'm asking you to pray and so I'm like okay so I spoke out loud and I began to pray and then I wrote I wrote it down not knowing that I was even going to put on Facebook because I have a very private life I feel um nonetheless even being here so this was kind of just for me and um but I'm I felt as a day went by that I was supposed to come before you and just read it and it's fairly short but I'm going to read it to you as I began to pray a heavenly language and this is this is all true <laughs> this is what happened to me this morning as I began to pray a heavenly language began to flow from my lips and instantly I saw a vision I saw the wind of his spirit as a rushing gray substance fill the room and in that moment, King Jesus was standing in the back right corner, and angels swarmed his left and right, occupying the walls of court. He placed himself as the judge of the room, and the jury immediately fell on their faces in repentance for the world. As he stood with the great staff in his hand, all those who were in attendance followed suit of the angels. Surrender permeated the room, and Texas became the forerunner for the rest of the states to unite in obedience. And Chairman Leach, you said that it gave you great hope to see the millennials rise up. Well, I'm here to say that it gives us Christians great hope to see a man of God equally arise. And lastly, I know in my heart that each of you, including you, Victoria, and, and the lady beside you, I know that you'll stand before the Lord and he will actually, he will look each one of you in the eyes and say, good and faithful servant, job well done. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Denise. Appreciate you being here and for your patience. Joshua? Yes. Um, so I was kind of dragged here, but, you know, nevertheless, I'm extremely happy to be here for the cause of this. Um, but, you know, just sitting here, uh, well, first of all, I'm in favor for the HB 896. Um, but I just wanted to say something like throughout my professor, he says, uh, history continues to repeat itself in history over and over and over. And as we see, um, I mean, the way Hitler convinced the Germans to destroy six million Jews is that he convinced the Germans that they were not human. They exterminated them like rats. They convinced people that they were not human at all. Or do you know that Americans enslaved and tortured African Americans, and we dehumanized them so that our Constitution didn't apply to them, and we treated them like animals? We also... Um, we gave ourselves the permission to kill the Native Americans. We convinced ourselves that they were savages and not human as well. Do you understand how we get the permission to kill the young in the womb? We took the word fetus, which is Latin, and it means offspring, and we defined it to dehumanize the unborn. Now our constitutional uh, no longer protects the unborn because they are not considered human. And I believe a hundred years from now, <laughs> abortion will go down as one of the greatest crimes ever perpetrated against our people. So thank you guys for taking the time and making what's best for our nation. I really appreciate thank you. all your work. Thank you, Joshua. Appreciate it. Uh, Russell Tudor. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you all for staying up till the wee hours. My name is Russell Tudor. I'm here for, to speak for HB 896. I'm here myself. Uh, the last few uh, state conventions, uh, y'all have been reminded tonight, and I'm not here to beat you up some more. Y'all been beat up plenty. It was overwhelming that Texas wants to abolish abortion, okay? Uh, but I wanted to remind us of uh, something else that happened last state convention. The loudest yay I've ever heard in, my, in three conventions was when we started the discussion about possibly seceding. Why? Because Texans are sick and tired of sending representatives to Washington that do not represent us. We have woken up. We are waking up. And I have good news for you. 
I want to encourage you. It is time to do this. It started in Texas. We need to start fixing it in Texas. You can do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tudor. Can I say one little thing? Uh, not, not right now. Okay. Give me just a sec. I'm no. sorry. Uh, Chris hey. Youngblood. Chris, go ahead. Yes, my name is Christopher Youngblood, speaking for myself for HB 896. Justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. There are tens of thousands of unborn Texans every year who suffer death because of abortion, and it is an outrage. Yet it is perfectly legal in Texas right now for this outrage to continue. Do not let the status quo continue under your watch. You've heard much today. I ask that you do not do what is easy, but what is right. Not what may be popular, but what your oath and your duty before God requires of you. I ask you today to take a vote and vote in favor of this bill before you. Thank you for your uh, time and your graciousness this Thank evening. You. Thank you, Chris. Um, Ms. Whitman, you're um, re-recognized if you wanted to mention one of those things. I just wanted to make sure I didn't make light of the issue. Um, I, I do think it's a very serious thing and that under no condition should a woman ever consent to have her baby ripped to pieces for any reason, to save herself, to save anyone. You don't rip another human being up because it makes you feel better because you don't think you can take care of it for any reason under the sun. You should never rip another human being to pieces. But it's a sin against God, man. Thank you. No, I don't think the committee took you lightly at all. I know we did. Yes, Representative Krause. Sure, and I, I just think it's very appropriate that on the last panel of the night we have two women uh, – who are pregnant and carrying those children that we've been talking about being so precious all night. I don't know how many pregnant women we've had uh, testifying today and tonight, but it's just very, very, very cool to see that. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. And y'all can go back and um, take your seats as we close the meeting here. Um, does anyone else wish to testify on, for, or against House Bill 896? Did you did you register? Okay, come on up. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the chair recognizes Hannah Hart. Ms. Hart, I apologize. Is there anyone else here who wishes to testify on for or against House Bill 896? Okay, Ms. Hart. Um, if you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill for the record. Hi, my name is Hannah Hart. I am here representing myself and I am for this bill. Our system of government was never intended to permit one branch of government to utterly emasculate the other two. The U.S. Supreme Court is neither infallible nor unaccountable. Roe versus Wade can be overturned. The Supreme Court has reversed their own decisions, proving that even they acknowledge that they are sometimes wrong. Men and women who oppose Supreme Court decisions, such as Plessy versus Ferguson or the Dred Scott case, are heroes today. You've been given the chance to be those heroes of tomorrow for millions of unborn babies. We must hold our Supreme Court accountable for being wrong in a way that permits the murder of millions of innocent Texans. We have a current president who not only said that all children are made in the holy image of God, but is courageous enough to fight for what he believes is right. Give him that chance. Often those who are pro-choice bring up the rights of the mother. In conclusion, I'd like to pose a question to them and those who share their opinion. What about the life of that same mother 20 years ago when she was an unborn child in the womb? She was just as much a person then as she is today. Why is her right to choice so essential today when yesterday her very right to life was non-existent? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Hannah. Members, any questions for Hannah? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, does anyone else wish to testify on for or against House Bill 896? Um, over the past several hours, we've had 502 total witnesses. 446 witnesses have registered for, 54 against. <laughs> Two on uh, members, we've heard 330 witnesses tonight in our hearing. 
very, very proud of the members of this committee, every single one of you, and for your staffs for hanging with us tonight. Um, I'm even more thankful for uh, you who've joined us here at the Capitol uh, yesterday, last night, and this morning. Um, whatever your position was on this bill, this uh, if we've proven anything today, it's that the Texas legislature still works. Washington could take a note or two from the way we work here in the Capitol. So um, thank you all for being here and for your testimony. Uh, with that, the chair is going to recognize its Representative Vice Chair Tinderholt to close on this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. I, I tell you, I pledged to many members here that I'd keep this brief, so I think I want to talk more about the process tonight. I agree with the chairman that I think we set an example for Washington, D.C. to look at and see. I, I'm honored and humbled that so many people came here and spoke and everyone was so respectful. Um, to be honest with you, some members on the dais agree with me fully, partially, and not at all. And I have the utmost respect for my colleagues um, of all types, of all of all three of those parts that sat here and listened. And I said early on today that if we just listen to each other, we can learn. Um, I learned from the four that disagreed. I went out in the hall and talked to him, and I listened, and we talked a little, and, and, and I learned. I appreciate everyone that came here and was so respectful. I appreciate all of you um, for being generous with your time and, and kind. And so thank you all for, for a very long day that in my mind was worthwhile. Um, thank you to everybody's staff. And with that, sir, I, I close. Okay, members, are there any further? Yes, Representative Niave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Representative. I also want to thank everybody who came out to testify, whether we agree with you or not. I think that's the beauty of democracy, is being able to express your voice and your opinion, um, whatever that opinion may be. Um, I think one of the, the common themes that we heard throughout the night is the, the concern, Representative, with the, the criminalization portion of your bill, specifically the part where it would subject a woman to the death penalty um, and so I'm trying to reconcile in my head the arguments that I heard tonight about how essentially one is okay with subjecting a woman to the death penalty for the exact to do to her the exact same thing that one is alleging that she is doing to a child so that's one issue. The, sec the second thing I wanted to, to ask you from my understanding and reading other articles is that the Texans for Life and the Texas Alliance for Life are opposed to the criminalization portion of your bills. Is that correct? I am not, I'm not sure. I think one of them is and one is neutral, but I, I, okay. I believe. Yeah, I think from, from articles I read in the Dallas Morning News and um, elsewhere, those two specific groups um, are opposed to that portion. And I, I know that you had stated that you are not going to amend uh, your legislation. You're not going to provide a committee substitute, and I, I believe you're going to keep your word on that to the people who came to testify today. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, so that, that's what I wanted to ask. Did, did you want me to respond to it? or, or you no? can, Yeah, you can respond. Okay. Um, I think probably one of the most important things is that um, fundamentally I think our biggest difference is that we don't agree on when life begins. And I think that that's a valid argument from both sides, except that uh, the statute, um, section 1.07, subsection 26, we've heard it several times tonight at when life begins, which was uh, passed in statute in 2003. <clears throat> I think um, that defines life, and I think what I'm trying to do here, and I'm, I'm going to get to the criminalization piece. Um, the whole point of this bill is to provide equal protection because I feel and we feel that that life is just as valuable as life outside the womb. Now, this bill does not specifically target women. This bill is very fairly distributes responsibility for taking the life of an unborn child to men who co coerce, which is already against the law or force, uh, medical professionals and women who might be complicit in that life taking. And I think it's important to remember that if the drunk driver kills a pregnant woman, they get charged twice. If you murder a pregnant woman, you get charged twice. And so I'm not specifically criminalizing women, ma'am. What I'm doing is I'm equalizing the law so that everyone that is culpable or takes part in that, what I call murder, um, and I know fundamentally we disagree, that everyone 
that I feel is culpable in it can be punished. Thank you, Chairman. So, um, thank you for your response. The, the other, so specifically with respect to the portion regarding the criminalization, as I'm looking at the the Supreme Court opinion in Roe versus Wade, it, it seems that even this, so in your legislation, there's no exceptions, right, for anything. I mean, it's a blanket ban, which is what the individuals who came today to testify want. Is that correct? Correct. It okay. removes the exception in the murder statute that says that there's an exception to murder for a pregnant woman and a medical professional. Okay. And so in the Supreme Court case in Roe versus Wade, even in that version of the Texas crim or the state's penal code at that time, there was an exception. Is that correct? I believe so. And so, so this goes further. It does. And than I, the, even the, the Texas penal code at that time in the Supreme it Court It does, case. and you'd, you'd mentioned the Supreme Court, and I want to mention that nine states openly ignore federal law in regards to legalized requisite recreation of, med uh, medical mar of, of recreational marijuana. Five states have passed Firearms Freedom Act. 25 states ignore, ignore the Real ID Act. So when we talk about uh, the Supreme Court, there are several states that are ignoring those um, with no repercussions from the federal government. And, and has, has Texas done that before? Because then you also have specific language in here stating that regardless of any contrary federal law executive order or court decision in Section 402.0375 of your legislation to, to completely disregard existing federal law. Do we have any other laws like that under Texas law where we as a legislature are saying that the state can disregard existing federal law or I, court decisions? I don't believe so with the exception of possibly we could, I, I believe we're one of the states that don't uh, uh, abide by the Real ID Act, but other than that, no. Okay, so this would be the first uh, besides believe, the one that you... Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions? <laughs> Speaker Moody. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I, I don't really chime in on other folks' committees, but Mr. Bell and I came over here. We wrapped across the hall a little while ago on criminal jurisprudence, and we routinely go very late talking about matters of life and death. Mm. Um, and I woke up 24 hours ago in El Paso, did not anticipate being in this room 24 hours later. Uh -huh. I'm glad you're here. Um, but uh, regardless of where people fall on things like this, and I great respect for Mr. Tinderholt and for Ms. Niave uh, and, the, and the positions they hold and, and the members of this committee, but I think the way that this has been done today is, is the way this work is supposed to be done. And I just, I, I think that, I mean, the reason we walked over here wasn't to chime in on the merits of what you're listening to, but to chime in on uh, your, your work mm -hmm. and the work of this committee. And just thank you for putting in the hours and the time and also thank the people that are here, because this is, this is what we're here to do. Wherever, wherever we fall on, on the subject matter, uh, this, is, this is what we're here to do. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Um, members, are there any other questions or comments for the author of the bill? Okay, with that, the chair will leave House Bill 896 pending. Members, is there any other business to be taken up tonight? Questions, concerns, issues? Okay, with that, uh, members, I do want to let you know we're going to be having a formal meeting um, in just a few hours on the floor. Uh, probably very shortly after we gavel in uh, to take up and consider pending business. Uh, the chair seeing no further business being needing to be done this morning. Um, the Committee on Judiciary and Civil Jurisprudence is adjourned.